Ahem. <clears throat> Hello. And this is episode number 500 of the tb 2 way challenge run. Um, hold on, let me just get all the champions down there. Yeah, it's better. Um. Fuck it, we'll use the elimination chamber background. Yeah, anyway. Um. Episode 500, I thought doing just an episode of ECW, a special episode of ECW, would feel a bit anticlimactic for 500. I know I did one for 400, but yeah, this is 500. You know, we're halfway to a thousand episodes of this fucking shit now. So I thought, you know, better time than any. We're on the road to WrestleMania. Just, just to go over everything. So I don't expect anybody to watch 500 episodes of this. <laughs> like... <laughs> So this is just basically going to be the jumping off point for anybody who's not been around. And also, if you have watched everything so far, um, you might want to stick around because there might be, like, other shit that I splice in here that's like, oh, you know, this almost happened, or I did this, this, and this, and, like, maybe give, like, hints or something. So, yeah. So, we're on the road to WrestleMania 40 now. This save started on the Raw after WrestleMania 36. So, yeah, we've got, we're almost four years deep into the save. And it's all documented on this stupid channel here. And I thought, you know, let's just go over it all and get you all caught up to speed. So, obviously, think back to real life, you know, COVID was going on, you know. Um, Drew McIntyre was the WWE champion, coming out of WrestleMania. Braun was the Universal champion. Um, Sami Zayn was the IC champion. The US champion was Andrade. Street Profits were the Raw Tag Team Champions. Um, SmackDown Tag Team Champions were... Was it The Miz and John Morrison? And then Becky was the Raw Women's Champion. And Bayley was the SmackDown Women's Champion. Yes. So this was the first ever show I ever did. Obviously we opened up with this, which was the, the announcement that Becky Lynch was pregnant. And yeah, she vacated the belt. Um, because when, when the save started, because this was an updated database from... I think this is the June 2020 database that I pushed back to April. So Becky was already gone pregnant. So like I couldn't even do like the money in the bank thing in real life or anything. So the belt just had to be vacated right away. And then we did a tournament to crown the vacant champion. Obviously the members were Ruby, Kyrie, Asuka, Liv, Nia, Shayna, uh, Natalia I think was in it. And apparently Peyton Royce. I can see her name here. Um, yeah. So then, then the Raw After Mania... We didn't really do much. We just sort of like laid the groundwork out. Lashley defeated Bobby... Or Drew McIntyre defeated against Bobby Lashley instead of Big Show. And then um, Jinder Mahal laid him out to be the first challenger for the belt at Backlash. Which was the first pay-per-view of the save. Um, nobody had seen Seth Rollins, Randy Orton or AJ Styles coming out of WrestleMania. Um, obviously Randy lost to Edge. Seth lost to Kevin. And AJ was buried alive in the Boneyard match. So they, they all took a couple of months off, which really handicapped myself at the start of the save. But it all worked out in the end. <laughs> but yeah. And SmackDown, you know, was two hours long at this point. It does become three hours later down the line. But this shit was going on. Apparently Sami Zayn and Dan, I fucking don't remember any of this at all. Oh yeah, we had Rob Gronkowski. We did indeed have that. And um, he's still technically in the world, but he's um, retired I could get him, bring him in now, but I don't know. My my la my American hand egg knowledge tells me that he didn't play for Philly, so I shouldn't really bring him in for Philly WrestleMania 40. This is this feels like an entirely different save. You got fucking Robert Roode defeat Kane. Like <laughs> why? Uh, Sammy and Daniel Bryan. That's actually funny that those two faced off in the first match of the save because they're technically opponents at WrestleMania 40. But we'll get to that as we go through the save. Um, yeah, Paige here. She was the general manager, I guess. I can't, I, I named these, I can't remember what any of this was. Dakota Kai was called up right away. Um, she'll be important a lot later down the line, i.e. to where we are currently in the real world. And then, yeah, Raw and SmackDown were going through everything. Cedric Alexander and Ricochet were on the way to getting a tag title shot against the Street Profits. Um, we debuted Aussie Might, because, um... Brendan Vink and Shane Fawn. It was that weird period in real life where they were called up for like a, a month or so in 2020 during the pandemic because MVP was their manager. So they were already on the main roster that I brought up Bronson Reed to make a stable. 
Um, Duke Hudson is currently in AEW, but his contract is like two months. I'm going to get him back because it's Duke fucking Hudson. He's a GOAT. So yeah, he'll be back soon. <laughs> and yeah. Um, Shane Thorne is in a New Japan. And Bronson Reed is still with me. And I think one of the Vikings, Hansen, is in SWG. Yes. Which is a new company I formed because um, AEW weren't signing enough free agents. So I wanted to handicap myself. So I made another medium-sized company. And then Eric, I think, is still technically in NXT. And he's got two months left. So I'll either just let him go or, you know, maybe just keep Eric around. You know, who fuck knows? Um, but yeah, that's moving on to, this is just like the build to Backlash. Backlash saw Aussie Might, Shane Form, Bronson Reed and Brenda Victor feuding with the Vikings and Humberto Carrillo joined them. Humberto Carrillo would go on to form a tag team in a few months time with Akira Tozawa, which was formed back in 2020 as like, oh, I've got nothing for you of these two guys. Let's just stick them in a tag team and then I'm pro they're probably going to end up getting phased out and just leave. But... Oh boy, we're going to get to Path of the Dragon in a year or two. Um, Street Brothers defended against Cedric and Ricochet. Um, Kevin Owens defeated Murphy. Of course, Murphy was Seth Rollins' disciple at the start of the save. Um, yeah. And then Kabuki Warriors defended again. They know they won the titles back because the Kabukis lost them to Alexa and Nikki at WrestleMania. So then the Kabukis won the belts back here. Apollo Crews and Alistair Black, they were having a feud... Like in real life, they have those random ass 25 minute Raw matches, that that era. And then after the match, Apollo turned heel. He joined up with Bobby Lashley, MVP, and Shelton Benjamin to form VIP Nation, which was the proto Hurt business. I think just did get renamed Hurt Business later down the line. Um, after you put Only Lorcan, I think this was a 24 7 title stuff. Only Lorcan, we'll be seeing a lot more of as the, as the save goes on. Andrade defeated Ray. Austin Fury versus Angel Garza. Oh, this was um, because they teamed up at WrestleMania because they roundly put Theory with Zelina Vega, and um, yeah, Theory defeated Gaza because Seth Rollins reemerged, and the new Church of Rollins was formed, which was Seth Rollins, Ruby Riot, Buddy Murphy, and Austin Theory. Uh, Theory didn't stick around for long. Um, he's currently in AEW. Um, I released Theory at the time because I think he was named in something in Speaking Out. And I was like, I don't want to book him anymore, but, like, when his contract comes up, I'll probably just bring him back, because, you know, it's been long enough now, and, like, he's still around, so I'll probably just book him again. But, yeah, that's why Theory vanishes, because I was like, he was in Speaking Out or something, I was like, oh, yeah, I don't want to book him anymore, but then, obviously, that didn't really go anywhere, so. Then, yeah, Shayna Baszler became the Raw Women's Champion. She defeated Liv Morgan in the final to win the vacant belt. And then in the main event, Drew McIntyre obviously defeated Jinder Mahal to retain the championship. But then, because I need a big defense, because this is early TW save. And if you know anything about this game, you know, like, early on in the save, your ratings aren't very good. So Brock Lesnar came back and beat up Drew McIntyre after the, after the match. Set up a match for Money in the Bank. And then payback was SmackDown. So I actually did have Roman Reigns around, right? In real life, he didn't come back to a SummerSlam. But I had him, like, right after Mania because he was just around... Uh, Robert Roode defeated Shorty G. Um, you know, that was Shorty G's last match, I think, literally on SmackDown here. Him and Roode had a Money in the Bank qualifier, and yeah, he scored Chad Gable again. Um, Cesaro and Nakamura were a tag team. That was a real thing. Then they defeated Brian and Gulak. Again, very funny that these were a tag team back here. Uh, Bailey defeated Carmella, thrown together to defense. The debut of J-Flow happened on this pay-per-view, which is my faction of five Joshi girls uh, Maki, Marika, Mina, Mizuki and Tam who become a staple of the women's mid card for the remainder of the save <laughs> um, Oni and Bo, that must have been 24-7 title stuff uh, New Day won the titles from Miz and Morrison Sammy defeated Jeff Hardy um, Dolph Ziggler and Sonny Deville defeated Otis and Mandy Rose, obviously that was the story going on at the time was the, the, the Otis, Mandy, Ziggler shit with the hacker I actually debuted the hacker to be Mustafa Ali you know, because they didn't they just dropped it in real life but i didn't and then the main event braun and roman went to a no contest i believe goldberg yeah goldberg came out here because that's who braun beat at wrestlemania and he caused a no contest saying a triple threat match between the three men at money in the bank and then raw after this we had like 
And Samoa Joe was the general manager as well, by the way. Um, because this is when he was on commentary and, like, injured. So I had I had him be, like, the intimidating boss. He does eventually get back into the ring, so don't worry. Uh, Church of Rollins, this was the start of their takeover of Raw. The AOP were about... No, Acom specifically, because Rezar was injured. Yes. So, yeah. They, they were around. I think Candice LeRae and Johnny Gargano do eventually join up, but I'm not sure when that happens. I might be uh, getting ahead of myself there. Uh, Liv defeats Kyrie apparently. VIP Nation against Bronson Reed and Akira Tozawa. Five rated match, Sugar Rush, who are a fun little babyface tag team of Candy Floss and Zaya Brookside. And they are both still in NXT, technically, so they may <laughs> pop up once again one day. Who knows? Uh, yeah, I think this was a minor event qualifier. Drew defeats Ray, and then Brock lays out Drew. Sure. And then this was just build to mind the bank. Um, Dakota Kai defeated Lacey Evans, and that was a mind the bank qualifier. Same as Sasha and Carmella, same as Sonya and Mandy. Then we get to mind the bank, which is... Oh, oh I'm GX. I completely glossed over these. Um, GX were Rob Gronkowski and Mojo Rawley. Um... They were, like, mocking... They were doing, like, a fake DX thing. They had the whole DX entrance. Shotzi, I think, joined eventually because they were feuding with the Forgotten Sons and they had Lacey Evans in the group. Oh, yeah, dark times. But, yeah. And then Shotzi joined to counteract Lacey. And then... Apparently, Miz and Morrison vs. GX was an angle. I can't remember why. Oh well, that was four years ago. It's GX, it's Rob Gronkowski. Yes. Um, yeah, Sasha Banks won Women's Money in the Bank 2020 instead of Asuka. Uh, match was Sasha, Bianca, Dakota, Liv, Sonya, and Ruby. Uh, Ali, the hacker, defeated Dolph Ziggler to end that rivalry. Kevin Owens took the US title from Andrade. And um, Seth Rollins against Angel Garza. He was beefing with the Vega Mafia because, of course, um, Fury was in the Vega crew. And Seth took him away from the Vega crew and joined the church. So, you know, Angel Garza was the chosen representative of the Vega crew because Andrade was defending against Kevin Owens. Kabuki's defeated the Iconics to retain. Jay Flo performed, I guess. Cesaro won the IC title. And I guess... Oh, this was the... Yeah, because this was the Artist Collective was Sami Zayn, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Cesaro. So, like, that was the whole thing going on. This was a slow burn babyface turn for Sami. And there, Cesaro had broken away, and then this was leading to a triple threat match between the three at Judgment Day. Fury won Money in the Bank, because I had a thingy to make the, to crown the youngest world champion in WWE. And putting the briefcase on Fury was the easiest way to do that. Um, VIP Nation cut a promo, I guess. Drew McIntyre retained against Brock Lesnar, but then immediately set up Brock Lesnar next feud with Bobby Lashley. Barely defeated Alexa, and then Braun retained... Oh, right, this match. Um, the fucking finish of this match that I booked four years ago, because I was fucking wilding. Uh, I think I had Goldberg lift Braun up for a jackhammer. And then Roman speared Goldberg, and Braun fell on top of, of Goldberg and pinned him. That was the finish. <laughs> so, yeah. And then The Fiend came out and attacked... Goldberg, I believe. To set up, yeah, Goldberg versus The Fiend, because that was... He needed revenge on the on Goldberg for taking the belt off him, but also Roman Reigns was feeding with Goldberg, and yeah, the Fiend was involved in all that shit. Uh, leading into um, vengeance, um, Drew McIntyre at this point had started feuding with um, Zelina Vega and crew, because I remember this story. This was like my best, my favorite storyline early on into the save. Um, yeah, and Seth Rollins was doing his thing. The Church of Rollins, you know, they were they were dominating Raw for. The, uh, the first year of this save. Alistair Black was feeding with Seth Rollins. They were having the match of vengeance. Um, Peak of Physique was Tony Nese and um, Riddick Moss. And then they were, they fought Path of the Dragon. You know, Herbert Korea and Akira Tozawa, who was scoring 51 and 51. You know, that wouldn't last for long. Uh, Jinder Mahal and the Singh brothers beat three jobbers. And then Samoa Joe, who was the GM, was getting provoked by Jinder. He came out of retirement, quote-unquote, to, to face Jinder at vengeance. Um, the Aussie might were still doing their thing, I guess. And yeah, that was the Raw leading into Vengeance. I believe Shayna was defending against Bianca, yeah. And then SmackDown, we had all that shit going on with um, Goldberg and The Fiend and Braun and Roman. And 
um, Ali won the right to challenge Braun Strowman for the title at Judgment Day. Actually, no, I believe the Judgment Day match was Roman Reigns versus Goldberg, the quote-unquote forgotten WrestleMania main event. And then, yeah, Shotzi joined GX by this point. And, yeah. And then we get to these pay this Back here, the pay-per-view schedule was... At uh, the end of every month, on the Saturday, there'd be a Raw pay-per-view. On a Sunday, there'd be a SmackDown pay-per-view. I do later change that because I felt that handicapped me too much with my booking. And I felt like it flows a lot smoother now. I have the um, the pay-per-views as they are. Um, Joe, yeah, he beached into my hall. Uh, Vega, Vega Mafia interview. Santos Escobar had joined at this point. And, you know, they were like, oh, are we going to help Andrade win the belt in the main event? Kevin Owens defeated Bronson Reed. To retain the US title. Um, this was where I introduced the new US title design because it was around about the time they introduced it in real life, and the story was that Bronson Reed smashed up the old one. He was going to make the Australian title or something. Then KO beat him and had the new belt, so that's when the new belt got in introduced. Uh, Aussie might won the Raw tag titles from the Street Profits because um, I had a goal to make them multi time tag team champions. So this was their first run. They do get a second run later down the line. Uh, yeah, Shayna defeated Bianca, because this was... They've got to think back to 2020, when Bianca Belair had just been called up, and she wasn't quite yet what she'd become. Like, this is her first year on the main roster. So yeah, she was only scoring 38s there, but Shayna did retain. Lashley defeated Ricochet. I guess Ricochet was beefing with VIP Nation. Oh, no, 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 I know what this was. Right. Uh, um, This was a, a segment on the pay-per-view where, like, MVP was issuing out like open challenges for like all the members of vip nation lashley fought ricochet Shelton fought cedric apollo fought oni and then the last time brock lesnar came out and he faced off with lashley well they didn't actually have a match but they set up the match for great balls of fire seth defeated alistair black this was when damian priest debuted apparently and does that mean gargano and candace are already in the group by this point because they they are in the group that's the thing like masked man reveal Oh no, that was Santos still in VIP. Um, the Vega Mafia. Um, when does Gargano join? Is it here? Is he in this? No. Is it after Vengeance? Um. Oh, Candice. Candice jumps to live here. Um. Johnny Gargano. Yeah, they're here. So it must be on this roar. Yeah, Johnny Gargano and Candice. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, we're all caught up. So, the entire um, set, Church of Rollins at this point was... Um, was this when Murphy beat Fury? Because Murphy takes the briefcase off Fury at some point. Again, I'm getting ahead of myself. But I'm positive that was the opener to a, to a show. Um... I don't know. But at some point, Buddy Murphy takes the the money in the bank briefcase off Austin Theory. That's a thing that happens. Um... Yeah, here it is. It's there. It's, so it's already happened. By the, it's the week after this, because I was at Vengeance. Anyway, Andrade fails to come up short against Drew McIntyre. There was some tension, some miscommunication by Angel Garza in that match to cause his defeat, which set up a great balls of fire match. The triple threat was Drew defending against Angel Garza and Andrade of the Vega Mafia. Judgment Day was the, there it is, the Forgotten. They weren't the Forgotten Sons anymore because obviously Lacey was in the group. Wesley Blake, Steve Cutler and Lacey Evans against Rob Gronkowski, Mojo Rawley and Shotzi. Yeah. Um, Tucker, seeing his name has reminded me. This was, um, Heavy Machinery broke up at some point. I can't remember when. But, yeah. Because I, ha I had a goal that was, like, to make a group of big meaty men led by Braun Strowman. And Tucker was in that. Because it was Tucker, Braun, um, Dabba Kato, and, um, Omas. <laughs> yeah, what, what a group. But, yeah. And then I saw their judgment day. I saw um, Tucker and Otis. 
So yeah, they are. Um, Obakanu was Omos's name. This is before he had a name in real life. He does eventually, you know, disappear after this and re-emerges Omos. But, yeah. Um, New Day retained against Metalik and Kalisto. Um, this is obviously before... This might be the segment right here where they kick Kalisto out, actually. Because I don't like Kalisto. I think he's mid. And he's currently in MLW. Okay. And, yeah, if Metalik and Lince are still around now, to, the, to this day... As part of a new trio with a different person who we'll get to later. Um, Alexa defeats Sonya Deville. That was a feud they had going on. I think they had a fight pit at SummerSlam, actually. We'll get to that in a minute. Daniel Bryan defeats King Corbin. Dakota and Raquel won the tag titles off the Kabuki Warriors. Tucker defeats Otis. Um, Sasha and Bailey, I guess. Oh, no, because Sasha was going to... Oh, Bailey was going to defend against um, Mandy Rose on this pay-per-view. But Mandy got kayfabe injured and the match was cancelled. And then, you know, there were some issues with Jay Flo, which set up a match between Mackie and Bailey for a one-night stand. Um, that's when, obviously, when Omos and Dabakato debuted for the Hoss House. Braun beats Ali to retain. Cesaro beats Shinsuke to retain. And then Roman defeats Goldberg in the main event. Braun takes out Roman, and then The Fiend takes out Goldberg, setting up a double main event for a one-night stand of Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman. I think that was last man standing. And then The Fiend against Goldberg. Oh, Heat did obviously debuted by this point, which I was using just to farm wins for people that I'd want to call up eventually, i.e. these three down here, Eo, Swerve, and Santos. I forgot Swerve and Santos were a tag team. You know, that just reminded me. God, Santos, I'm sorry, buddy, I like you, but my God, you're the Janetti in that team right now. Anyway, moving on to the build to Great Balls of Fire. Um, it, at some point, it was announced that Edge would return at Great Balls of Fire just for, like, a promo segment. And this is when Murphy beat Theory for the Money in the Bank, yeah. So I took the briefcase off Theory and fired him because, you know, I was weird about booking him at the time. Um, Kevin Owens defended against Only Lorcan. Yeah. I think that was actually the Great Balls of Fire match as well. I think they had a rematch at the pay-per-view. Um, Liv and Ruby were falling out here because Ruby was in the Church of Rollins. Um, yeah. And then, there, that's moving on. Angel Garza was fitting Swerve. Oh, no, this was before Swerve was in the Vega Mafia. Um, yeah, I remember that now. He came up, he had a, ra a random match of Garza on the show. And then joined the Vega Mafia afterwards. And then a Brock Lesnar promo setting up a match with Bobby Lashley at Great Balls of Fire. Um, the thing with these pay-per-views, when it's like one pay-per-view at the end of every month, I can basically just go on to like the first show of the month look at the whole card and be like, oh yeah, that's why we were setting this up. That That's what I was talking about. I felt like it, it felt like less fluid the way it was. Um, shenanigans. What's happened here? Oh, Brian got run over. Yes, he did. Uh, that was a thing. Um, we find out who ran him over later on. James Storm was around. He was leading the Forgotten Sons. This was this ended up leading to a match at SummerSlam between James Storm and Rob Gronkowski where, you know, Gronk loses and retires because... Gronk didn't actually ever end up wrestling in real life, so I had to just write him off. Um, Ali and Brandy Lauren were a team here. That was their first teaming together. They're, well, I don't know if they're still technically around today, but... Um, Mark Henry had a promo, apparently, talking about the Hoss House and Otis. Oh, yeah, because the match of the One Night Stand was Otis teaming with Ali and somebody else against the Hoss House. Um, then being Taka, Otis, and, uh, Taka Omos and Dabakato. And then Sammy was calling out Nakamura for a match at the pay-per-view. Or Cesaro, one of the, whoever the champion was. To have the triple threat for the pay-per-view. And then Roman Reigns with Goldberg and Braun and The Fiend were doing their shit. So yeah, that was basically the build towards um, um, the pay-per-view. And then we get to the pay-per-view. There, yeah, there's the issue with Ruby and Liv. Which, you know, ends up transferring beyond SummerSlam. Uh, Murphy and Gargano of the Church of Rollins defeated the Street Profits in non-title action. Yeah, Kevin Owens does retain against Oni in a rematch. And there's another promo from the Vega Mafia talking about the main event and how they're going to bring the belt home to one of them. Um, Oscar and Kyrie, they hadn't broken up yet. Um, this was just like one of the two. I think it might have been Asuka. One of the two was like feeling down, and they had a friendly competition to like try and get each other back on, 
on their best and then Asuka beat Kyrie. Um, VIP Nation won the Raw Tag Titles so specifically just so I could take them off Aussie Mike so they could win them again. Um, Damian Priest was in the church. He beat Alistair Black. And Seth, I guess, spoke about it. Charlotte and Shayna fought for the Raw Women's title a double count out. Um, this was the Edge return segment. Um, he came out the first time since WrestleMania. Seth Rollins was beefing with him. And then Randy Orton also came back. We hadn't seen him since Edge beat him at WrestleMania. He RKO'd Edge and he seemingly pledged allegiance to the Church of Rollins. So, yeah. That was leading into SummerSlam where Seth Rollins would face Edge. Um, Brock defeated Bobby Lashley and then ended up getting into it with Samoa Joe because Brock and Joe was the SummerSlam match. And then Drew retained against these guys, pinning Gaza in the main event. And then this is where the Vega Mafia revealed Swerve as their new member and they kicked Gaza out, setting up Andrade versus Gaza for SummerSlam. One Night Stand, SmackDown's pay per view. I can't remember the story behind Jeff Hardy against Bobby Roode. It was just a match, I guess. Um. The former Lucha House Party, Death From Above, there, they were, I say were called, are called, um, won the belts from Big E and Kofi Kingston, and then the Usos also got involved, and that was a three-way at SummerSlam. Um, I wish I was just Ali and Otis against these two, okay, I thought Tucker was involved as well, but no, yeah, just Ali and Otis against the Hot House. Um, Dakota and Raquel retained against Electra and Nikki. And then J Flo got up in their grill, and then they got the tag title match at SummerSlam. And then Bailey beat Mackie in this match. Though I think there was a dusty finish in this where I like teased that Mackie was winning the belt, and then she didn't. Gulak and Gable. I don't remember ever being a tag team, but I guess they were. Oh no, this was to do with the um the Daniel Bryan shit, um because Bryan had been run over, and they were blaming Miz and Morrison for it. So yeah, and then they beat Miz and Morrison, and then Ali I guess got involved. Again, I wish I'd named all these properly now because I can't remember what most of this stuff was. And then Cesaro defeated Sammy and Shinsuke to retain the IC title. He'd go off to face Sheamus at SummerSlam while Sammy was betrayed by Shinsuke. Sammy went babyface, setting up a match with Shinsuke at SummerSlam. Fiend got his revenge on Goldberg. And, um... I think... That was... I don't think Goldberg was at SummerSlam. And... Uh, Braun retained the Universal title of Roman Reigns in a last man standing match. I think there was some big finish. It might have been a ring implosion. I can't remember. But then after the match, The Fiend reappeared and he took out Roman Reigns to set up The Fiend versus Roman for SummerSlam. And then, yeah, Raw. Um, there was a number one contendership main event where it was um, Ray, Andrade, Seth, and somebody else would face off in a four way. For a shot to wrestle Drew McIntyre for the belt at SummerSlam. That, that's when AJ Styles reappeared from being buried alive at WrestleMania. He won it and he faced Drew at SummerSlam for the belt. In the Night 2 main event. Um, what else is really going on in here? Um, Only Lorcan fought Jinder Mahal. Then Lana's new client was Jacob Fatu. Who had a match with Only Lorcan on the pre-show for SummerSlam I believe. Um, Path of the Dragon and Shane Fawn and Brenda Vink got DQ. Because the Raw Tag Title match was a four-way. Path of the Dragon, Aussie Might, VIP Nation, and Ricochet and Cedric. Alistair Black, Kyle Promo, on The Undertaker. Um, uh, he keeps calling out The Undertaker for a cinematic match at SummerSlam. And that, that ended up leading to a months-long thing between them. And yeah, the Spooky Warriors against Shayna and Charlotte. Uh, the Raw Women's title match at SummerSlam was a six-pack, with those four, Liv and Ruby, in it. And yeah. Then Raw and SmackDown. Um, I don't know when it started getting built, but Daniel Bryan is the one who ends up coming back, and we find out Braun was the one who ran him over, and that sets up Daniel Bryan versus Braun Strowman for the Universal Title at SummerSlam. Recap of Shinsuke betraying. Yeah, why was Raquel carrying a tray? I can't remember, <laughs> but sounds funny. Sounds like cinema. And then yeah, Alexa calls out Sonya for. Uh, they have a fight pit at SummerSlam. Which is funny, because it's Alexa Bliss. And then Cesaro and Sheamus reunite, and then after the match, Sheamus is like, Oi, fella, I want that belt. Yeah. And then, when's the Brian stuff start happening? Um, oh, no, it's Gable and Gulak are here, so yeah. I guess, here now. I'm just, trying, I'm just reading this. I was like, yeah, this, this all happened. This Again, this feels like a lifetime ago. Oh, by the way, um, 
Bailey and Sasha were sort of beefing with Paige, who was a SmackDown GM in the background for a while. And then Paige came out of retirement to face um, Bailey for the SmackDown Women's title at SummerSlam. That's basically all the important matches for that show. And then SummerSlam night one. Um, SummerSlam was night one. It's been two nights ever since. I've never just done one night of SummerSlam. Every single SummerSlam's only ever been two nights. Um, yeah, James Storm defeated Rob Gronkowski, as I said earlier on, to retire him because he didn't end up wrestling in real life, so I got rid of him. Liv won the role in this title in a bit of an upset because she wasn't ready, but somebody... <clears throat> Um, had challenged me to make her the champion, so I did it. Um, Ray and the Street Profits beat the Church of Rollins trio, Johnny Gargano, Aikam, and Murphy. I can't remember why Priest why Priest wasn't involved in that. I think he might have just been. I think he might have been ringside. At, um, oh yeah, it says here he scolds them, and only Orton and Priest will join him at ringside. Yeah. Um, our truth. Oh, our truth had a um, SummerSlam WrestleMania mega party. Where the 24-7 title changed hands a bunch. Um, and it was fucking sick. It ends up with like a swimming pool battle royal. Where you're eliminated if ever into the swimming pool on night two. Which is great. That, that's a, that's the first of two R-Truth WrestleMania SummerSlam parties that happen. The second one is even better. But yes. Um, um, Brendan Vink and Shane Form won the tag belts back. Officially finishing that goal. Um, Sonya defeats Alexa in the fight pit. Um... Vikings and Otis and Big Show had an eating contest <laughs> at the party. Robert Stone was trying to get the 24-7 title off our truth. Um, Cesaro defended against Sheamus. And yeah, Robert Stone got thrown into the swimming pool. Dakota Kai and Raquel retained against Jay Flo. Um, Undertaker beat Alistair Black in the um, cinematic match inside the church. And then Edge beat Seth. Uh, Randy Orton revealed himself as a double agent. He... Okay, you Seth Rollins helped Edge win. And then, yeah, they must have shaken hands or something after the match. And then Dan O'Brien in the main event defeats Braun to become the Universal Champion. Night 2. Um, Jake Fatu beats Oni on the pre-show. Um, Death from Above retained against the Usos and New Day in a ladder match. Um, um, <laughs> the party was carrying on because... Um, the cliffhanger for night one was that Robert Stone won the belt and then escaped in a limo. So our truth's been looking for him. Um, Selena Vega cuts a promo ahead of Andrade in Gaza. Andrade wins that. And um, the Hoss House. Oh, this was where the six man tag happened. Ali, Owens, and Gulag defeat the Hoss House. Okay, yeah. Stone asks Shinda and HO Big Show. Who's HO? H.O. Big Show. Oh, Hungover Big Show. Oh, that's it. Yes, yes, that's it. Of course. Hungover Big Show. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Lashley won the US title off Kevin Owens. Um, Shinsuke beat Sammy, but Sammy, you know, he got the round of applause after it because he was a babyface. Again, once again, and we love babyface Sammy. Um, Brock beat Joe. Uh, more, more shenanigans at the party. Um, <laughs> Paige... Defeated Bailey to win the women's title, but Sasha Banks immediately cashed in and took the belt off her. So Sasha Banks is now the SmackDown Women's Champion. Um, Roman and The Fiend went to a no contest. The finish of that match was um, John Cena sort of like appeared in the middle of the ring. Like the lights went out and then the lights came back on. He was just laying there, like laid out because we hadn't seen him since the Firefly Funhouse match. And his arc over the next year was, oh boy, that was fun to book, but. You know, nothing really got settled between Roman and The Fiend in that match. And yeah, there's the John Cena arriving. R-Truth won the Swimming Pool Battle Royal to win back the 24-7 title. And then in the main event, Drew defeated AJ to retain the belt. And then we kickstart what we call Season 2. Um, because the way this works is I... From Mania to SummerSlam is one season... Or the Raw after Mania to SummerSlam is one season. And then from the Raw after SummerSlam to Mania is another season. So this is season two. We kick off season two with a bang. Because the night after SummerSlam, um, Drew McIntyre cuts a promo and he's like, he challenges Edge to a rematch, to a match for the title in the main event, you know, out of respect. He's like, I want to defend the belt against Edge. And then Edge gets attacked by the Church of Rollins um, somewhere towards the end of the show. Yeah, they drag him, his corpse out onto the ring, onto the ramp here. And then the show ends with Buddy Murphy cashing in and taking the WWE Championship. So Murphy is the WWE champion at this point. 
and um, yeah, this is where the Church of Rollins start to dominate um, Raw. Eve Torres is named the new Raw General Manager because Samoa Joe is now a wrestler again. And yeah, Candice and Ruby are still beefing with the new champion Liv because, you know, Ruby hates Liv. And she's getting in the Church of Rollins orbit. So yeah, this, the, everything sort of starts revolving around the church at this point. And SmackDown has the Daniel Bryan era kick off. You know, he's the champion. Baron Corbin starts getting all up in his grill. Um, a Angel Garza's are getting a push. I wish I would have kept on with Garza push, but he sort of fell off a little bit. He had he had the fun milfs thing for a while, which I loved, but then I cut that short. Now he's just sort of around. And yeah. <laughs> Roman Reigns beats up Tony Nese. Firefly Funhouse comes out. Leaky the Super Dog. I remember that specifically. Um, he had a new puppet named after Roman Reigns. I don't think John Cena was anywhere to be seen on this pro on this promo. He wasn't. Okay. Or did he? he, did he I swear he went up on Raw. I can't remember. But oh, he's here. John Cena. He's coming back to Raw next week, I guess. Uh, we were doing the May Young Classic. Um, we started a Mae Young Classic, which ended at Evolution. The final was at Evolution. Um, these are obviously the participants in it. Rain, Alex Gracia, Ashley Vox, Obi Lucas, Uskyla Moon, Arbagi Nova, Jordan Grace, Atara, um, Kira Hogan, Faye Jackson, Eva Lise, Christy James, Sari, Lady Tapa, Willow Nightingale, Melissa, um, Lefisto, Jamie Hayter was in it, and she lost in the first round, apparently. Oh boy, that mean... Yeah. Indy Hartwell was in it. That was setting something up for later down the line. Um, Katie Lee and Tata Steels, Nevaeh and Maya Yuhiki, Kylie Ray, Gina Biggs, whoever that is. Who's Gina Biggs? Oh, Vipress. Uh, Taya Valkyrie, Jessica Troy, um, Lyra, Valkyria, and Nal Natalia Markova, Danny Jordan and Hon Hannah Blossom. And then, yeah, that's the next round. So that, that was the May Young Classic lineup. Um, the final was Katie Lee against Kylie Ray. For those wondering. But yes. Keith Lee had debuted at this point. He debuted on the Smackdown. After he, he confronted Braun Strowman. And that was his first match of the pay-per-view. was against Braun. And yeah, the church were doing their thing. Buddy Murphy was going to defend against Drew McIntyre. At Unforgiven. John Cena was here. And he was. He was very different. He was a bit of a different John Cena. That's all I'll say. And of course this segment here. I believe that's the segment right there. Unless it happened on the Raw Rock. No, it's here. EO debuted as um, Kyrie's new best friend. And that's when the Kabuki Bobbies broke up, setting up EO and Asuka for Evolution. A match which ooh, we're definitely going to get back to. Okay. Trust me, this this won't be the last time you see EO and Asuka face off. Let's just let's just put it that, that way. Um, yeah. But yeah, that was EO's debut. The moment challenge run changed right there. Because Seth Rollins was still the protagonist at this point. And probably still is, even to this day. But yes. Um, Unforgiven. Um, Johnny Gargano won the IC title from Cesaro. The Unforgiven was like peak Church of Rollins bullshit. Like, <laughs> um, Dakota and Raquel retained in a four-way against two J-Flow teams and the Robert Stone brands, Aaliyah and Brandy Lauren. Um, and then they called out they're like, oh my god, we, we, we lost, we got screwed, we won another match right now. Kyrie Neo came out and beat him. And then Asuka came out and attacked them both, I guess, setting up Evolution. Kevin Owens beat Elias in what I'm sure was a thrown-together rivalry. And this was when the Spooky Purge video started airing. Um, they'd been airing on Raw for, like, the past month. Like, there were these creepy videos that were like, oh, there's a spooky mask with, like, red eyes, and it's, like, all over the screen. And it ended up being a new group led by Alistair Black, containing Dexter Loomis, Killian Dane, and Sue Young. They were called The Purge. And yeah, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods won the Raw Tag Titles back from Aussie Might. Randy Orton beat Damian Priest. Obviously, that's Church of Orleans related. He was a snake. And he beat up the Church of Orleans as Damian Priest at Unforgiven. Um, then the two female members of the church faced Liv in a triple threat for the belt. Uh, Liv won pinning Candice, but then issues between her and Ruby weren't quite over just yet. And then that's this segment is the hype video for Seth Rollins versus Edge inside the steel cage, which Seth ends up winning. You know, they're one apiece then. 
and then the main event Murphy retains over Drew because of some fuckery. But I think this Raw show is very, very important. But we'll get to that after we do No Mercy. No Mercy was um, main evented by a four-way Sasha Banks against Shayna Baszler, Paige, and Bailey. Um, obviously, Sasha was the champion now. There was a bit of tension between her and Bailey, but that sort of all came to a head when there was a turn after the match. I think Bailey was the one who turned on Sasha here. Like, my timeline for this may be wrong, but I believe Sasha was the one who was betrayed, because it was in Boston, if I do remember correctly. Yes. Because, yeah, Sasha Bailey beat up Sasha in her hometown, so then she was betrayed as the heel going into Evolution. Important note that. Uh, Uso is defended against the Dirty Dogs. Gaza defeated AJ Styles. Again, this was when Gaza was getting set up for a push. I sort of fell off with him. I do feel bad about it. Lashley retained the US title against Sami Zayn. Um, Dakota and Raquel had another four-way. This time against Nara and Alexa, Sugar Ross, and the Iconics. They retained that. And then after the match, um, Nia... Because Nia Jax had betrayed... No, um, sorry. Alexa Bliss had betrayed Nikki Cross after the um, fight pit. Because I guess, like, I guess Nikki threw in the towel or something for Alexa at the pay-per-view. I was worried about her and all that shit. But she then aligned with her other friend Nia Jax against Nikki Cross, who was a, who was now our enemy. And then Nikki Cross brought out Ember Moon, who also was a friend of these people who, you know, they, they, they sort of had a little tag team thing. It was pretty pretty fun for a little mid car thing involving Nia Jax. But Nia Jax does go away, like, shortly after this. Uh, Keith Lee wins his pay-per-view debut against Braun Strowman. And then Brock Lesnar comes out and he challenges Keith Lee to a match at Super Showdown in India. Corbin defeats Daniel Bryan to win the Universal title. Tucker, um, the Hoss House had gone its separate ways at this point, so Tucker just became Corbin's knight. You know, do you get it? Haha, <laughs> Tucker knight. And I think I actually give him the name back at that point as well. Uh, Roman versus Bray wasn't the fiend. It was um, Bray Wyatt the man against Roman Reigns the man. At this point, Roman was still a babyface, even though he was the tribal chief in real life. But I'd had I'd made plans for him as a babyface. He was he changed out of the gear. He dropped the sealed tactical vest. He was shirtless. He was using a different theme song, so he was still different. But he wasn't quite the tribal chief just yet. We'll get to that because that kickstarts the greatest angle in the history of Challenge Run. But yes, and then the main event, obviously the four way. So Corbin is the Universal Champion for those keeping track at home, and Buddy Murphy is the WWE Champion. But on Raw, guess what happens? Um, oh, it's there. Um, Buddy Murphy is... What was Shane McMahon doing? Oh, Shane McMahon was here because there was a WWE World Cup to crown the new best in the world, and he was obviously the old best in the world. So the winner of the WWE World Cup, which was the final, was being held at Super Showdown, would face Shane McMahon in a best in the world versus best in the world match in Survivor Series, and John Cena and Drew McIntyre, I guess, were in that. And then Drew beat The Miz... And then the church, having some sort of thing, Otis walked in. And Otis had some sort of beef with the church, which ended up meaning that Buddy Murphy defended the WWE title against Otis later on tonight. And Otis won it. <laughs> Otis won the WWE Championship. <laughs> in a 45-rated match. So yes. Um, Otis and Baron Corbin at this point were the two world champions. Um, I can't remember what this is. Dio Madden... The Vikings and Samoa Joe. Uh, Randy Orton against Gargano in the main event. Um, this was setting up Gargano and Buddy Murphy of the church against Rated RKO for the Super Showdown. And yeah. The great Carly was around again because Super Showdown was in India. So Carly was about. That's also why Jinder was doing stuff. Um, John Cena. Um, I might as well just say it. Since he came back at SummerSlam, he was being very... He was being basically, he was being very Homelander. He was, he was a different side of John Cena. He was a naughty boy. He was, but he was still pretending he wasn't. Like, we could see, we could see through his blatant fucking bullshit. But he was pretending he was still a good guy. So, yeah, you know, that was a thing that played out over the last few months. And then SmackDown, the, the era of Baron Corbin kicked off with Tucker Knight, of course introducing him to the ring and Dan O'Brien wanting a match but I guess he didn't get it because I know Angel Garza ends up getting the shot at um, the pay-per-views O'Brien's in the World Cup, yeah, of course um, 
Keith Lee and Brock setting up their match. Roman um, and The Fiend end up in an Inferno match at the Super Showdown pay-per-view. And yeah, I think that's about it. Really going into that event, that's really any important. So Super Showdown, uh, we had a Halloween Battle Royal won by R-Truth to win back the 24-7 title. Um, the Bar had ended up in the Church of Rollins orbit at this point. And they they fought AOP and beat AOP in their official reunion match, even though they teamed up already earlier on. But, um, yeah. Uh, Jinder and Elias was a match for them together because this was in India. This was the Indian pay-per-view, hence the ratings for some of this is very bad. But then, Jesus Christ! Oh, right, I did do that. Um, Cameron Grimes and Lars Sullivan were a thing. Lars Sullivan was Cameron Grimes' is heavy. Fuck me. I completely forgot all about that. Um, yeah, then this was the World Cup first round, quarterfinals, whatever. John Cena beat Drew McIntyre. Jeff Hardy beat Andrade. Ali beat Shinsuke. And Brian beat AJ. And then Alistair Black, he just debuted off the Purge. He was wearing a sick-ass Purge mask. He beat Kevin Owens. And then the Purge used to beat up Kevin Owens when the bell gongs and the Undertaker comes out. And that sets up Taker's retirement match at Survivor Series, which is against Alistair Black. Um, 30 years of Undertaker. And then, yeah, John Cena and Brian advance to the final of the World Cup. Brock defeats Keith Lee here. Um, Seth Rollins, I didn't go over it. Um, Otis' title run only lasted a week because there was going to be a rematch between Murphy and Seth for... Um, no, Murphy and Otis for the Derby title on the Raw after. And then, oh... Somebody attacked Buddy Murphy backstage. Um, what could have possibly happened there? And then Seth Rollins took the spot instead and won the belt. Uh, yeah. And then Seth defended in a rematch against OS at the pay-per-view. Roman Reigns and The Fiend had an Inferno match, which was a 22-rated match, which was really shitty. Uh, John Cena won the WWE World Cup, meaning he'd wrestle Shane McMahon at Survivor Series. And then the main event, Red RKO, had reunited and they beat... Gargano and Murphy of the Church of Rollins. Evolution, the F Evolution 2, this was. Um, pre show match was an NXT UK title, Aaliyah James and Kaylee Ray. Um, the opener, EO defeated Asuka in a 78, which was the best match of this pay of view that should have been foreshadowing for something, but it wasn't, I guess. Um, Jillian Hall appeared, had a segment of J Flow. I guess she was in this battle royal. Um, yeah, with a bunch of other women. And um, that was for a tag title shot, and Kyrie Sane won it, so her and EO would challenge for the tag titles at Survivor Series. Shayna beat Paige, they had a thing after that fatal four-way, spilled off into a thing between them. Uh, there's Nikki Cross and Ember Moon against Nyron Alexa. Tylee Ray won the Mae Young Classic. Um, Trish and Lita had come back and they got a tag title run, they beat Dakota and Raquel for them here. Rhea defeated Tegan Knox to quote-unquote win. Um, her women's title history is really weird because like apparently she won the nxt belt four times that's just how tw works though like she won it back here i had to vacate it to get the belt on the line then send it back down and then give it back to her so she only she was only a two-time nxt women's champion but the game says four and that's why anyway she defeats tegan you know two people who are doing very good right now but for the nxt belt uh live and ruby last woman standing live retained uh, Charlotte defeated AJ. AJ Lee had come back. Um, was it here? One of these roars. Yeah. Here it is. Because um, she was pissed. Because her and Eve were beefing. Like, since Eve was the GM. But Eve didn't wrestle. So, like, Charlotte was, like, saying, Oh, you're a bitch. You're a bitch. And then she found an opponent for Charlotte at the pay-per-view. That opponent ended up being the returning AJ Lee. And, yeah, that's out of the match for Evolution. And Charlotte went over. And then Sasha defeats Bailey to retain the belt. As I mentioned before, at No Way Out, or No Mercy even, uh, Bailey was considered the heel after she betrayed Sasha Banks at that pay-per-view, because it was in Boston. And then that was officially no longer the case here, because this served as a double turn between the two, because Indy Hartwell aligned with Sasha Banks. Um, yeah. And that form Sasha ended up forming her own group with Mickey James, and was there a fourth member? Oh, Dana Brooke, yeah. So yeah, that was the end up forming like a little, her own little crew after that, and Bailey went babyface for a while. Building up to Survivor Series, there was a whole lot going on here because there was a Team Raw versus Team SmackDown match. 
but Raw also had its own Church of Rollins like thing going on against the Raw Avengers, which was rated RKO, The Bar, and somebody else. So the members of Team Raw couldn't be any of the really top, top guys on Raw. And then also Seth Rollins was facing Baron Corbin at the pay of view because that was the WWE Champion and the Universal Champion. And then somewhere along the way, um, Otis ended up taking the IC title from Johnny Gargano. Uh, might have been here. Yeah. Otis took the IC title. Oh, Drew McIntyre was the other Raw Avenger. Um, so yeah, it was Drew, Edge, Orton, Cesaro, and Sheamus against the Church of Rollins being Seth, Murphy, Gargano, Priest, and Akam. Because Razor, I think, was still out. And... Yeah. Um... Swerve and Santos are doing their thing here. And then Team Raw, I think, was Kevin Owens, Samoa Joe, Jeff Hardy, Andrade, and Elias, I want to say. And, yeah. And SmackDown was built around uh, Team SmackDown, which was Roman Reigns, Keith Lee, Sami Zayn, and two other people that I can't remember. And then, of course, Corbin was fighting Seth. Ali might have been on Team SmackDown, actually. And then, yeah. Anyway, and The Undertaker's last match against Alistair Black in a... You know, I think it might have been a Boneyard match. I can't remember what it was specifically. Some sort of cinematic match, because there was a rule that I had to do a cinematic match every Big Four that I ended up failing. So, yeah. And then we get to Survivor Series 2020. Um, Santos won a um, mixed brand tag team battle royal, which earned him and Swerve a tag title shot at high voltage against the Raw Tag Team Champions. Uh, team Raw's women... Which was Charlotte Flair, Asuka, Tony Deville, Tony Storm, and Ruby Riot. Beat Team SmackDown's women, which was Bailey, Dakota, Ala Exa, Ember, and Shayna. Seth beat Corbin. Usos, who were the SmackDown Tag Champions, beat the New Day, who were the Raw Tag Team Champions. The IC Champion, OS, beat Bobby Lashley. I think Apollo Crews was the reason for that. Because it wasn't clean. It damn sure wasn't clean. Kyrie Neo won the Women's Tag Team Championships here. And. Yeah, Sasha defeats Liv. That was SmackDown Women's Champion against Raw Women's Champion. Um, Roman Keefley, Angel Garza, AJ Styles, and Sami Zayn was Team SmackDown. They beat Team Raw because Team Raw was having a bit of dysfunction because, you know, Samoa Joe was there, Kevin Owens. You know, there's a lot of egos on that team. And they ended up having a match at the next peer review because of it. John Cena defeated Shane McMahon to be the true best in the world. Uh, the Raw Avengers went over um, the Church of Rollins. And then the Alistair Black defeated The Undertaker in the Boneyard match. 30 years after he debuted, and that was, yeah, his last match. He retired that day. And Alistair Black. He's had an up and down run since retiring The Undertaker, but I think he's back on the up right now. Um, yeah. We then go into the build to high voltage. There was a gauntlet here to determine who'd wrestle Liv Morgan for the belt. Um, EO won it to get the shot at Liv at the pay per view. John Cena was doing PSAs about our truth because that's his childhood hero. And they ended up having a match at um, the pay-per-view coming up, which was a big moment for the John Cena character. And then the Raw Avengers had a five-way after winning at Survivor Series to determine who'd wrestle Seth at the pay-per-view. Randy Orton won it. So yeah, that's up. Randy Orton versus Seth Rollins for high voltage as well as EO versus Liv. And then SmackDown was building to their Christmas pay-per-view. Uh, Roman and Keith Lee had a match that was to determine the number one contender, well, or the winner of the match would go, become the number one contender. The match was happening at the pay-per-view, obviously. And then uh, Mustafa Ali was the number one contender for Baron Corbin's title. Uh, the Usos were around, I think, somewhere around here um, was when Dominic debuted. And um, the part of the Drone, up half of the Dragon, um, they're from above, I believe, are the ones beefing with the Mysterios. And then Apollo Crews for challenging Lashley. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the build to the Christmas pay-per-view. Um, High Voltage, the final show of the year for Raw, saw Gargano win his IT title back as Otis. Um, Cedric defeated Ricochet. Um, they'd broken up. Cedric Alexander had then had um, Dio Madden as his muscle. And they had a magic pay-per-view. Cedric won it. Church of Rollins were scheming. You know, again, they were all over the show. They were the they were the leading force of Raw in the early days. Um, Santos and Swerve won the Raw Tag Titles in the New Day. Tony Storm beat Charlotte in a shocking upset at the time. Um, can't remember what fucking I can't remember what fucking Cameron Grimes and Lars Sullivan were doing, 
probably feeding with only Lorcan by the looks of it. Um, Kev beat Joe. John Cena beat our truth. This was the official um, shedding of the good guy skin for John Cena here. I mean, he didn't shed it because he still kept up the act after this match. But he just beat the fuck out of our truth and was like, it was uncomfortably long. And like, this is where he really, like, officially became the bad guy. And Carmelo was coming out going, you know, fucking leave him alone, bitch. And then, yeah, John Cena was, you know, showed that he was an asshole here. Um, EO won the role and started from Liv. Yeah. Um, Aster Black defeated Drew McIntyre. They, they had a thing, I guess. And then Randy Orton won the title from Seth Rollins to close out the show and the year for Raw. Now, the SmackDown pay-per-view... Um, Roman beat Keith Lee, which means Roman Reigns then won the opportunity to, to wrestle for the Universal Championship at the Royal Rumble. Um, Ziegler and Rude apparently retain... Oh, no, because Path of the Dragon were the champions... And then they had to vacate them at some point because one of them got injured. The Usos won them. And then when did the Dirty Dogs win the bell here? Yeah. So yeah, they 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 were a few of the Usos. They were the champions. Gable and Bryan had a thing. Apparently that was the start of what would end up being part of a WrestleMania match. Uh, Ray and Dom. Then they lost their debut, but you know Ray was hyping his son up. If they do get him next time, son. Apollo won the U.S. title. Uh, this is where Angel Garza and Raquel slowly started to become a thing. Like, Garza was smitten with Raquel and Dakota was, like, trying to stop them getting together. Uh, and then they failed to regain the titles from Kyrie and Io. And then this, Roman Reigns, who just become the number one contender for um, the championship. He was attacked backstage by a mystery attacker. And that took him out of the Royal Rumble. So we had no idea who attacked him or what it was, but yeah. And then Ember Moon won the belt from Sasha Banks because I had a goal to make her champion, so she got a one month run with the belt. And then Ali defeated Corbin to win the championship because again he had a reign, uh, a goal to win the belt. And then I can't remember the the context behind this. Brock Lesnar came out. He might have declared himself for the Royal Rumble. Because he definitely didn't fight Ali, because Ali was fighting Roman Reigns, who'd been attacked at the Royal Rumble. Which then moves on to 2021. Um, we were in the build to the Royal Rumble here. You know, it's Rumble build, really. There's nothing really that exciting outside of the Rumble match itself. Um, the Church of Rollins is Candice and Ruby were challenging Io and Kyrie for the belts. Uh, Seth was getting a rematch with Randy. Io defended her role in the style against Tony Storm. Uh, Ali was defending against Roman Reigns, who hadn't shown up yet because, you know, he's still attacked. Um, AJ had debuted Omos, I guess. And, yeah, mystery attacker here. Attacker B was this person. So you could probably take a guess what was going on here. Um, yeah. And then it ended up being that Ali would face the mystery attacker for the championship at the Royal Rumble. And then we get to the Royal Rumble. Smackville, I kind of, oh, I did that because this was episode 99. I wanted 100 to be the Rumble. This was just a throwaway event. Um, Shotzi and Champa won four ways because they were both in NXT at this point to earn an NXT spot in the Royal Rumble. This was determined number 30. But Mur Buddy Murphy won this to win number 30 in the Royal Rumble, which, as we'll find out in a minute, didn't go down the way he thought it would. And I believe that was also a Rumble qualifier. Selena Vega versus um, Casey Catanzaro. And then the Rumble itself. Um, Randy Orton retained against Seth Rollins in the opener. So he was looking to go to WrestleMania as the WWE Champion. Sasha Banks defended the champ. No, she won it back from Ember Moon, sorry. Oh, this is when... Because Mickie James was beefing, quote-unquote, with Sasha and Indy. And then this was the turn. She turned on Ember. She joined the group. And then Sasha was the champion once again. And then this was obviously a women's Rumble hype segment. Which Bianca Belair won the Women's Royal Rumble in 2021. You know, how original. Um, this match was scarily accurate to the real-life Women's Royal Rumble that year. To the point where they definitely watched me and stole some of my ideas. But there were some key moments in there that set up WrestleMania matches. I'm trying to think of any specifics. Uh, I can't off the top of my head. 
Um, the runner-up was Dakota Kai, I remember that, because she was, would then go on to be a runner-up again later on. But yeah, it was won by Bianca, setting up the match between her and Sasha Banks for WrestleMania. And then Ruby and Candice won the Women's Tag Team Championships from Io and Kyrie, And then Tony Storm failed to take the role Women's title from Io. Um, I don't know, I clicked on her face. And then, of course, Karrion Cross was revealed to be the mystery attacker of Roman Reigns. This was his first match on the main roster. He won the Universal Championship. Because they had a goal to have somebody win the world title on their, um, on their debut. Cross went on to have a very, very, very good six months. And then did nothing ever again. Because <laughs> he's Karrion Cross. At the time, he had aura. Uh, that's all. I'll, I'll defend myself here by saying, at the time, Karrion Cross was cool. Okay, so, yeah, and then, in the main event, John Cena cheated to win the Royal Rumble. He vanished halfway through the match, there were some Fiend shenanigans in there, um, the Fiend was beating with Alistair Black, um, he did the three phases of Bray Wyatt thing, um, Funhouse Bray came out, Alistair eliminated him, Colt Bray came out, Alistair eliminated him, and then the Fiend wasn't actually in the match, he just appeared and took out Alistair Black to set up their match for WrestleMania, but then the Fiend shenanigans was when John Cena sort of snuck under the ring. And then he waited till the very end, once Keith Lee thought he'd won, he'd low-blowed Keith Lee and tossed him over the top to win the Royal Rumble. His third Royal Rumble, tying Stone Cold. And Keith Lee, of course, did eliminate Brock Lesnar during the course of the match. So, yeah. Fast, fast Lane was the stop gap between WrestleMania and... um. Royal Rumble, and the Chambers were here, Randy and Io both retained their belts, there was a timeline where Charlotte won this because Kyrie turned on Io, but I held off on it um uh, the Swerve group defeated New Day to retain and then they ended up having a match at Wrestlemania where it was them trying to break the record, because they'd won 9 belts and if they beat Vega Mafia they'd get their 10th, but then if Vega Mafia won they'd disband and then yeah, Big E against Andrade, I guess, was a spin-off of that. Uh, Buddy Murphy defeated Elias, and of course it was then revealed that Seth Rollins was the one who attacked him and took his number in the Royal Rumble, and he was beefing with the church here, you see, leading to Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy at WrestleMania. Uh, Gargano defeated Ricochet to retain the IC title again during some point during here, Damian Priest. Um, oh no, actually, the way went off on their own thing. Um, the way then left the church, then they sort of went on to become like Gargano, Candice, Priest, and the AOP, and Ruby. And then that's when Damian Priest sort of left it, because he was like being... Gargano was being a dick to him at some point. He won the 24-7 title at one point, and then just gave it to Damian Priest, because like, hey, now you've got a belt. Um, there was a freeway built brewing between Drew McIntyre, Sheamus, and Cesaro to crown the... Um, the franchise player of Raw in that WrestleMania match, which Drew would then end up winning. But yeah, that's pretty much it from the Raw side. And then, of course, Randy Orton and John Cena, the biggest WrestleMania match in history. Cena's attempt to win number 17. So it was Orton and Cena finally one on one in the WrestleMania main event. If John Cena won, he'd break the record. But if Randy Orton retained, John Cena could never challenge for the World Championship again, and he'd never break the record. So yeah. There's WrestleMania's Night 2 main event. And then No Way Out. Sasha retained in the chamber. And, you know, set up Bianca Belair as her opponent for WrestleMania. Usos and the Street Profits. Usos in a line with Jacob Fatu at this point. You know, precursor for what was to come later. I'm sure you can guess. Um, Gable defeated Apollo to retain the US title. Gable actually did double Dewey at WrestleMania. Because in the background here, Bivens had some beef with um, Adam Pearce. And... It was Team Pierce versus Team Bivens at WrestleMania, with Team Pierce being um, Daniel Bryan, Apollo Crews. No, Daniel Bryan. Yeah, Daniel Bryan, Apollo Crews, and Sami Zayn was the match against AJ Styles, Chad Gable, and somebody else on Team Bivens. But the Bivens, I can't remember who it was because the Bivens crew did end up going to become their own thing later on. But yeah, there was a third member of the Bivens crew. And then Paige. Had debuted. Um, oh, Nikki Cross had aligned with Kaylee Ray. Um, after the Royal Rumble, that, was, that served as Kaylee Ray's call up, and then her and Nikki Cross challenged for the belts. Paige was here, and she was like, "Ah, you know, 
you're going to beat these bums in the Church of Rollins because I trained you and I brought you up. But these two had said, like, oh, yeah, we have a veteran in WWE did teach us everything and took us under our wing. But that didn't end up being Paige. We'll find out who that was in a couple of months. But, yes, Brian retained... No, Karen Cross retained over Daniel Bryan, tragically. Um, oh, how could I forget about this? Um... After Ali lost at the Royal Rumble, at the, the, yeah, he lost about the camera across the Royal Rumble because he let everybody down because he lost to this attacker who wasn't even on SmackDown. Um, Ali requested his release, and it was granted. So Ali was released from WWE. But he then ended up tracking um, Mia Yim, Kushida, and Dabakata, who all also requested their release, quote unquote, and they formed a group called. Um, they were the message at the time. They do later get renamed to America, but yeah, they were the message at the time. And they hijack. They were hijacking SmackDown in like the hacker fashion. And then he cut a big promo here, and that would end up setting an unsanctioned match between him and Triple H at WrestleMania because you know, yeah, Triple H is Triple H. So yeah, Ali was doing big things here. He was he was one of the top guys here. Um, Candice and Ruby defeated Kaylee Ray and Nikki Cross to retain. Then AJ and Paige sort of reunited to set up a WrestleMania match between these two teams. Well, Universal Championship number contenders elimination chamber. Gaza, Braun, Corbin, Lashley, AJ, and Keith Lee was the match. Brock Lesnar reappeared. He took out Keith Lee before he could enter the match. So, of course, this is when we see Roman Reigns again for the first time since the Christmas pay-per-view. He enters the he enters the elimination chamber, wins it, to earn himself a match of carrying cross at WrestleMania for the Universal title. And that's pretty much all of the important mania matches um somewhere down the road um there's a number one contenders mini tournament for the raw women's title that is won by sonya deville and yeah so sonya and io was the mania match and then miz and morrison were is in hollywood because you know hollywood was originally supposed to be mania 37 but then they moved it because of covid so we actually did our 37 and 39 mania themes were switched basically but yes, uh, no one of Mania, we saw on the pre-show um, the tag match. Jeff Hardy and Ricochet had aligned to face Dio Madden and Cedric Alexander. They were, atta- they were an alliance, and then Ricochet and Jeff beat them. Um, Jay Flo interrupted the Miz and John Morrison's opener of um, WrestleMania because they were, they, they were the co-hosts of WrestleMania. Um, Damian Priest won the title from Johnny Gargano. Ending that portion and pretty much putting a nail in the Church of Rollins at this point. Um, Dakota Kai and Bailey had a thing. Like, there was just a little SmackDown feud that was going on. Dakota ended up beating Bailey at WrestleMania. After the match was when Angel Garza came out and him and Raquel, you know, Raquel turned babyface on Dakota. And Garza and Raquel were a thing after that for, like, a few months. Um, this was entrances for the Yondre Battle Royal, which was won by Samoa Joe. Uh, yeah, and then a, an interview by Seth ahead of the match with Buddy Murphy. Uh, New Day did win the tag belts against the Vega Mafia here. Uh, Great Carly apparently came out. I could have sworn it was actual, like, legends. I mean, yeah, but, like, maybe he was just a face morpher. Maybe that was, like, Shawn Michaels, but I couldn't get, like, actual Shawn. Because I remember Shawn Michaels, Hogan, The Rock, Stone Cold, people like that all came out and beat up The Miz and John Morrison on WrestleMania. Uh, Keith Lee gets his win back over Brock Lesnar. Uh, Undertaker goes into the Hall of Fame. Uh, AJ and Page defeat the Church of Rollins to win the women's tag titles. Buddy Murphy defeats Seth Rollins in the culmination of, of what was at that point the best storyline in the series. Um, Corbin was the other member of Team Bivens. But yeah, um, Adam Pearce stays in power. Bivens doesn't get the GM role as Pearce's team of Brian, Apollo, and Sami Zayn. Defeat Gable, AJ, and King Corbin. Karrion Cross defeats Roman Reigns to retain the Universal title. Uh huh. And then Bianca Belair wins the title from Sasha in the main event. So now we finally have Bianca where we need her to be. So yeah. At night two, uh, Lashley and Braun had a match on the pre show that got 73. Oh no, this is where The Rock came. This is where the legends came out. Okay. The Rock, yeah, Bret Hart, HBK, Hogan, yeah. I see him well. Ray and Dom became SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Charlotte beat Liv 
um, this this match was entirely set up because um, Charlotte had come to me in the game and offered to put Liv Morgan over, but I accidentally had Liv win a tag match on Raw before WrestleMania, and that counted as the goal. So, you know, the match had already been made, and Charlotte didn't want to lose, so Charlotte had to go over. Um, Rhea won the Women's Battle Royal. This was her official debut on the main roster by winning the Women's Battle Royal. She'd go on to, you know, do quite well for herself, let's put it that way. Shinsuke won the US title. Um, Drew McIntyre became the franchise player, and he got three wishes from that. Like, he couldn't wish for a championship match or, like, yeah, just, like, to wish a champion or something, but he got three wishes of his own, and he did use them quite wisely. Um, Edge and Kevin Owens had a thing. Um, Edge beat Kevin Owens at WrestleMania. Io retained against Sonya. Uh, Ali won an unsanctioned match against Triple H. Um, performance in Austin. Yep, Stone Cold came out. There he is. Uh, the Fiend beat Alistair Black in a Firefly Funhouse match. And then in the main event, Randy Orton retained over John Cena. I used the once in a lifetime note. I know funny because it's John Cena and Randy Orton. But technically in the game they hadn't fought yet. But, and it backfired so I never used that note ever again. Raw after Mania. I'm sure some cool shit happened on here, but I can't quite remember. Um, this might have been the draft, actually. Um, in the draft, both world champions ended up going to SmackDown. Um, I can't remember where the draft is. This is the draft. Oh, I think this is the draft, yes. But wherever, wherever the draft is, uh, both the champions end up going to SmackDown in the draft. So the WWE champion, the Universal champion are on SmackDown. And then, by proxy, um, Raw brought back the World Heavyweight Championship. And the the finals of that tournament to crown the new World Heavyweight Champion would happen at Backlash in Australia as Keith Lee faced off with Buddy Murphy. And also because it's in Australia, Bronson Reed got a shot, a shot of the IC title against um, Damian Priest. Uh, I think EO, Liv, and Charlotte was the triple threat for the women's title. And yeah. So, Rotomania also served as the draft show. And also served as the debut of the Undisputed Era. And because I hadn't been, I hadn't been allowed to call them up at this point. I had to wait a year. That was one of the challenges I had. And yeah, they were here. They debuted. They beat up Edge and Christian against Kofi and Xavier Woods. And yeah, so they, they were here to cause mayhem on Raw in the post um, Church of Rollins era. And then, yeah, this is where um, John Cena sort of forces himself to be picked first because um, the pool was on night one for the draft pool. It was Randy Carrion and Io were in that pool and Bianca was in the second pool. And Raw ended up somehow... I can't exactly remember how, but they ended up not drafting both world champions. Oh, because Brock went before Randy, apparently. Okay. And then, yeah. So, yeah. Raw brought back the big gold belt, and then SmackDown did a unification match at Judgment Day between Randy Orton and Cameron Cross. Um, there was also was setting up Bianca's first defense, which was against... Fuck, I can't remember. Uh, might have been a, oh, it was a rematch with Sasha to Alfred Vols, yeah. And yeah, we then get to the pay per views. I think when when do I change the the formula for the? Oh, it's here. Yeah, here's Money in the Bank's on week one of June. Or no, no, Money in the Bank's on week four actually, so it isn't here yet. When does that happen? Is it really this late? I could have sworn it was a lot before two thousand and twenty two. That I changed. Oh, it was after Mania 38, I see. Yeah, okay. Anyway. Um, Backlash was in, yeah, it was in Australia. Uh, Rhea and Tony Storm obviously faced off because it was in Australia. This was Rhea's first pay-per-view on the main roster. Uh, Woods and Kofi defended against Santos and Swerve in 87, which was the best match of the save at that point. Priest retained against Bronson Reed. Apollo Crews beat Daniel Bryan because Apollo had turned on him since WrestleMania, I guess. Uh, the A-list group 
and well, Stone Brand, I guess, had merged. Uh, AJ and Paige defeated the Lady Scots to retain the belts. They turned at some point, but I don't think it was here. I think this was a handshake. But I know they are heels challenging for the belts and money in the bank. Brock Lesnar defeated only Lorcan, a match I wanted to do because it's funny. Um, yeah, Io retained against Liv and Charlotte, and Keith Lee won the World Heavyweight Championship. So the new World Heavyweight Champion was Keith Lee. And then a Judgment Day. Uh, Candice and Ruby defeated Shotzi and Ember. I can't remember the story there. I think Candice and Ruby were just a heel team at this point on SmackDown because the way had like sort of broken up. I think both. Mem- I think one member of AOP. I think it was Candice, Ruby, Johnny Gargano, and Razor because I think right after WrestleMania, A can master his release for some reason, and he's fucking in New Japan right now, killing it. Braun also at some point went off to New Japan, but he's back now. So yeah, uh, Cesaro and Gable had a match. Um, I'm gonna be honest, season three to me might be my weakest. But again, we'll we'll, we'll get I'll, I'll we'll go over it all for you. Uh, AJ and Sammy and Cesaro and Gable were both spin offs of the Biven stuff. Uh, Ray and Dominic won the title or retained the titles against the Usos. And I guess Jacob Fatu beat them up after the match. Joe and Biggie had a match, I guess, because beef. Uh, mean Girls, why the fuck was AJ in this? Oh, Adam Pearce. Never mind, it says Styles up there, but yeah. Mean Girls was Carmella and Danny Jordan with Reginald. You know. As you do. Bianca retained against Sasha in a 2 out of 3 falls match. Nakamura retained the US title against Gargano because he wanted a mid cut a rematch, I guess. And he wasn't on Raw anymore because he got drafted to SmackDown. Uh, New America, sorry, or The Message, whatever they were called here. Challenge Shinsuke. This well, this probably was when they got renamed New America because it's for the U.S. title. So yeah, they they called out Nakamura for a U.S. title match, I guess at some point. And then this, Randy was actually supposed to go over here, but he the game called an audible because Randy got injured during the match, and Carrying Cross retained reunified the belts. You know, you can tell by the excitement in my voice. I'm very happy with this, and I think this aged very well. Um, yes. But yeah, because I, I was the original. I'm gonna because Joe won. Joe wins the belt at Money in the Bank, and I originally wanted Randy to win this because then Carrion doesn't get a one month title reign, and we don't hot potato the belt as much. Because Randy would win the belt, get the Universal title, vacate it, and f- retire the belt. So that you know doesn't really count because he did win it and then just got rid of it. But yeah, Carrion won the belt because the game decided to injure Randy. Nice. Uh, Money in the Bank saw they had that aforementioned Samoa Joe of Carrion Cross match. Uh, the WWE title match was, or the World Heavy Changer match was Keith Lee against. I can't remember. Let's check. Was it Apollo? Was that here or was that King of the Ring? It was Kevin Owens. Okay. So, yeah, here the Lady Scots had turned heel and won the championships from AJ and Page. Uh, so, yeah. They, they'd turned on who he thought was their mentor at the time. And then, uh, Sonny Deville wins the Women's Money in the Bank ladder match. Doesn't hold that briefcase for very long. Um, the Miz cheats to win the IC title from Damian Priest. Uh, Edge and Christian defeated the UE and Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston to win the Raw Tag Titles. EO defeats Charlotte to retain their role in this title. The Usos win the belts back from Ray and Dom in a steel cage. To win the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. And this is a few months before the curse of the SmackDown Tag Team Championships happens. Uh, yeah. Oni wins Men's Money in the Bank. Oni Lorcan wins Money in the Bank. Yep, you, you see, you're seeing that right. Uh, Bianca Belair defeats Dakota to retain the women's title. But then Sonny Deville immediately cashes in. And Sonny Deville takes home the SmackDown Women's Championship. Mustafa Ali wins the US title from Nakamura. Uh, Cameron Grimes comes out waffling a bunch of shit that's when Finn Balor makes his uh, main roster return and he beats Cameron Grimes to cement himself back as a player on the on the main roster because he was in NXT you know when we took over the save uh, Keith Lee beat Kevin Owens to retain and then Joe won the WWE title that's money in the bank uh, Bad Bloods um, was a triple threat between Keith Lee Daniel Bryan and Apollo Crews 
for the World Heavyweight Championship. Um, Io defended against Kyrie on that show, I know. And again, it wasn't a turn. It was, you know, a friendly competition title match. Uh, yeah. And I can't really remember much else, because again, this, this sort of period is a blur. Oh, right, The Miz dropped the belt straight back to Damian Priest. And they had, like, a little hot potato thing for the belt for a while. And I think The Miz did end up breaking the record for most IC title runs. But, yeah. They end up popping the belt back and forth, back and forth. Bobby Lashley was feeding with Drew McIntyre, it seems. Kevin Owens, he was doing shit with Ever Rise around here. This was funny. But, eventually, I did get end up getting rid of these two. Which I do kind of regret, because Kevin Owens with these two was fun. But, Kev's a baby face now, so I couldn't really have kept it going. But, yeah. There we go, that's basically it for the build of Raw. And SmackDowns was building towards the Great American Bash. The main event of that was Joe defending against Cesaro. Um, uh, the triple threat match between Bianca Belair, Sonya Deville, and Dakota Kai. Um, and a bunch of other stuff. New America were doing stuff. Because I remember that had the sick-ass poster with Ali with the face paint on it. Like, one of my favorite pay posts I've ever done. And yeah. Um, I'll just go over it all once I get to the pay-per-views, I guess. Um, Adam Cole and Luchasaurus was a thing. Adam Cole, he'd been beefing with Edge and Christian, like, on and off since they debuted on the Wrath of WrestleMania. Obviously, this was all to set up Edge versus Adam Cole at SummerSlam, but I had to, like, kill a few months to get there. Uh, Rio beat Lacey Evans. I think Lacey Evans, there was, like, a, a match on Raw somewhere where it was to crown a number one contender for something. And I want to say, like, Lazy beat her by count out or something. I can't remember the exact law here. Might have even been back here. Yeah, but L Lazy was doing stuff for some reason. She was being used. And then she had, she had some sort of issue with Rhea Ripley. And then Rhea ended up just killing her on the pay-per-view. Because, of course, she did. Uh, Miz <laughs> won back the IC title in a triple threat match also involving John Morrison. Because, um, yeah, he did. Uh, Lady Scott's defeated Mackie Mina of j Flo to retain the belts. This was around the time where random new Japanese ladies, um, Natsumi, um, Kiona, and then these two, who we'll see again later, um, started appearing as, like, groupies for j Flo just randomly on Raw. And then this, this was the moment where it was all revealed they were also a secret hidden evil Joshi group led by Asuka, and they beat up all of J-Flow with a match at SummerSlam. Yeah. And of course, that, that, um, these two here, uh, is an important part of current lore. In case you forgot, these two were a part of the same stable in this save as well. So, yes. Um, Alistair Black and Buddy Murphy, I can't remember the lore behind this. I guess, you know, a, a top heel against the top baby face. Um, Alistair Black was still on and off feeding with Bray Wyatt. Um, he recruited evil Alexa Bliss by his side. She joined the Purge, and she was doing spooky stuff, which led to the Fiend and Sue Young returning, and you know setting up a match between Alexa and Sue Young for Evolution, the women's pay view coming up next. Edge and Christian against Kofi and Woods. They retained. Um, Io defeats Kyrie when Rhea Ripley comes out and challenges Io to a championship match, made official for Evolution Three. That's the main event of Evolution coming up. And then Keith Lee defeats Apollo and Brian to retain the world title. Great American Bash had Big E against AJ Styles. I think this was still a spin-off of... No, this wasn't a spin-off of the Bivens thing because Big E wasn't on SmackDown then. He joined SmackDown in the draft because after he won at Mania, he told Kofi and Woods to go on with the belts and then he wanted to go alone on SmackDown. But New Day would always be together. But he was doing his own singles thing over here. Lady Scott beat Bailey and Santana Garrett. Santana Garrett had like a three month run on the main roster as a babyface. You know. Bailey would later find other friends down the line, but yeah. Um, Mia Yim of New America defeated Shotzi Blackheart. The Usos beat the Vikings. And then the Usos and Jacob Fatu, they were doing their shit. You know, they were cousins. Which then leads to them eventually interacting with good old Roman Reigns, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, again, this was 2021, June, and Roman Reigns in this universe still a babyface. Um, Randy Orton and Karrion Cross had a rematch. Cross, I put over Randy again for some reason, because I was 
on crack. Um, Sonny retains uh, Dico and Bianca. Um, yeah. And then in the main event, Joe beats Cesaro to retain the WWE title. Uh, billing into King of the Ring. King of the Ring has um, Apollo against Keith Lee and I think Joe against no, Joe was fought with Rey Mysterio on this show. I think Roman fought Mustafa Ali in a non-title match. Or yeah, it was it was he was the US champion. Ali was, but it wasn't a title match. Um, and then of course we had the King of the Ring finals on it as well. Let's just get straight to that. Um, Joe, yeah, he retained the title against Ray in the opener. Uh, Usos had a freeway tag team defense against AJ Styles and Chad Gable of Bivens Enterprises, as well as the Street Profits. And then Kevin Owens against Buddy Murphy was the Raw final of the King of the Ring. SmackDown's final was Sami against Shinsuke. So setting up a Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn King of the Ring final. And then the Usos and Jacob met up with Roman Reigns backstage ahead of his match with Mustafa Ali. You know, going, hey, Us, we got your back, Us, family, and all that. And then the UE win the Raw tag titles off of Edge and Christian because of Adam Cole shenanigans. And then, you know, setting up a match at SummerSlam between Edge and Adam Cole. Uh, Kofi Kingston, he was on... Um, this might have been during the... Um, yes. Because during the King of the Ring... That, that this is, I can't believe I missed this out. This is the most important part of the King of the Ring build. Um, Xavier Woods, um, obviously, has made it perfectly clear that his dream at the time was to win King of the Ring. And he was taken out of the tournament. Yeah, by Cedric Alexander in the first round because he was attacked by a mystery attacker. You know, and Kobe Kingston was looking at demand justice to find out who it was. He assumed it was The Miz and John Morrison for some reason. I can't remember exactly why he thought it was The Miz. And at this time, Kobe was, you know, fucking... He was on beast mode. He got a random 96 against John Morrison on TV. And yeah, he fought Miz for the belt of the pay-per-view. Miz did retain. And then, yeah. Alistair Black and Bray Wyatt, I think that was Bray Wyatt, the the dude. And then Alistair Black beat him. A performance from Bad Bunny, because we were in we apparently we were in Paris. I didn't realise we were in Paris for this. Because we go to Paris again for evolution in two years' time. But Bad Bunny was here. He was performing, he got on the wrong side of the Vega Mafia. You know, that was a thing. They started beating with Bad Bunny. Um, Masafra Ali did defeat Roman Reigns. Tyler Breeze was around. He was the detective looking into the attack on Xavier Woods. You know, this was a thing. He'd been hired as, like, the ace detective to try and find out who attacked Xavier Woods. And him and Kofi were, like, in it together. John Cena was back. And he was looking for a match at SummerSlam because he was a dickhead and he wanted to get on the show. Um, Sami Zayn wins King of the Ring. And came a shot out the WWE Championship held by Samoa Joe at SummerSlam. And then Keith Lee retains against Apollo Crews in the main event. And then Drew McIntyre comes out. And he uses one of his wishes. I can't remember what he used the third one on. But he used one of them here to announce SummerSlam in Wembley. And then he used the other one to wish himself into a contenders match, I believe. Which he then ended up winning. So it was um, Drew McIntyre against Keith Lee at SummerSlam in Wembley. Moving on to Evolution, uh, Candice LeRae won the Tag Team Championship Battle Royal, so her and Ruby Riot would go to SummerSlam to face both the Lady Scots and Shotzi and Ember Moon in a triple threat match for the tag titles. Uh, Sasha and Shayna was the SmackDown Queen of the, Ring, Queen of the Ring Final. Kyrie and Raquel was the Raw Queen of the Ring Final. Asuka defeated Maki was the first match on that series with Dominion, as they were called, and J Flo, the two Joshi groups going at it. They had a 5v5 at SummerSlam. Uh, Naomi against Mercedes Martinez was the NXT Women's Championship match I didn't put the belt on the line because I had all that hassle with Rhea Ripley the year before uh, Dakota Kai beats Bianca um, yeah Charlotte and Eve are still beefing <laughs> and similar to how last year when she wanted the match Evolution and Eve brought out AJ it's you know I, I want to go to SummerSlam uh, biggest party of the summer and Eve goes well you can fight Paige in her retirement match at Wembley and then, yeah. Or was that her retirement match, actually? I think so, yes. AJ's still around, but I don't think Paige is. 
I know she's in AEW right now. She's the TBS champion. But I don't think she wrestled for us beyond... Yeah, she didn't. Okay. So, yeah, she retires at Wembley against Charlotte. Alexa beat Susie. Susie was um, the basically the Firefly Funhouse equivalent of Sue Young. Like, if Sue Young was the fiend, Susie was that version of her. And then Alexa beat her. Alexa was spooky at the time. She was in The Purge and ended up leading to... Alexa and Alistair Black against The Fiend and Sue Young inside Hell in a Cell at SummerSlam at Wembley. Uh, Sasha Banks became Queen of the Ring. She became Queen Sasha, spelled K-W-E-E-N. And then during her acceptance speech or whatever, Bailey came out and sort of like just glared at her. And then <laughs> she ended up costing Bailey this match against Sonya Deville, which had a triple threat match between Sonya, Bailey, and Sasha for SummerSlam. Then in the main event, Io and Rhea went to a double pin. And then Becky came back. This is the first time we've seen her since in the entire save because she'd been gone since the first Raw. And she announced SummerSlam would be a triple threat women's championship main event. Io defending against both Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch. Um, also during the build of SummerSlam at Wembley, um, we had um, KSI reappeared. Not reappeared, he appeared because it's Wembley, you know. And he wrestled. It was KSI of the Street Profits and Bianca Belair against Bivens Enterprises, which was AJ Styles, Chad Gable, Baron Corbin, and Dakota Kai. And then the Bad Bunny shit led to, I think it was Bad Bunny, Ricochet, Angel Gaza, and somebody else against the Vega Mafia, Swerve, San Francisco Bar, Andrade, and um, the other guy. Fuck. But yeah, there's, there's another eight-man tag. One of them involves Bad Bunny, one of them involves KSI. Is the point, is the takeaway here. Uh, yeah, Bray Wyatt and Alistair Black leading to their mixed mixed tag Hell in a Cell match. Kevin Owens, he was beefing with Finn Balor, and the demon reemerges. Or, yeah, that is that is here. Yeah, because, yeah, because that means I thought that the demon fought Randy Orton. But no, I don't know where I pulled that out of my ass from. Um, because Randy Orton fights Big E. Yeah. And yeah, that's pretty much the only build of SummerSlam. Seth Rollins. Um, oh, that is no the most important part. How could I forget? Um, during the the build, uh, Roman Reigns is still a babyface, of course. He's like beefing with the Usos. The Usos, the Usos turn heel on Roman Reigns, and then he's without a partner. And then Seth, who I, at this point I think we hadn't seen him since WrestleMania. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um. He, re he returns, and he signs of his S.H.I.E.L.D. brother. So the main event of SummerSlam Night 1 is the Usos defending the SmackDown Tag Team Championships against Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. And, yeah, again, important to note, August 2021, Roman Reigns in this timeline, still a babyface. Um, we then get to SummerSlam both nights at Wembley. And, yes, we kick off with Apollo Crews and Jeff Hardy in a match that existed. Um, yeah. Drew McIntyre wins the World Heavyweight Championship. He takes the belt from Keith Lee in Wembley to open the show. Big moment. Two-time world champion now, Drew McIntyre. Uh, Dominion defeat J-Flo. Uh, Asuka, Julia, Micah, Kiona, and Natsumi. And then R-Truth is doing more shenanigans at his house party. Uh, Sheamus and Otis actually came together to fight the Undisputed Era, and they're facing off with them, I think, on night two. But yeah, that's a Raw Tag Team Championship match. Tyler Breeze confronts Kofi ahead of his IC title match, talking about, you know, the stuff with Xavier Woods, and how, you know, tonight's on to win the IC title, and he does. Kofi Kingston becomes Intercontinental Champion. He beats Christian, The Miz, and Damian Priest in a fatal four-way. Uh, Bobby Lashley against Oni Lorcan. You know, Oni, Mr. Money in the Bank still takes it to Bobby Lashley and looks badass and kicks ass, but he doesn't quite get the job done. Um, Randy Orton defeats Big E. Yeah, just, just a feud on SmackDown. Nothing really special about it. It was just a rivalry. Um, Sasha Bank, Queen Sasha, wins the SmackDown Women's Championship over Sonya Deville and Bayley in Triple Threat. Um, Finn Balor does defeat Kevin Owens. Yeah, the Demon comes down and beats Kevin. It's, oh, it's Bad Bunny, Angel Garza, Ricochet, and Raquel against Andrade, Santos, Swerve, and Zelina. 
but yeah, that's the match. Bad Bunny makes his defense, makes his first match appearance. He wins. Uh, Toru Yano makes his one appearance in Challenge Run. At this point, the stock exchange is Bo Dallas and Trevor Lee. You know their their gimmick is that they are the stock guys that Cameron Grimes came back as. Lars Sullivan is long gone by this point. Yano makes an appearance. You know, doing doing stuff for the twenty four seven title. This is this is our true house party. You know, it's it's good. A uh, Charlotte beats Paige. And then in the end, Mr. Blobby leaves as a 24-7 champion. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Blobby. That Mr. Blobby. Um, and then the main event... Oh, because it is, is in London, of course. That's why Mr. Blobby's there. I didn't just pick him up for no reason. Um, and in the main event, the Usos retain the tag team championship over Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns because Roman Reigns turns heel on Seth Rollins and he joins the Usos. And we apparently Rikishi was there as well. Oh, he was, yeah, he was, because he, he doesn't, he's not long for this group. Uh, Roman Reigns kills him, like, soon. But, we have the bloodline. After, like, a year <laughs> of real time. Uh, night 2. Um, actually, speaking of that, if you go back and rewatch those those videos from the time, I was like, oh, you know, if you go back and rewatch Samantha 2020, I'm like, oh, you know, I could turn him heel, but I don't think they'll ever do that in real life, ha ha ha. Not knowing that the real life of SummerSlam 2020 was exactly when they did just that. Anyway, uh, TLC triple threat match for the women's tag titles. Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart win the belts from the Lady Scots and Candice and Ruby are also there. And R-Truth, he's been beefing with the Robert Stone brand for this 24-7 title for fucking ages. I don't know what Shinsuke and Liv are doing here, but the, the gist of night two of um, SummerSlam is... You know, he has to come together with his mortal enemies to take on and hunt down Mr. Blobby and take his belt. <laughs> um, Undisputed Era defeat Sheamus and Otis to retain the tag team titles. I don't think the turn happened here, but Otis does eventually go heel and join the Alpha Academy. But I don't think that was right here. I think that was a little bit later on. Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler, they broke up. They had a match at SummerSlam. Roode won it. Um, Gulak won the US title for Mustafa Ali. Um, Edge finally defeated Adam Cole in their match. Uh, John Cena's match at SummerSlam was against Buddy Murphy. And yeah, they won. Oh, he won that like a dickhead. And then, you know, Raw next night is in the O2. We'll get to what happened to John Cena on, on there when we get to that show. Um, Edge Sheeran and Stormzy performed Take You Back to London. Got a 19. Oof. They stunk up the joint. Sami Zayn wins WWE Championship. He does it. And then KSI, Bianca Belair and the Street Profits defeat the Bivens Enterprises. And then in the main event, I believe, oh yeah, Pat McAfee interviews uh, the England football team. And then Fabian Eichner came out because he's Italian. And then Pete Dunn beat up Fabian Eichner because I was bitter and salty about um, the Euros. Anyway, <laughs> um, Hell in a Cell tag team match. The Fiend and Sue Young defeat Arsenal Black and Alexa Bliss. And then I think the main event's up next. Yes, in an 89 rated, Becky Lynch wins the Raw Women's Championship from Rhea and Io. Then, again, here with, here with Raw, um, the story mainly going into Unforgiven. I believe the main event of Unforgiven was Io and Becky, you know. And the story going into that was Io was, you know, friends with Becky. She respected Becky. I was like, wasn't mad that she won the championship or whatever. But Kyrie could see through that and was like, ah, you know, you should be worried about Becky and all that shit. So that was the main angle going into To Unforgiven. John Cena runs his mouth in the O2, and Pete Dunn, Pete Dunn makes his official main roster debut, beats him clean in like two minutes. So yeah, that's that's how John Cena got humbled. Um, only Law can beat Grayson, apparently Grayson Waller had a cameo. Um, he wasn't officially called up yet, but he was there, apparently. Um, yeah. Uh, and then the... Yeah, the Miz and Kofi were beefing. I figure they have a ladder match for the championship at Unforgiven. And Xavier Woods around. Yeah, he's here. He's back now at this point. And Tyler Breeze is there. They're still looking to find out who attacked Xavier Woods and took him out of King of the Ring and ended his childhood dream. But yes, Raw's main... Build to that. Oh, Jeff Hardy actually won uh, 
a number one contenders match in the main event to get the shot at Drew McIntyre for the WWE Championship at Unforgiven, which ends up becoming a triple threat match also involving The Fiend. Um, yeah. But Bray Wyatt, like, he's sort of like, he's weird. Like, he attacks Drew McIntyre, but he doesn't really want to lay his hands on Jeff Hardy for some reason. And there for SmackDown, you know, we've got Bloodline shit. Um, they murder Rikishi at some point. Or are they being Roman. And then, of course, Roman is immediately thrusted into... <coughs> oh, right. I forgot to mention. <coughs> Sorry. After the main event. And um, they fucking kill Seth Rollins. He's only back for a month and then he goes away again. Because he's fucking murdered by the Bloodline. I can't remember what exactly I had them do. But there was like some sort of like specific move I had them do. Because I've like they used it again later on on somebody else. But something to write him off. But yeah, so he was gone out of the picture. And um, Sami Zayn was the champion. He was facing the bloodline. And the the core of Church of Rollins that are still over on this show being Damian Priest and Buddy Murphy had also come to the aid of their former leader and had beefed with the bloodline. And I think Buddy Murphy and Damian Priest end up challenging for the SmackDown tag title. Was that um, No Mercy? Which is the start of what we call the SmackDown Tag Team Championship curse, which we'll get into more when I go over No Mercy. But first, Unforgiven. Um, Unforgiven was the big show that really kicked off Season 4? Yes. Um, the Mosh Pit had a, were a temporary alliance between Rhea Ripley and the Riot Squad. They beat Frankie Monet and Hot Property, who were the the former Robert Stone Brand girls, and Frankie Monet, who were in the A-list slash Robert Stone Brand, because they sort of, like, combined for a bit. Uh, Keith Lee and Adam Cole went to a DQ, because the Undisputed Era beat up Keith Lee, and then the Cyclone came out, because they were the challengers for the tag team. The Cyclone being... Bronson Reed and Ricochet. Um, they ended up challenging for the belts and winning them here. So yeah, big win for them. They're the, they're the new Raw Tag Team Champions. Um, LA Knight had debuted around about this time. And he was walking around being LA Knight. And Tyler Breeze and Shane McMahon were getting into it. And Tyler Breeze was talking about you know him trying to find out who attacked Woods. And how he has been hired. Because this was basically the Raw management team. Now, Eve was the GM, Shane was Shane, like he was the, the commissioner. Nobody knew his actual title, but he had power because he was Shane McMahon. And then Tyler Breeze was like the hired like detective assistant of the GM. So he was beefing with the raw management team with LA Knight. And yeah, <laughs> I, just, I just saw Tyler Breeze and Shane McMahon in the same segment. And if you've been watching the whole thing, you know why I found that funny, but we'll get to that in a sec. Um... Asuka beat Raquel, I cannot for the life of me remember why that happened, but it did. Kyrie Neo had a segment, that was probably Kyrie talking to Eo about Becky, as I mentioned earlier on. Uh, Kofi retains the title in the ladder match, uh, yeah, Gable's in the Alpha Academy now with Otis. Um, Desmond Troy was there, special guy, he ended up did not really doing anything and he's back in NXT right now. And then Timothy Thatcher was also their coach, he's now in AW. Uh, yeah. Charlotte beats AJ because, you know, AJ was Paige's friend. And yeah, that was the natural spin after that feud. And then LA Knight and Pete Dunne end up making a match, I think, for Raw? Um, I can't remember. Or a match for something. LA Knight and Pete Dunne do, do a thing in this segment here. I can't remember the exact law there. And um, then Drew defeats both Jeff and Bray to win the World Heavyweight Champion to retain the World Heavyweight Championship, pinning Jeff Hardy, of course, because you know they take the fiend out. After the match, the best shit goes down though, because a whole lot happens. <laughs> um, the fiend and Jeff Hardy they end up, you know, the fiend finally lays his hands on Jeff. He like puts the claw on him, and then the lights go on and off, and he's vanished with the fiend. And then. Drew McIntyre gets to his feet when he's jumped by Walter, Ilya Dragunov, and Joseph Connors. 
uh, who are a trio who formed in NXT UK. Well, they were a tag team, and I put them with... He was called Waller at the time, he does become Gunter, so... Let's just call him Gunter now and pretend that we always had him called that. So yeah, they attack Drew McIntyre, and then Ernie Lorcan cashes in money in the bank and wins the World Heavyweight Championship. So Ernie Lorcan is the World Heavyweight Champion here tonight. At Unforgiven. And then the main event, Becky defeats EO, and there is a turn. Becky does turn heel, and it's revealed that she was the one who was the mentor of the Lady Scots all those months ago when they mentioned somebody was their mentor. It turns out it was actually Becky. And then the, the show goes off the air, we get the big reveal that Tyler Breeze was evil this whole time and he was the person who attacked Xavier Woods. You know, that, that was, this was, at this time, this was my fun, my best angle to do. I, like, it went from the Church of Rollins shit into the Wood shit, into the Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns shit, into Queendom. You know, that's like the timeline of, like, all my best stories. In my opinion, you might disagree. But yes, anyway, we go on to No Mercy. Uh, Riddle, I guess, was around, he beat Elias. Um, Shotzi and Ember Moon retain against um, Sasha's crew and um, Dominion's crew. Uh, Bobby Roode and Cesaro have a match. I can't remember the backstory for that. It was a mid-card um, peer view match. Uh, Bunny Murphy and Damian Priest win the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Obviously, that wasn't supposed to happen. One of the... No, it was Jay. I know which one. I know which user it was. Jay got majorly concussed in this match. And he was out of action for a year. And they called an audible... And Buddy Murphy and Damian Priest ended up winning the SmackDown tag titles. You know, well, what are we going to do? Uh, the game decided that was going to happen. Oh, Big E and Randy had their next match. I can't remember if that was their blow-off or not. It might have been. Because I think Big E did beat Randy on SmackDown before SummerSlam. And then Randy got salty and kicked him in the head. So I think this was their blow-off um, decider. Yeah, here. So yeah, this was their third match. So Big E ended up winning the feud. Um, yeah, Bianca was feuding with Alexa. Um, that led to a pretty funny C Cyber Sunday poll that we'll get to in a minute. Uh, Gulak and Ali. Gulak retains against Mustafa Ali. Uh, Bivens Enterprise is still a beating with Adam Pearce. Um, somewhere along the line, Dakota Kai does sort of just disappear from the group, by the way. Because I remember that specifically. Uh, Sasha defeats Ari Deville to retain the championship. And in the main event... Sammy's title reign is ripped away after just a month, and Roman Reigns stands tall as the WWE Champion. And then, you know, Sami Zayn, Dip, Buddy Murphy, and Damian Priest, because they beat the Usos, you know. There's some shit going down here, those those guys. Heading into Fall Brawl, um, the main event of this, from the, this is the Raw pay-per-view, so yeah, the main event was a women's war games match that would see Becky, the Lady Scots, and they would later recruit AJ. Um, yeah, because this was a raw, like, um, I can't remember what it's called. It wasn't raw roulette, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, that, that's how we ended up with these, these matches, you know, blindfold match, TLC, flag match. Yeah. It was a raw roulette. Kyrie challenged Becky for the belt here, because Be Kyrie was the one who really beefed with Becky anyway, because she was the one who, like, called her out on her shit. So, then that match happened. AJ was the one who came out and helped Becky to win that. And she sided with Becky's team for war games. Which then ended up being because Becky promised her a title match. So we'll get to that later. But yeah, the war games teams were Becky Lynch, the Lady Scots, and AJ Lee against Io, Kyrie, and I think Ember and Shotzi, because they were yeah, they were rivals with the tag titles. Um yeah, Tyler Breeze against um, Kofi Kingston as well for the IC titles getting set up because Xavier Woods was again taken out by by Tyler Breeze. And then the other War Games match was the Undisputed Era against the Cyclone, Edge, and who the fuck else was on that team? Edge, the Cyclone, and... can't remember somebody else but yes and also after um oh keith lee was the other guy on that team um on the raw after the pay-per-view when only Lorcan was the champion um adam cole challenged him to a main event for the belt he retained it against adam cole that's when shit sort of went down with the cyclone finn balor came to their aid and then he turned on only Lorcan. so the first defense was finn balor against only Lorcan for the world heavyweight championship 
And then uh, for the women's, well, for the SmackDown side even, obviously it was viewer's choice. The options for the person to face Roman Reigns was Cesaro, Damian Priest, and Buddy Murphy. Um, also, I think Candice won the right to wrestle uh, Sasha Banks for the championship, and we could choose between either Adam Pearce, Johnny Gargano, or Mickey James as the referee. And uh, Rey Mysterio was beefing with the Bibbins Enterprises. You could vote AJ Styles, uh, Baron Corbin, or Romas as his opponent at Cyber, at the Cyber Sunday. You will vote for Romas because you're savages. Um, and yeah. Again, I'll go over anything else that I've missed when I look at the pay-per-view. Of course, Drew McIntyre against Walter as well was at the pay-per-view. And The Miz and John Morrison had broken up. And they were feuding heading into the pay-per-view. So we get to full brawl. Uh, Alpha Academy beat Sheamus, Luchasaurus on the Stock Exchange on the pre-show. Sure, that wasn't War Games. It was just a normal match. Um, Edge, Keith Lee, and the Cyclone win War Games against the Undisputed Era. Morrison beats The Miz. Uh... Charlotte beats Rhea in a non-title match because th- yeah, this this is a big thing. Because uh, Rhea, I had to get her from SummerSlam to the Royal Rumble, and I thought the best way to get her there without having her, you know, stick her nose in championship business was to feud with Charlotte. And yeah, Nakamura and Bumus and Asuka had a segment. Oh, because I was doing this thing at the time. There was a goal where um, there was a random rivalry. I had to do a random rivalry every month. Um, on SmackDowns, it was Eric versus Dijak, and as you'll see, they had a match here, yeah, on the pay-per-view. And on Raw, it was fucking Rick Boogs against Asuka, and obviously that couldn't end in a match. So, Rick Boogs wrote, like, a song or something for Asuka and something, I can't remember exactly how it went, but that's why that was there. That's the backstory behind that. Um, Walter beat Drew, uh, Tyler Breeze won the IC title of Kofi Kingston, that's son of a bitch, Tyler Breeze. Um, Bray Wyatt and Jeff Hardy, mano and mano. This was like no face paint Jeff Hardy against regular Bray. Jeff beats him. And then, yeah. Finn Balor tragically cut short the reign of Oni Lorcan. TW hates Oni Lorcan, by the way. That's why that's why his reign got cut so short, because he's capped like fuck in his popularity. Like, he's got 70. Like, that's as hard as he's ever going to get. So, yeah, Finn tragically had to take the belt off him. Uh, Anger of the Rock was just announcing, you know, 25 years of The Rock at Survivor Series 2021. And The Rock actually, this time, in our world, actually showed up for that. He didn't just send an egg. And then in the main event, Becky, Adrian, and the Lady Scots won War Games. Cyber Sunday was... Um, I can't remember if this is exactly where it happened, but somewhere along the line here... Uh, one of Damien Priest or Buddy Murphy breaks their leg. I think it's Buddy Murphy. It's definitely Buddy Murphy because yeah, I made a whole gimmick out of it. Uh, Buddy Murphy breaks his leg and the SmackDown tag titles have to be vacated. It might be in that match. But he definitely breaks his leg at some point because, yeah, that's how the curse of the SmackDown tag belts continues because another injury happens for him. Anyway, um, stay, stay away to heaven, whatever it was. Ember and Shotzi beat the Lady Scots to definitively wrap up that rivalry. Uh, Matt Riddle and Elias feuded. Riddle had a pair of bongos. Elias had a guitar. He had to vote what was on the pole. He voted the bongos and Riddle won. <laughs> Some wrestling storylines are that simple. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, again, you vote Omos to beat Rey Mysterio because you're monsters. Um, Bianca and Alexa. We had to vote on what version of Alexa Bliss you wanted to see her face. Whether it be Spooky Alexa, um, the Goddess, or NXT Glittery Princess Alexa. I think the goddess won, and Alex, and that was the version of Alexa that Bianca faced and defeated. U.S. title match was like every, a bunch of fucking people that weren't on the card that you could vote to vote on. I specifically remember Angelo Dawkins got getting no votes and him being the only person who got no votes. But yeah, Gulak retains over Andrade. Uh, Raw Underground of Rules match: Eric defeats Dijakovic. As I said, that was the random feud for that month on SmackDown. Sasha defeats Candice. I can't remember who you picked for the referee for that one, but um, I remember one of the scenarios was if you picked Mickey, Mickey was going to turn and Gans was going to win, but you didn't, so Sasha retained. In the main event, Roman defeats Cesaro to retain the Derby Championship, and then he's attacked by World Heavyweight Champion Finn Balor and his 
right hand man Ridge Holland because we're setting up Survivor Series which is brand v brand v brand including NXT so yeah Roman fought um, Finn there now Survivor Series here I'm going to wait for a little bit because Survivor Series 2021 is one of my favourite peer reviews I've ever produced because it's just so like wacky and fun first of all 24-7 Island was a thing. You know, we sent a bunch of mid cars to an island for a month and they were feud over the 24-7 title with the blow-off taking place at Survivor Series. So we'll get to that in the end. Um, we had champion be champion be champion for all the belts. And whichever brand won specific matches, those brands would get a, a free draft pick that they would then use, like, right there and announce who's coming over to their show. So, like, it was really cool. Plus, The Rock was there. And, yeah, it was like, it was just a whole a whole great time. So, you know, the build to this was SmackDown and Raw guys appearing on each other's shows, NXT guys popping up. <laughs> it was crazy. And it ruled. Like, it, it was so good. Like, I, I, I'm sort of off the idea of Brand Warfare at Survivor Series right now. Especially in this save. Because I just liked this so much, I definitely don't have to go top it. And I just think that limiting Brand v. Brand at Survivor Series is a bit silly. It, it should have its own show like Bragging Rights if you must do Brand v. Brand in my humble opinion but yeah we get to survivor series and we start on the pre-show os1 a tag team championship battle royal again uh he so him and the alpha academy would get a title shot and then team raw's women which was charlotte Rhea, eo um can i fucking remember who else was on that team asuka probably and Kyrie was probably the team against Team NXT, which was Anna J, Kelsey Cook, Grace Parker, and two other NXT women who I can't remember. And then Team SmackDown was Bianca, Bailey, Candice, Dakota, and somebody else. I can't remember. Because I, I can't do 5v5v5. Five five. Oh, wait, no, wait, they'll probably tell them here. Oh, yeah. Asuka, Kyrie, Io, Rhea, and Charlotte. Um, Anna J, JC Jane, and Gigi Do... Oh, Mandy Rose, apparently. And... Yeah, Kelsey and Grace Barker. And SmackDowns was Sonya Deville was the other member of that team. So yeah. And then after the match, um the draft pick was put in and I guess Sonya Deville was who ended up going to Raw. I don't especially I don't remember her doing anything on Raw, so that seems odd, but she must have gone, yeah. And then Kayla, Kayla Braxton and Paul Heyman are kinda of promo about Roman Reigns. They see the Rock's locker room. You know, the Rock and Shit, he's here. Uh, 247 Island shenanigans. Uh, Ari Sterling, who was the North American champion, defeats Tyler Breeze and Drew Gulak. Oh, right. Also, somebody was taken out. I think it was Drew McIntyre. He got a legitimate injury in one of these matches. And he was going to miss Survivor Series, so they needed to replace him on Team Raw. And, you know, it ended up being Shane McMahon who replaced him. And then Joe end up going back to NXT because you know I had nothing for him on the main roster so that was the draft pick that they got from winning through Ari Sterling uh, for the Women's Tag Team Championship Smackdown's Emma Moon and Shotzi Blackheart retained over Raw's Ruby Wright and Liv Morgan as well as Morgan Downs and Hans Katana from NXT and then Kyrie Sane and Io Shirai went over to Smackdown um, I can't remember the law behind why Ruby and Liv got back together but I guess they did um and then Roman Reigns defeats Finn Balor and NXT champion Ronnie Hughes. And I can't remember who he took. I can't remember who he took over from SmackDown there, but he took somebody from Raw to SmackDown. It might have been um, Alistair Black, actually. I'm pretty sure it was. Um, Regal is then with Gargano and Champa and DKE. Uh, he announces the NXT Women's Tag Team titles there. Um, and then get... Zach Gibson, James Drake of NXT, defeating the Cyclone and AJ Styles and Omos. AJ and Omos were the SmackDown Tag Champions because, again, they got vacated and we need to crown champions before the pay per view, so they won a battle royal for them, I believe. But yeah, um, because the Drunk Veterans won that and took the Iconics to NXT to, you know, compete for the new NXT Women's Tag Team Championships. Uh, Becky beat Sasha and NXT Women's Champion Emma to take Cesaro over to Raw. And then Team SmackDown, which was uh, Randy Orton, Cesaro, Buddy Murphy. Oh, yeah, because Randy Orton, Cesaro was taken to, to Raw. And they were all like, ah, you son of a bitch, you're going to be a snake. You can snake us and side with Raw. And then uh, NXT was uh, Ludwig Kaiser, 
Braun Breaker, Carmelo Hayes, Jimmy Shane, and Tommaso Ciampa. And then Team Raw was Edge, Keith Lee, Pete Dunne, Jeff Hardy, and then eventually Shane McMahon was the last person on that team. Team SmackDown won it. They took Braun Breaker from NXT. And then the closing segment was The Rock coming out for 25 years of The Rock, and then the bloodline leaving him laying. Heading into the last pay views of the year, um, High Voltage for, the, for Raw was headlined by um, Finn Balor defending against Edge. Um, this is also where Xavier Woods and Tyler Breeze finally had their grudge match for the IC title. And for the Women's Championship, uh, it was Becky defending against Raquel and Tony Storm. And Drew McIntyre fought... I can't remember who Drew faced, but he did something because he's Drew. But yeah, we'll get to that when we get to the end. Those are the main key points heading into this pay-per-view. Uh, yeah. And then SmackDown... Johnny Gargano, Randy Orton, Buddy Murphy, Kevin Owens was a number one contenders match to determine who will face Roman Reigns at the pay-per-view. It was Gargano against um, Roman at the pay-per-view. Ziggler, who won 24-7 Ireland, right? Um, I think Dolph Ziggler got fired after he lost to uh, Bobby Roode at SummerSlam. I think that was, yeah, I think that I mean then Ziggler lost his job. But he then re-emerged and won 24-7 Ireland, and it was hand- said that the winner of 24-7 Ireland would get a mid-card title shot of their choosing. And Bobby Roode was like, bitch, he doesn't even work here, you're going to put me in the match to stop him winning, which Pierce then obliged to. And Ziggler did end up winning that triple threat match up there to win the US title. And I guess be reinstated. No, he wasn't reinstated to SmackDown just yet, he was just the champion. So he was allowed to show up on SmackDown because he was the champion. And he ended up with a match with Bobby Roode for the belt, at absolute zero. Uh, Bron Breaker was just getting vignettes at this time because he was out of action. So, yeah. I think he got an injury in that Survivor Series match. And heading into the last babies of the year, High Voltage, 2021. Liv and Ruby beat two members of the A-list. Casey Catanzaro and Alex Gracia. You know. Uh, Rhea Ripley and Charlotte settled their rivalry inside her on a cell. Uh, Rhea won that, and it was a whole big thing to send her off to a big 2022 uh, Thatcher and Otis defeated the Cyclone to win the Raw Tag Team Championships. Cyclone would break up and face each other at WrestleMania, but they would then get back together because they realised they're better together than apart. Pete Dunne beats Chad Gable. You know, just a banger match to put on the pay-per-view. Walter beats Cesaro because, yeah, banger. Um, <laughs> Becky retains against Tony Storm and Raquel. Xavier Woods wins the IC title from Tyler Breeze. Uh, Bray Wyatt and Jeff Hardy have a Firefly Funhouse match. After their issues, and you know, the fiend wipes out Jeff Hardy, and they're not seen again for several months. And then the main event, Balor ends up retaining because Keith Lee and Drew are like also involved in this sort of orbit, and I think one of them accidentally cast Edge the belt, and then Finn walked out with the belt, and yeah, left as the champion. Absolute Zero was the SmackDown Fire Pay View of the Year that saw um, New America beat Subculture. Kyrie and Io win the Women's Tag Team Championships from Shotzi and Ember. So, Io becoming Tag Team Champion for the second time in her career. Right there. Uh, Dijakovic against Jimmy Uso was a feud. I guess Dijak won that one. Jacob Fatu beat Big E. Uh, more Brom Breaker hype videos. And Rain, um, AJ and Omos defeated Ray and Dominic to retain the SmackDown Tag Titles. Tegan shocked the world and defeated Sasha Banks to win the, women's, the SmackDown Women's Title. You know, that was that was a big shock, but I wanted to do it because I had a mania plan. Um, Ali defeats Sami Zayn, and that was if Sami Zayn loses, he has to join New America. So Sami begrudgingly had to join New America. Uh, Bobby Rouge defeated Dolph Ziggler to, to win the US title and, you know, banish his ass from SmackDown. Um, and then the main event, Johnny Gargano fought Roman Reigns. <clears throat> he was a heel, he had his old theme. This is where he brought Rebel Heart back, and wasn't enough to defeat Roman Reigns. But then after the match, Seth Rollins returned. And he took the fight to Roman Reigns and he was there. He was coming for blood against the man who betrayed him back at SummerSlam. Which officially, heading into 2022, kicks off the Challenge Run Magnum Opus. You know, you're going to be seeing a lot of these people over the next year and a half. Well, not Gargano really, but Seth and Roman. And a certain other third person who's not yet debuted. Uh... Yeah, and then heading into the new year, obviously we're building to the Royal Rumble, 
Uh, the World Heavyweight Championship match of Raw was the Fatal 4-Way with Finn, Drew, Edge, and Keith Lee. Uh, Io was going to defend... Not Io. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just got Io on the mind. Becky was going to defend the uh, Women's Championship against Asuka. You know, two years on from Asuka's victory over... Or her victory over Asuka. And then in 2019, they also fought. And this was the rubber match at the Royal Rumble between the two. You know, big, big story there. Um, Xavier Woods retained against Kofi. I think Breeze was getting a rematch for the belt at the Royal Rumble. And then on SmackDown side, uh, Braun Breaker was finally cleared. And he defeated Bobby Roode for the US title on one of these shows. Uh, yeah, here. Because um, Dolph Ziggler cost him the belt. And then that set up a match between Ziggler and Roode. Ziggler's last stand for the Royal Rumble. Um, if Dolph Ziggler wins, he's re reinstated. If he loses, he fucks off forever. And then Tegan Knox was going to defend in a rematch against Sasha. And obviously Roman Reigns against Seth Rollins for the WWE Championship on that side. And then the Royal Rumble matches were, you know, also there. Royal Rumble 2022. Great show, if I do say so myself. Kyrie and retained the championships against Shotzi and Ember Moon on the pre-show. And we then get to the Royal Rumble. Uh, the opening match is the Fatal 4-Way. Finn Balor does retain against Keith Lee, Edge, and Drew McIntyre. Um, I can't remember who he pinned. He might have pinned Keith. But yeah. Then we get Dolph Ziggler defeats Bobby Roode in an I Quit match to you know get his job back on SmackDown. Um, so oh yeah, somewhere between um, the last pay-per-view and... The Royal Rumble. Breeze locked himself away in a um, in a mental institution, and he had a, a warden that he like that looked after him in that mental institution. That warden is of course Wardon, and War he's Wardlow. Yeah, that that's him. And um, the month of January was the month of the celebrity guest general general manager. You can see Shaq's here, a uh, pit bull. <laughs> you know, we we it was a fun time. Actually, do you think it goes on beyond just this month? I think it, like, it bleeds into February as well. But yeah. Yeah, Andrew Garfield's here. Uh, but yes. Um, yeah, Tyler Breeze fails to come up. He comes up short against Xavier Woods. Woods um, puts a cap on that feud, but Breeze has a new issue. You know, he seems to have some parental issues, some, issues, some daddy issues, you could say, but we haven't quite figured out what he means by that. Uh, Rhea Ripley won the Royal Rumble. Her and EO are one and two. And they were the final two as well. And then Rhea won it. So she's going to WrestleMania. And uh, Tegan Knox retained over Sasha Banks to retain the championship. Uh, Mickey James, this is where she turned face on Sasha Banks. And, you know, laid her out of a kick after the match. Becky defeats Asuka because she's big brain. Uh, she was very big brain in this whole run. But I can't remember exactly what she did here that was so big brain. But trust me, it was big brain. Um, this was the, this was around about the time with Becky where, um, somebody, there was a, there was a show somewhere where she retained against somebody. I'll try to find it. Because this is a funny story. Um, there's a show, anyway, there's a show where Becky, I, f I wanted to say it was against Tony Storm, but I can't seem to find it anywhere. But, um, because her group was her and the Lady Scots, being Nikki Cross and Kaylee Ray. And then they were banned from ringside for one of the matches. And then uh, she debuted Killer Kelly as another member of the group to, like, help her win. Because that was Big Brain, you see. And then right after that happened, uh, both Kelly and Nikki Cross announced their pregnancy on the same day. <laughs> so... It then ended up with just Becky and Kaylee. Oh, this hair. Yeah, there, there's the match. Yeah, so it ended up with just um, Becky and Kaylee Ray after that point. Because the, the other two have both gone off injured. Uh, Happy Corbin debuted as Happy Corbin. I remember we, we said there was going to be a badass bald man hosting WrestleMania. Um, that's Triple H. I don't know why he's there instead of Stone Cold. Um, uh, Happy Corbin debuted like, yeah, it's me. But then Stone Cold came out, stunned him and go, no, what? It's me. Uh, Seth and Roman have their match because they're 96. And then The Rock comes back. Finally, The Rock has come back. I know he's calling his cousin a son of a bitch. And then we get the Royal Rumble, which is won by Big E. Heading into Fatal Attraction and No Way Out. 
you know, built into elimination chambers. Raw's was um, for the Raw Women's Championship, and SmackDown's was also for the SmackDown Women's Championship, actually, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, we're leading into um, the Royal Rumble. Or, th- in, or following the Rumble, sorry. Um, at the, in the Women's Royal Rumble, um, Yutami Hayashita made her debut as a big, you know, entrant in the match. And she was still a free agent, so you'll see her, like, wrestling on both shows for like the, for a while while she makes her... Because like, make, she makes her decision at WrestleMania. And, yeah. Uh, Balor Club was um, the former Vega Mafia who aligned with Finn. And the match ended up being at Fatal Attraction. It was Big E against Cesaro, because Cesaro was the runner-up. And if Cesaro wins, he'd be added to the match at WrestleMania to make it a triple threat between Finn, Big E, and Cesaro. And there was also stuff going on here with Walter and Lashley, and the worst age team I've ever booked, this one. And, yeah, they were doing stuff. This was a thing. Uh, KSI, I guess, was the host of Raw this night. And... KSI booked this elimination chamber, which was Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, Naomi, Frankie Monet, Mackie, and Sonya Deville, because they were all women who she'd not beaten yet in this championship reign, was the gimmick. Now on SmackDown, um, we set up the main event of No Way Out was Seth Rollins, Rey Mysterio, and The Rock against Roman Reigns, Jacob Fatu, and Jimmy Uso. And um, because I think the Bloodline took out Dominic, and that's why Rey sort of got, ended up in their role bit. Um, somewhere along here, Kevin Owens and AJ Styles were together in Bivens Enterprises. They left, and they ended up feuding. They fought, they fought at WrestleMania, and then um, the Street Profits beat them for the belts on one of these shows. Oh, I'll beat um, AJ and Omar, sorry, for the belts, not um, AJ and Kevin Owens. Yeah, it's, oh, it's at No Way Out, okay. Yeah, so then they then defend the belts at WrestleMania while Kevin Owens fettles AJ Styles. Because Bivens Enterprises collapses. Uh, knee Jerk Nice was... He was Madcap Moss, basically. Um, yeah. And he was feeding with Johnny Gargano. Johnny WrestleMania was a thing. And he nearly didn't make it because he got injured. But he did end up making it and he fought Andrade on that show. Anyway. Fail Attraction. Sheamus and the Miz had a match. Sure. Finn Balor and Ridge Holland defeated the New Day. Because, of course, Big E was going to WrestleMania to fight Finn. So they were fighting his friends on this tag match. Yeah. Ballot Club was Finn, Ridge, Santos, and Swerve. Uh, Warden beat Cameron Grimes. I guess he had issues with Tyler Breeze, so Warden fucked him up. Owens and Gabe were retained against Nakamura and Boogs. Um, Cesaro beats Big E. Um, I guess Finn is like talking to Big E for the match. Like, hey, don't fuck it up, big man. And then there's some Finn Balor related shenanigans here. Um, LA Knight at this time was... He was stirring the pot. He was being a shit stirrer between the UE. Like, on, he had a show called uh, Let Me Talk To You. And he was talking about the UE and he was talking about Kyle O'Reilly and all that shit. And then Kyle O'Reilly was the one instead of Adam Cole who fought him at the pay per view. And he beat him, and then um, Adam Cole turned on Kyle O'Reilly, breaking up the UE. Uh, Lashley beat Gable Stevenson, and then Bob, Bob Brock Lesnar beat Walter. Uh, still one of only two times Gunnar's ever been pinned on the main roster. And then we had a cutting edge segment because Edge had turned heel on Drew because Drew was in that fatal four way mix with him and then he blamed Drew for his loss and then he beat up Drew McIntyre and then the cutting edge segment was going to be him and Christian and he was going to take Christian out he was going to concerto Christian and Drew McIntyre came to the save and made the match at Wrestlemania describing that segment is very 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 weird considering where we are right now in the save but yes that is what happened he alleged Fred to kill Christian Triple H was about, um, he sort of just reared his ugly head around about this time for a specific reason. And he sort of like started becoming a bit of a dickhead authority figure. And, you know, we had somebody ready to, to call him out on that. And then Becky retains inside the elimination chamber. Rhea Ripley comes out and goes, hey, you know, you never pinned me at SummerSlam. You know, you pinned EO. So you're running around saying you've already beat me, but you haven't. How about me and you at WrestleMania for the Women's Championship? And Becky's like, I right, bitch. So yeah, that sets up that WrestleMania main event of night one. And then on uh, No Way Out, the final preview of WrestleMania on the SmackDown side, House of Black against Legado de la Sombra. They beat them. Braun Breaker retains a triple threat against both Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler. 
Randy Orton RKO's him, so I think I match at WrestleMania between Braun and Randy. Profits defeat the um, AJ and Omos, and this is the bit of the Enterprise's sort of like argument, which is the build towards Kevin Owens fighting AJ Styles at WrestleMania. Corbin beats Gargano. I think Gargano got injured in this, and he looked like he was going to miss WrestleMania. Like, shoot injured, like in the game, not like a kayfabe injury. Uh, Ali and Sammy of the message of New America, sorry. Defeat Pete Keefley and Pete Dunn, who are, who came together to fight them off. And then John Cena ends up getting involved. Because uh, we had John Cena Appreciation Night. I think it was the show before the Royal Rumble. Yeah. Uh, we had John Cena Appreciation Night. And all it was, the entire night was just Cena's greatest rivals shitting on him. <laughs> like, calling him a dickhead. <laughs> and um, that sort of like made Cena reflect on everything. And like he came out and he apologized for how he was acting, you know. He's been humbled now. He didn't realize what came over him, you know. That's not the John Cena he wants to be. And then that means Pete, Pete Dunn came out because, you know, that was him who sort of like beat him in two minutes back in his debut. And then Kurt Angle was there because, of course, Kurt Angle was there because, you know, John Cena. And then New America came out and beat him all up. That's how we ended John Cena Appreciation Night. So Cena was come back here with a vengeance against New America. And it was made, it then made um, New America, which was Ali, Sammy, Baratunde, and Kushida against Cena, Keith Lee, Pete Dunne, and Kurt Angle for WrestleMania. And I think if Cena lost, he had to retire. And if he won, New America would break up. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Io and Kyrie defeat Sasha and Dana Brooke to retain the championships. It was supposed to be Indy, but Indy got hurt, so Dana subbed in. And then I think Sasha literally booted Dana Brooke out right there in this segment. <laughs> uh, Tegan Knox retained inside the Elimination Chamber. When Dakota Kai re-emerged after months, she kicked Tegan Knox in the head to set up a WrestleMania match between the two for the belt. And then Seth Rollins, Rey Mysterio, and The Rock defeated The Bloodline to set up three singles matches at WrestleMania. The Rock and Roman, Rey and uh, Jimmy, and Seth Rollins and Jacob Fatu. Um, anything else important for WrestleMania that I haven't set up yet? Um, um, obviously Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, Edge versus Drew, Rhea versus Becky. Uh, Charlotte ended up in a feud with Bianca Belair, and they had a match at WrestleMania. Uh, it was Lashley and Gunner against Bob Brock Lesnar and Gable Stevenson. Um, Randy Orton against Braun Breaker, AJ against Kevin, Street Profits against the House of Black. Um, Andrade was the one who ended up caught coercing Johnny Gargano back for WrestleMania and they had a match and yeah that pretty much leads us into WrestleMania 38 uh, Ricochet and Bronson Reed like I said the Cyclone did separate at some point I think Bronson Reed was in the Hurt business here but they do eventually come back together because I preferred them as a tag team uh, Stone Cold opens up he stunners knee jerk knees and Baron Corbin uh, Seth Rollins comes out dresses like dressed like Batman and he beats Jacob Fatu in the opener in a 90 rated match oh um also i forgot to mention a very very important part of this story uh when seth lost to roman reigns at the royal rumble he was not allowed to challenge roman reigns for the championship again so long as roman held the belt so he ended up you know he still wants to tear the bloodline down but he's doing it from you know the lower rungs while the rocks the one wrestling for the belt uh yeah uh house of black Defeated the Street Profits to win the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. <coughs> um, I can't remember what any of these stupid segments are. What's, oh my god, IRL. Oh, Matt Riddle's in it, okay. Oscar <laughs> uh, won the Battle Royal because she had nothing else to do on the show and I felt bad about it. So she was in the Battle Royal two years in a row. So I thought, may as well just give her a win. Asuka admires her vagina. That's her looking at the trophy. <laughs> um, don't get any wrong ideas AJ Styles defeats Kevin Owens in 84 Bianca beats Charlotte in 87 Big E becomes the World Heavyweight Champion he beats Cesaro and Finn Balor in a 90 uh, Big E, Cesaro, Finn Balor, Ridge Holland yeah, Balor Club, all that shit uh, Hall of Fame pal uh, Vince died in 2021 so he got into the Hall of Fame probably would be taken out right about now but you know, he's, he's in it technically um Kyle O'Reilly defeats Adam Cole in their grudge match. Brock Lesnar and Gable Stevenson defeat Bobby Lashley and Gunter. Um, ah, how could I forget? Right, there's a name we haven't seen pop up yet. 
Um, <laughs> so, yeah, the Triple H shit. Like I said, our Triple H family reappeared as a dickhead authority figure. Uh, Cody debuted on the Raw after um, Fatal Attraction. And then his first match back was against Triple H at WrestleMania. They had a little beef, you know, breaking the thrones and, you know, all that shit. Came back to bite him on the ass. Except they didn't because Cody beat Triple H. <laughs> um, yeah, Braun Breaker defeated Randy Orton to retain the United States Championship. Then Becky Lynch and Rhea Ripley in the main event. Rhea Ripley finally de unseats Becky Lynch to take the WWE Raw Women's Championship. Night two, um, Ray and Jimmy on the pre-show. Ray wins. Uh, we then get the Razor Ramon Memorial Ladder Match for the IC title. Cameron Grimes takes the championship home. He beats Kofi Kingston, LA Knight, Xavier Woods, Only Lorcan, Sheamus, and Christian to take that belt home. Uh, Stone Cold has Agma J flow. Okay, of course he did. Uh, Gargano defeats Andrade. Johnny WrestleMania. Uh, recap of night one. Uh, the Battle Royal is won by Ridge Holland, of all people. Uh, Poppy comes out, performs EO to the ring. And it's Kyrie and EO defeat Bailey and Candice LeRae to retain the women's tag team titles. Bailey and Candice had feuded. You know, they were both former heels who were now baby face, like role models and shit. And, um, yeah. So they, like, they'd come together and, like, helped each other see the light, and then they'd aligned, and they'd fought for the tag titles at WrestleMania, which, this tag match right here, ages, ages like milk within the next year, because neither of these teams are built to last. Um, Steve Austin and The Rock had a segment, I guess. Um, Edge beat Drew, um, because Randy Orton helped Edge win. After he lost to Braun Breaker on the first night, Randy re-emerged, and, um, he helped Edge... We had heel rated RKO. And, yeah. We then got a gauntlet for the Raw tag titles. Path of the Dragon, who, you know, I said we'd be seeing a lot more of them in the down, down the years. Here they come. Um, they've been putting in great performances recently. So they had a little bit of a run in the gauntlet here. They beat Alpha Academy. They beat Death From Above. Before Nakamura and Boogs were the one who beat them. Roderick Strong and Bobby Fish of the UE ended up knocking them out. And then... Um, Bray Wyatt reemerges alongside Willow. Um, it's the Fiend and Willow reemerge after months, and they end up taking the tag titles home. So yeah, big shock at WrestleMania when Bray Wyatt, the Fiend, and Willow take the belts. Uh, Dakota wins the SmackDown Women's title. She beats Deacon Knox for it. Um, <laughs> Tyler Breeze, after he his trip to insanity after taking out Xavier Woods, so we have fucking insane Tyler Breeze here. He's gone as Prince Pretty. He's now a fucking crazy man. And he seems to think that Shane McMahon is his father. Um, Shane McMahon made a one-off random comment about a one-night stand in Canada during one of the Raws in the summer. And that was a hint that this was the final destination. And Tyler Breeze, is re he, he reveals himself as Tyler Breeze McMahon. Not actually, obviously, but, you know, in kayfabe, technically, yes, yeah, still. And then he defeats Shane McMahon at WrestleMania. Banger. What a great story. Unironically, silly as fuck, but I loved it. Like, <laughs> um, uh, Yutami comes out. She chooses to go to SmackDown. She becomes Miss SmackDown, basically. Hardcore Country, Mickey James against Sasha Banks. Uh, if Mickey, this is Mickey's retirement match. If she loses, she retires, and um, yeah, Sasha beats Mickey, so she's gone. You know, nice write-off for Mickey James at WrestleMania. Thank you, Mickey. Uh, then John Cena and Co. beat New America, breaking up that group and technically freeing Sami Zayn as well at the time. Because the part part of the build up was, you know, hey, Sami Zayn's on the team. He never wanted to be in the group. He hates the group. You know what you're doing, bitch. And yeah, so Sami ended up being free. I think he did actually turn during the match as well. I think he booted Mustafa Ali in the head. And then Yar Matey is us hyping up Pirate Mania next year. And then, uh, yeah, The Rock fails to catch the belt from Roman Reigns as Mania 38 ends with the Tribal Chief standing tall as WWE Champion. Roar after Mania 38. Uh, Cody is here. He's talking about finishing the story. Uh, this is where we get that. And then we get the same Cody Rhodes promo as normal, except he mentions the the um, the um list of opponents he wanted to wrestle on the indies and how the one person he never got to face was Roderick Strong. So we get that match in the main event, which ends up 
leading to a big moment. Um, Hit Row, Swerve had, um, he'd left the Balor Club, I think literally the week before WrestleMania. And then, yeah, he ended up bringing in Hit Row to feud with the Balor Club. Uh, um, the pay-per-view backlash. And, yeah, Big E, I can't remember who his first event was against. But he beat Finn here, and then that's when Hit Row debuted. And Rhea beat Liv. She was having a match with Becky. Her and Becky had a 60-minute Iron Man match at Backlash, which was then go on to be Becky's last match for another year because she gets pregnant again. <laughs> yes. Um, Cody Rhodes defeats Roderick Strong. And then after the match, William Regal returns. He debuts his new group with Pete Dunne and a debuting Tyler Bate, who's under the name Dudley Davis, because... I was gimmicked into making people NXT call-ups have shit names. So he's called Dudley Davis. He's still called Dudley Davis. That's his name. Uh, Ludwig had debuted here as well, by the way. He was just a guy. Like, this before Imperium existed. He was just a dude. He was the collector. He collected things. You know, that's his gimmick. Uh, Seth. Um, this, this season for Seth Rollins, season five, is like the quietest season of Seth Rollins, but it's also pivotal to his eventual character growth. Because, like, he's... He's not allowed to challenge Roman for the belt. Roman's left WrestleMania was the champion. Okay. And Seth, he's... He's not allowed to challenge for him, yeah. Because he lost at the Royal Rumble. So, you know, he's sort of just killing time. You know? He's wrestling random matches against guys on the show. Like Sami Zayn, and Apollo Crews, and Ricochet, and, yeah... So he's just sort of like just proven his worth. He goes, I've just, I guess I've just got to wait, you know. But his end goal is still to take the WWE Championship off Roman Reigns. But, you know, he's not allowed to because he lost. And, yeah, um, Raw's Backlash, the first pair of you following WrestleMania. Nova Nebula debuts, who is Chris Atlander. And um, important note is Eve, I can't remember when she left, but she did leave. She's no longer the GM. And then we stopped doing the celebrity guest hosts, and Alexa Bliss was going to announce who the GM was um, on this pay per view. She was going to announce the new Raw General Manager. And, yeah. So, yeah, that, just seeing Nova versus Mackie, J Flow had a bit of a heel run here, where they were they were just the annoying heels. And, yeah, Nova ended up beating Mackie on the pre show. Uh, Cody Rhodes beat Pete Dunn. Um, yeah. You know, he was feuding with William Regal and the Regal Coalition, which was Pete Dunne and Tyler Bay, and then later Gunther and Ilya and Joseph Connors and Jamie Hayter under the name Florence. So yeah, we're now starting to see some of the main characters of the current era of Challenge Run debuting here. Uh, Swerve beats Finn Balor. Big win for him. You know, his future's looking bright. Let's just leave it at that. Uh, yeah. Um, the Fiend and Willow retain against Path of the Dragon. In an 89. This right here is the moment that I knew. Yeah, the, these boys, these boys are undeniable. Like, yeah. My Wrestling Academia has debuted. So, Mansoor and um, Dio Madden had become a babyface vanilla tag team with no gimmick on SmackDown for like the last couple of months. And they ended up, you know, doing vignettes with them where they'd go to anime conventions because they like anime and they're friends. And then Saray was also there because she also likes anime and shit. So they formed an anime fan group. And <laughs> if they stayed as an anime fan group, that would sure would have been fun. But that's not what that's not how I do things like this, you know. This this devolves into my personal fan fiction anime corner of Challenge Run. <laughs> you know, uh, it's it's coming to an end soon. So because I want to kill it off before I just drag it on for too long. But yeah, it it's still a integral part of the series. Challenge Run wouldn't be Challenge Run without um, My Wrestling Academia, um, Joe Hendry, um, J Flo, and um, who was the other one I had in mind? Somebody else. I can't remember who the other funny pillar was. But yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, The Fiend and Willow retain against Path of the Dragon and a banger. Grimes fought The Miz with the IC title and beat him in an 85 rated match. Charlotte and Jordan. Um, so. Danny Jordan was tag team partners with Carmella. Carmella got angry at me and wanted to leave. So I, I got her request. So she was gone. She has been released. Uh, Danny Jordan then aligned with Charlotte. 
and later Reginald also rejoins the group because, you know, he was friends with Jordan in the Carmella group. But, yeah, Charlotte and Jordan become the women's tag team champions. They dethrone Io and Kyrie. Uh, uh, I'm inevitable is Charlotte winning, yeah. Uh, Alexa announces the new Raw General Manager is herself, so she becomes the Raw GM. And she is probably my favourite GM I've booked because, you know, it's it's fuckery. That's what it is. Uh, Big E defeats Bobby Lashley and Gunter to retain the world title. Edge beats Sheamus. Um... <coughs> Because Sheamus was friends with Drew McIntyre and Edge turned on Drew and they fucked him over. And I can't remember if the full grand jury has debuted. Oh, just Damien Priest has. Okay, yeah. Because the grand jury is my version of the Judgment Day. And Edge, Randy Orton and Damien Priest. And then later the Viking Raiders are in it. And then there's a, there's a whole like civil war over the group, but we'll get to that later. But yeah. So Alexis the GM, the grand jury's here. And in the main event, Rhea defeats Becky in an Iron Woman match to retain the belt. And, yeah, Becky's gone for another year and a half. Because <laughs> she's pregnant again. Judgment Day was um, SmackDown's first pay-per-view since WrestleMania. Seth Rollins beats Apollo Crews. Apollo had sort of become sort of like a little bit of a bum lick of the bloodline. Like, early Sami Zayn before he like actually joined. Because Apollo, I think I did actually have to roll to end up releasing him. Which is weird. You know, because I was booking him like well, while well, I had I had a forfeit because I failed a goal. I had to release somebody and it landed on Apollo. So yeah, um, Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams have been called up after the after WrestleMania. They defeated Dolph Ziggler and John Morrison, which was the first former world champion that Carmelo Hayes would defeat, which he'd make a thing out of over the next year. Um, Candice and DIY against Legado. Um, Bailey and Cora Jade were a fun as fuck babyface tag team. Um, Cora had sort of, so she wasn't officially called up, she'd just sort of been appearing backstage and like, as a fan I think she was booked for like a one-off squash match somewhere, and then yeah, she sort of like just stuck around and was like clinging by Bailey, and they became like best friends and yeah, Bailey against um, Dakota was the match at Judgment Day and um, Dakota ended up winning uh, We Can Rebuild Him is Dijak and Buddy Murphy um, Dijak was the he'd been caught up as a boring baby face on SmackDown with no character. Um, Buddy Murphy was coming back from the broken the after I mentioned the broken leg when he had to vacate the belts. I was going to give him a six million dollar man gimmick where like they gave him like a robotic knee, and then Dijak was they put all the extra parts in him to make him you know extra powerful and all that shit. Um, and then the main event Roman Reigns defeated Keith Lee to retain the Derby title. Nice. Um, yeah, moving on to uh, the build towards Money in the Bank. There's a little bit of a wait before Money in the Bank. Um, Raw had a Night of Champions pay-per-view, on, which was a TV special even. Uh, Big E against Cesaro, Rhea retained against Liv, Grimes defended against Bobby Roode, Charlotte and Jordan defended against Double Trouble, who are Anne-Marie, Paul and Kelsey Cook, Anna Jay and Julia Hart. Um, Karrion Cross retained the WWE Carnage title against um, Alec Mallory. Karrion at this point had fallen off, like, completely, because my actual real life view of Karrion Cross had fallen off completely. So I gave him, I gave him the Cold Steel Edge Lord gimmick, which was a personal favorite of mine until it sort of just you know had played itself out, where he was a super badass, cool guy, and he thought he was like proper solid, nothing personal kid, and all that shit. He won the 3.7 title. He called it the Carnage title because he's cool and badass. And yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the Fiend of Willow beat the New Day. And also apparently Arn Anderson passed away because that's an angle called Arn. And yeah. Then going into Money in the Bank, I think um, Omos won a battle royal. Yeah. Where he was then crowned the number one contender for the... Um, the Raw, the World Heavyweight Championship against Big E at Wrestle, uh, WrestleMania, Money in the Bank. Uh, and also, um, this was the show that precursed the worst day of my life, which is this episode of Heat, right here. Um, Kyrie, Kyrie and Eo against Gigi Dolan and JC Jane. Tusk Attraction debuted at Judgment Day in this segment. Um, this was um, Eo's birthday celebration that Kyrie was holding for her, and then it was crashed by Tusk Attraction. 
So yeah, they debuted, and they were feuding with Io and Kyrie. So I ran the tag match at um on on an episode of Heat. Uh, it was going to be Kyrie, Io, and Utami teaming up against Toxic Attraction at Money in the Bank, but Io got a major concussion in this match as she was out of action for a year. The very same day that I then simmed forward and got an email saying that Becky was pregnant was this. So yeah, that's the worst day of my life. So I lost both of them in a day for over a year. Uh, the main event of Money in the Bank was Roman Reigns defending against Braun Breaker. Uh, Cora Jade ended up getting a spy Money in the Bank. She had to fight Bailey to get... I think that was actually for like, both Money in the Bank and, you know, she gets her SmackDown contract if she wins. So, you know, she beat her own best friend to get there. And Dakota Kai defended against Bailey again. Bailey was, um, you know, she wasn't, she was a bit not trusting of Cora. She was like, you know, she thought she was a bit annoying or whatever because she was a fangirl. That was sort of her, like, whole shtick. This was baby face Cora Jade. And also, heading into Money in the Bank, the most important part, of course, involved Seth Rollins. Because Seth, you know, he'd been banned from challenging Roman Reigns for the championship. But Seth had figured out that if he won Money in the Bank, you know, that's a guaranteed world championship opportunity there. So if he's missed the money in the bank, he he sure as shit can cash in and take the championship away from Roman Reigns because he's got the fucking briefcase that allows him to do that. So, yeah, he had the money in the bank. So he was looking to win that. Uh, but Braun Breaker was still the US champion when he went to challenge Roman Reigns. He ended up dropping the belt to Happy Corbin in like a fucking multi-man down there. Uh, Happy Corbin would then go on to find his love of crypto and become Crypto Corbin during this title run. Yeah, no, it was a thing. Like, yeah, it happened. Moving on to Money in the Bank, we get um, Alistair Black and Elias of the House of Black. The House of Black at this point is Alistair, Brody, and um, Elias. And I think um, the members of Subculture joined at WrestleMania as well. So yeah, Mark Andrews, Morgan Webster, and Danny Luna are also in it. So that's the House of Black. The Creed Brothers were in Alpha Academy. So yeah, they got the shot here. Uh, Charlotte... One money in the bank. Charlotte Flair won money in the bank. Yeah, that was a thing that happened. Uh, Ludwig Kaiser versus El Generico. Um, Ludwig, of course, he was the collector, as I said before. His whole thing was he collected stuff. He'd um, collected a shitty mattress that Cameron Grimes had bought that ruined his sleep and held him to lose the championship. He'd, wa- he'd well held the mask of a local independent luchador called Red Thunder. And he also held... Something else. He won some some other material possession. Let me have a look. Because this is annoying. What else did he win? Um. Oh no, he hadn't won Grimes' bed yet. Um, it was um Matt Riddle Skewer. He'd later win as well. But um, he beat Sami Zayn, and Sami Zayn ended up, you know, bringing in Elon Generico to take care of him. Ludwig beat Generico and took his mask, so he owns the El Generico mask. And it turns out El Generico was Sami Zayn this whole time. Uh, uh, Dakota defeats Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks had, you know, beefed with Lita. Lita was one of the announcers on Heat. Um, and Sasha was being a dickhead on Heat. And then Lita got up and slapped her in the face after her match with Dakota at the pay-per-view. Uh, Anger with Corbin, I want to say, was the birth of Crypto Corbin, but I'm not sure... Uh, Big E defeated Omos. Um, you, you, Hikaru Shida debuts um, in the place of the injured Io Shirai. And, yeah, her, Utami, and Kairi defeat Tatsuka Attraction. Uh, the Fiend and Willow once again defeat Path of the Dragon to retain the championships. Cody and Dustin, you know, he brings his brother back. I think one of these shows was in Hollywood. was in LA. And Gold Dust returned, and then the Regal boys were trying, were trying to beat him up. Cody Rhodes came to his aid, and him and Dustin faced off against Dudley and Pete Dunne of the Regal Coalition. Oh no, right, Corbin gambles away the US title. Of course he does. <laughs> I forgot about that. Because um, this is in Vegas, yeah. Corbin gambles away the US title. Uh, Rhea Ripley and Asuka have a match for the Royal Women's title. Rhea retains. Um, and then the Grand Jury, who is Edge, Sonya, Scarlett, Julia, Randy Orton. Oh, wait, no, that's, it's not at this point. Um, the grand jury at this point is um, Scarlett and Sonny Deville are just the only two women in the group. But this is the turn where Julia would leave Dominion and join 
the grand jury. So the group is now Ed, Randy Orton, Julia, Sonya Deville, Scarlet, Damian Priest, and the Viking Raiders. Yes, a big, big stable, but yeah. Uh, yeah, Charlotte is there. She's going to get a celebration for Miss Money in the Bank tomorrow night. The inevitable next Royal Women's Champion, she called herself. Uh, Carmelo Hayes, he ends up stealing the Money in the Bank. Seth Rollins, you know, he's up there, he's trying to take it, but Trick Williams grabs his leg, and then Melo ends up winning, and he becomes Mr. Money in the Bank. And then Corbin, you know, informs Pierce that he's lost the US title. Roman Reigns retains against Braun Breaker when Daniel Bryan, he was gone for a little bit, but nobody signed him, and I didn't want to leave him unemployed. So he's back, and he's the next in line for the Tribal Chief at King of the Ring. Then head on to King of the Ring, of course, the winner of King of the Ring will get a shot at the WWE Championship at SummerSlam. So, take a guess who enters himself into King of the Ring. <laughs> Why, Seth Rollins, of course. Because he's desperate. He's desperate to find a loophole. Because he, he can't let it... It's eating him alive that he won't be the one to end Roman Reigns' championship run. Because he, the bloodline have driven him to fucking hell at this point. But yes, Cody Rhodes and Sami Zayn, that's a Money in the Bank match. And yeah... Oh, on the SmackDown side, Seth Rollins is in it. You know, people like that. Keith Lee. I think the matches at the pay per view, the semi finals, are Cody against Finn and Seth against Keith. Um, the championship matches, um, the WWE Championship matches, Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan. The World Heavyweight Championship matches, Big E against. I can't remember who Big E defended against that King of the Ring. Um. Is he even on this show? Oh, Goldberg! Of course! Oh, of course, of course, of course, of course, of course! Um, yes. Uh, Big E got his personal dream match against Goldberg at King of the Ring. Because it's two big, meaty men slapping meat. Because it had to be somebody who, you know, wasn't booked for the King of the Ring tournament. And who better than Bill? And, yeah, this was also the build to Evolution 4. The main event of which was Sonny Deville against Rhea Ripley for the Royal Women's Championship. On the SmackDown side, we had Dakota Kai against... Who would Dakota defend against? Um, was it Bailey? It might have been Bailey. Um, yeah. Or was it Candice? Or the other. Well, somebody. We'll find out when we look at the pay-per-view. Or if I just look through all the, pay all, all the shows, I'll be able to find out. Uh, it looks like Kyrie. No, Kyrie wins Queen of the Ring, so it's not her. Um, <laughs> never mind. Doesn't matter. We'll, when we look at the pay-per-view, we'll find out. In fact, let's look at it right now. Um, Cody and Finn, they get the first 99 rated match of the series. Uh, yeah. The first of several 99 rated matches. The first goes to Cody and Finn Balor. And so, yeah, Cody goes to the Raw, goes to the final from the Raw side. Seth goes to the final from the, from the SmackDown side. And then, oh, this was, this was happening. Um, Kevin Owens and Adam Cole were in a funny little storyline where, like, they'd, they'd become friends of each other. But, they both called each other backstabbing little pricks because, you know, they've got a habit of turning on people. And, you know, it was like this inevitable thing where, like, one of them knew they were going to end up turning on the other. We didn't know when. Um, that actually got cut short when Kevin Owens went on to go to politics in the game. So that's how that came to an end. But <laughs> that, for, for the while it existed, it was fun. Um, also back on lives of the House of Black retain over Nakamura and Boogs. Um, Happy Corbin retains the US title against Mad Cat Moss. Edge and Randy Orton defeat Bray Wyatt and Willow to win the Raw Tag Team Championships. Um, and then I think, you know, there's a turn. Because Fiend, the Fiend and Willow end up back in beefing each other. Because we do a Firefly deletion at some point. But, yeah. Uh, Big E defeats Goldberg, of course. <coughs> uh, Di Dijak and Buddy Murphy... Who were the tag? Who were a tag team after they returned? You know, with the whole six million dollar man gimmick. Uh, they were against DIY, that ended up going to a no contest because Kevin Owens and Adam Cole ran out and caused mayhem. House of Black also got involved. That was setting up a four way tag at the pay per view, which ended up did not happening because um, Kevin Owens went off to politics sometime between now and then. So Cole did find a new partner for that match. Um, Angel Garza defeats Angelo Dawkins to retain the IC title. The Street Profits were still a thing here, but 
Tez had won the right to be Money in the Bank, and then he got injured. And um, Angelo Dawkins stood into Money in the Bank in his place, and then he was a bit of a single star because Tez was gone, and he got an IC title shot, and Gaza beat him. Gaza, of course, being the, the one who defeated Cameron Grimes for the belt on one of these Raws. Um, and then Roman Reigns, Daniel Bryan. Roman retains against Daniel Bryan. And then, in the main event, Cody on his quest to finish the story against Seth Rollins on his quest to once again get in the ring and dethrone the Tribal Chief. Only one man could win, and that man was Cody Rhodes, who wins King of the Ring, and he rules his kingdom, and he goes on to SummerSlam to face Roman Reigns in Boston, I believe, yeah. Then we want to Evolution, Evolution 4. Bianca and Nova were beefing with Alexa and Ivy Nile. Um, Alexa is the GM, obviously. She had Ivy Nile as her, like, security. Uh, later, Tate and Paxley would also join that. And she's been picking on Nova Nebula for the past four months. Bianca Belair came to her aid. And then later on, Bianca was like, girl, I've got other plans. And then she goes on to, like, do championship stuff. Uh, Asuka and Liv was the Raw Queen of the Ring final. Liv, at this point, was um, in Bala Club, but that didn't last for too long. Uh, Kyrie beat Shutami in the SmackDown final. Uh, this was a women's NXT Women's Championship match. Roxy Perez won. Julia beats Micah in the Implosion of Dominion. Um, this was the announcement of NXT Japan. Yeah. Where... Um, we announced this upcoming match would be Miu Yamashita against Venny to crown the first um, NXT Japan Wonder Woman champion. Uh, Miu won that. She'd later go on to be called Aoi Maikawa and, you know, move on to ECW. Uh, following the months of um, Sasha bad-mouthing Lita on comms on Heat, uh, it ended with her and Trish against Sasha and Indy here at Evolution, and Trish and Lita did win, pinning Indy Hartwell, of course. Dakota defends against Shotzi at Evolution, so that probably I couldn't remember it. Uh, yeah, Bianca Belair here, like, hints at going on towards, um, Dick Ball Women's Championship stuff. Uh, Charlotte and Jordan defending the belts against Bailey and Cora Jade. You know, the, the two best friends who have been, like, the best part of SmackDown at this point. And Charlotte ends up winning. Charlotte and Jordan retain. Cora and Bailey come up just short. We then get Kyrie defeating Asuka to win Queen, the Queen of the Ring. And Io's there because I had her there to announce NXT Japan, which is still months off being clear, and her and Kyrie celebrate together. Then in the main event, another Audible is called, and Rhea Ripley gets injured, and <laughs> Sonya Deville wins the Royal Women's Championship by accident. Yeah. And then next week, the Raw, the Raw after this is Raw at the Bash of the Beach, because it was actually Raw, it was actually held at the beach. And it was a, a fucking great show, if I do say so myself. Um, it op the show opens with um, Sonya Deville bragging about her championship win and then Asuka comes out and beats her for the belt. Funny fact is that Rhea was always going to win the champ or retain the championship at Evolution. She was always going to drop it here. Bianca was going to beat her here for it. But I had to change that up a little bit because, you know, I had to change my SummerSlam match. But then instead it became Asuka versus Bianca. Asuka won the belt of Sonya after a day. And then Bianca came out and made the match for SummerSlam. Also during this, you know, we had a beach time party. Grayson Waller was called up. He started flirting with girls at the beach. Um, Alexa got a little bit drunk and ended up signing up to a match with Nova Nebula at SummerSlam. And the Carrion Cross call-up was here. Carrion who recruited several badass guys to, um, you know, stand by his side. Being Cutler, who is um, Steve Cutler. Carcass, who is Moose. And... Carland, who is Harland, Parker Boudreaux. But Shanky did take the Carnage title off him. Um, my Wrestling Academia were going through the work here because, you know, they'd found their sensei. Their sensei was, of course, Kid Bandit. And they'd bumped into an enemy army led by Joe Gacy, who were after Saray's pendant for their own greedy gain. And that group was Joe Gacy... Um, Commander Aziz, Alexander Wolf, and Lyra Valkyria. So that was a match at SummerSlam. And um, Masaf Ali came back. Uh, we hadn't seen him since WrestleMania, and he was like repenting for all his sins as part of New America. You know, he was apologizing. He, that's not who he wants to be. He wants to be a role model with a name like Mustafa Ali. 
and then Angel Garza came out and like started pressing his buttons. I think threatened to like kiss his wife because he was doing like a milf thing at the time, and then there they end up dressing at SummerSlam. Um, they would be leading to a big fucking brand warfare like clash of all the groups, you know, Fit Bala Club, Imperium, Hit Row. Not Imperium, um, Real Coalition, Hit Row, um, Path of the Dragon, all of them. They're in some sort of like big mass gang warfare sort of thing. Brandy announces the birth of the Women's Liberty Championship, which is our mid-card title. With the first ma- the first champion being crowned at SummerSlam in a six-way. And this was a qualifier. Florence won because um, Alexa Goons got involved and then Nova signed them up to a match with Alexa. Tyler Breeze and Warden. You know, I think Warden was being abused by Breeze here. And then eventually he does the turn, you know, the Wardlow turn, where he power bombs the shit out of Tyler Breeze, and then um, we set up a match for for SummerSlam. It was Big E defending against Edge, and Sheamus and Drew McIntyre came to the aid of Big E. So Edge was putting double duty because on one night he was defending his tag titles with Randy Orton against Ed, um, Sheamus and Drew, and on the other night he was challenging Big E. So that's the Raw side, really. But the SmackDown side is where the shit was getting cooking because. This was where the Seth Rollins stuff was. Daniel Bryan and Brock Lesnar, I guess, was happening because, you know, Bryan was beefing with Roman Reigns and Heyman was like, I'll take care of him, my tribal chief. <coughs> Gable and Pat McAfee were antagonizing each other. And that ended up with Pat McAfee wrestling Chad Gable at the pay-per-view. Um, but yeah, Cody had announced that he was coming to challenge um, Roman Reigns. Not at SummerSlam. He ends up making a match for uh, Madison Square Garden on an episode of Raw, which I think is this one. Yes. So he ends up winning an episode of... He ends up using his opportunity on an episode of Raw MSG, you know, because Dusty failed to win the battle at MSG, so he wants to avenge that. And again, Cody wins that by count out. So he wins the match, but not the belt, and he's wasted his opportunity by challenging Roman Reigns at MSG. And then, of course, on SmackDown, we need a new challenger because Cody's used his opportunity and Seth goes, well, why me? Why not me? And then Roman Reigns comes out and he goes, okay, Seth, I'll give you one more opportunity at my championship if you go over to Raw and you fucking stop Cody Rhodes. Because, obviously, we've got to insinuate that Roman knows he can't beat Cody properly. So like, he's like, okay, I'll, I'll go back on my word and let you once again wrestle for the championship if... You can go over to Raw and beat Cody Rhodes and get that shot at SummerSlam. And spoiler, that doesn't happen. <laughs> um, Cody beats Seth to um, make his way to, to SummerSlam to wrestle Roman Reigns. Because of course, Seth Rollins is the short of that because he had one more chance. He, he's been looking for loophole after loophole after loophole to get back at Roman, but he can't quite do it. Also on this show, Bailey and Cora... Um, because the, the tag match at SummerSlam was Shida and Utami against Charlotte and Jordan. This was Cora and Bailey's last chance as well. They won the belts. So they would end up going to SummerSlam to make a triple threat match, but they'd be the champions. And Seth, after after his failure to beat um, Cody, comes back to SmackDown and he calls out Carmelo Hayes. Because Carmelo Hayes is Mr. Money in the Bank. So he's like, well, I'll fight you for that briefcase. Knowing that if he takes that briefcase, he'll be Mr. Money in the Bank and he will be able to cash it in on Roman Reigns. And Melo's like, okay, deal, bitch. So yeah, we get Carmelo Hayes against Seth Rollins for the Money in the Bank briefcase on SummerSlam Night 1. And yeah, as you can see, um, the duo of the Limit Breakers ended up in the crosshairs of the bloodline. Um, Breaker and Keith Lee defeated Jimmy Uso and Jacob Fatu on the pre-show. <coughs> we then get the opener, Carmelo Hayes retains the briefcase against um, Seth Rollins. So, damn. Seth came up short. Um, Ezekiel, um, Elias' younger brother, because Elias was a member of the House of Black. And then he sort of, like, wasn't anymore because they'd been they'd been sick of him and they kicked him out. So, Ezekiel, his younger brother, ends up being the man to emerge and partner with Adam Cole in this four-way because Kevin Owens has gone off to politics. And DIY end up winning the tag belts in that four-way. And then we get Masafar Ali winning the IC title off Angel Gaza. We get the My Wrestling Academia mid-season finale where our heroes do lose to the evil quartet. Um, Wolf Gruber, Ashling McPhee, and Aziz are the evil anime names of, you know, Dabakato, Alexander Wolf, and Lyra Valkyria. 
they do eventually all end up being renamed back as they as you'd expect. Uh, Daniel Bryan fails to beat Brock Lesnar. Um, Chase you make a cameo here. They don't get officially called up until next year, but they make a cameo here. Uh, Charlotte and Jordan win the belt straight back. So Bailey and Bailey and Cora hold them for six days, or five days even. And then after the match is where Bailey ends up turning on Cora, but you know they don't break up. Like she beats the fuck out of Cora Jade and then like orders her to the back and like like she's a like she's an abusive parent basically. So Bailey's gone heel again and she's dictating Cora Jade around. But Cora, you know, because she loves Bailey, puts up with it. We then get Kyrie defeating Dakota to win the SmackDown Women's title. You know, Queen Queen Kyrie, the Queen of the Seas, defeats Dakota Kai, taking that championship home. Crypto Corbin's back, or he's here even. Um, at some point, he faces Ludwig Kaiser in a board ape on a pole match. I don't know exactly when that happens. I don't know if it already has or if it happens after this because I think that might happen after this because once he loses Monkey, he becomes Barmass Baron Corbin. Uh, yeah. But he's here. Non fungible niece is knee jerk niece's new crypto themed nickname. And yeah. Pat McAfee beats Gable. Uh, Trish and Sasha Banks in Boston. Sasha beats Trish. Um, Big E retains against Edge in the main event of night one. And then Seamus and Drew also come out because, you know, they're beefing with the grand jury as well. Which leads us straight into night two, which we shall see them challenge Raid RKO for the belts. Uh, Cameron Grimes defeats Ikamanjiro. Grimes, I alluded to it earlier on, he had a faulty mattress that he'd bought off like a dark web rat mattress website. Uh, like that was being advertised during Raw. And it ended up being run by Ikamanjiro. They had a big mattress match, which was a goal that one of my friends set me to do. So I fucking did it. And there it is. Yes. Um, the six-way ladder match to crown the inaugural Women's Liberty Champion was won by Shotzi Blackheart. She beat Florence, Alba Fire, Mandy Rose, Liv Morgan, and Tony Storm in that. Uh, Warden, yeah, he beat the fuck out of Tyler Breeze and Bobby Roode, so he's now free on his own. He's going off on his to do his own thing as a babyface. Um, we'd been running a... I hadn't been mentioning it, but we've been running since WrestleMania on Velocity. We've been running a Cruiserweight World Cup, which had like 32 men. It was like an actual World Cup format. And like we went through the entire group stage and knockout stages. So then the final two were... Ricochet and Rey Mysterio. And that match was at SummerSlam to crown the new Cruiserweight champion. Rey Mysterio defeats Ricochet to win the Cruiserweight title. Then see Gunther, well, um, the Regal Coalition, I guess, win Brand Warfare, which is between the Hurt Business, Path of the Dragon, Hit Row, the Regal Coalition, and Balor Club. <coughs> Just a big fuck fest to a bunch of teams. I, I, I like it because, you know, the entire match was it was like anarchy in the arena, basically. But the entire time, Gunther was just stood in the ring. He never left the ring because you know the match sacred. Uh, Logan Paul and KSI fought the Miz and Grayson Waller. Okay, yeah, Grayson Waller had a line with the Miz after his call up, and they've been talking shit about the social media megastars. And yeah, they ended up shutting their mouth at SummerSlam. Nova beats Elector. You know, to start her kickstart her rise. Um, Edge and Randy Orton defeated Sheamus and Drew to retain the belts. Um, yeah, Matt Hardy, Bava Nero, Wyatt and Susie, that's setting up Final Deletion, which is on the Raw after SummerSlam of, yeah, Firefly Deletion even. And that's the last time I'll ever see the Hardys because they've been con since. That was their write-off, basically. Uh, Bianca defeats Asuka to, to win the belt. Um, Crypto Corbin has an open challenge. John Cena answers it in Boston. And everyone's like, holy shit, it's John Cena. And he says, no, it's not me. It's the newest member of the SmackDown roster. Out comes Warden. And Warden squashes Crypto Corbin to win the US title. Um, and then the main event. Um, Cody looks like he's going to have Roman beat. When Seth Rollins' music hits. And Seth Rollins rushes out. And he ends up curb stomping Cody Rhodes. And Roman Reigns ends up retaining. Obviously, he stomped Cody because, you know... Cody's not going to be the one to take the belt off Roman. I am, because I am the fucking man. But I need to be the one to take the belt off the bloodline, not you, Cody. Your story is not as important as mine. So, Seth turned heel because 
he wanted to be the one to take the belt off Roman Reigns so badly, and Cody was also the challenger. So yeah, you know, driving him insane. It's basically the the story they're telling in real life right now because they stole my greatest ever story and they're trying to repurpose it. Anyway, um, following that, Cody has to kill time because he's over on Raw while Seth and Roman are on SmackDown, and we're on we're on Raw. Cody's doing stuff. He's feuding with like. Carrying cross for a bit, but um, yeah. Uh, we get the firefly deletion. Um, the path of the dragon are here somewhere. I think it's actually this go home show for the lot for, for no, or is it this one? Um, they win the tag titles. Um, and it's here. It's this week. Path of the dragon defeat Raid RKO to win the tag team championships officially. You know, marking the rise of the greatest tag team in the saves history after they were thrown together because they were two mid-card guys with nothing to do. They then went on to become the greatest tag team in history of WWE. I can't remember what this was. This was the Cody segment on that day, but I know I know eventually at some point he does get run over. Um, I can't remember when that is. But yeah, we do we do lose Cody for a bit. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. Over over on SmackDown, we have Roman Reigns is still doing his thing, but Seth's here. Seth Rollins debuts. Seth Freak and Rollins debuts. You know, he's got the new theme song. He's got the heel look, and he's just being a dickhead in general. Um. Yeah. And, you know, that, that he's just being a four. He, he says, like, I will be the one to, to face Roman Reigns. I don't care. And then Roman, I think he's got a defense against Champa on one of these television shows. And, uh, yeah. One of, the, yeah. one of these has Roman Reigns versus Champa on it. And um, Seth Rollins comes out and beats him up. Because you know he just take he just takes the show hostage. He starts beating everybody up. I think he hospitalizes Daniel Bryan as well at some point. Yeah, here. So he he takes out Daniel Bryan. He takes out Chamber. He takes out everybody that's just stood in the way. And eventually, you know, Pierce has to cave and has to be like, "What? Well, this can't carry on." You know, you have to you have to give him one more shot at your championship, Roman. And then it's agreed that at Clash at the Castle, Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins will face off one more time. If Roman Reigns wins, though, Seth Rollins leaves WWE for good. And, yeah, that's the main event of Clash of the Cup. But first, we've got Unforgiven. I'm getting ahead of myself. I want to just talk about that angle and not, you know, Raw. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, Bianca retains the Raw Missile against Nova. You know, that's a pretty fun match when she's then confronted by the Grand Jury after the match. Rhea Ripley returns and turns heel on Bianca Belair. You know, Debuting her new look and getting the reality we know now. Um, Ludwig's hyping up the board ape on a pole match, which is on the roar after this. Um, Ray defends the Cruiserweight title against Angel Garza. Omos defeats Zergis. Um, Veer Mahan had been coming since the Raw after Mania, and he finally unloaded on this show and aligned with Omos and Malcolm Bivens and then them lot. Um, Ali retains the IC title triple threat against Joe Gacy and Sami Zayn. Um, Gunther defeats Finn Balor. He squashes Finn Balor, I should say. And the real coalition, you know, stand tall. Uh, Yoko Uihara is Micah being repackaged. Yeah. Um, Path of the Dragon retain against the Vikings. Charlotte beats Sasha. And Sheamus wins the World Heavyweight Championship in a fatal four way. And then boots Shrew McIntyre in the face afterwards. Setting up Clash at the Castle, which is going to be Sheamus defending against Drew McIntyre. Also on one of these shows, we get the the angle where Randy Orton walks away from the Grand Jury. And then they're going to, quote unquote, replace him. Yeah, but Dolph Ziggler is the replacement for Randy Orton and the Grand Jury. But he then usurps Edge, he boots Edge out, and the Vikings get booted out because they aligned with Edge. And then he adds Ken Cobain and Emerson Frost to uh, Chris Bay and Ace Austin 
to form the new Grand Jury, which is Dolph Ziggler, Damian Priest, Emerson Frost, Ken Cobain, Scarlett, Julia, and Sonya Deville. And then Edge, Randy on and the Vikings are out. So yeah, that's the that's how the, the trajectory of that group's gone. Um, the anime boys are still cooking stuff in the background. You know, yeah. And then a Clash of the Castle, which is where big shit went down with this, this save. I consider this the turning point, really. For, you know, the current era of cinema we currently live in. Uh, the Grand Jury, the six men, are uh, Dolph Ziggler, Emerson Frost, and King Cobain. They beat Big E, Kofi, and Woods. Uh, Shotzi retains the Liberty Championship in a four-way against Alba Fire, Tony Storm, and Candice LeRae. DIY defeat the Grizzled Young Veterans, retain the SmackDown Tag Titles. Uh, La French Connection then come out because um, they are David Martin, who is uh, Michael Oku, VLA Martin, or De- VLA Martin even, who's a male, and then Idris and Malik, because I had to make a French group. And yeah, they came out in England, or Wales even, running down the Welsh crowd, and then DIY beat him up. Gunther faced off with Balor. Balor is the demon, obviously. After the man, Finn Balor, got squashed by Gunther, the demon comes out, and then Gunther beats the demon as well. And we've only seen the demon once since then, which was very recently. Uh, Bailey and Dakota had formed an alliance following SummerSlam. You know, and Bailey was a dickhead. And turned on Cora and is like being an abusive parent to Cora Jade. She somehow found herself aligning with Dakota Kai because they're both just dickheads. And that set up a match for Clash of the Castle between Bailey and Dakota against Kyrie and Utami in tag team action. No, Kyrie is the Smith of Champion. Which ended when Cora Jade ran out and she joined up with Bailey and Dakota Kai forming damage control, which is this lineup in this universe because EO was A injured and B too good. But yes, Bailey, Dakota Kai, and Cora Jade officially formed damage control here. Warden defeats Bobby Lashley to retain the US title. Adam Pierce announces here that um SmackDown going forward will be three hours every week because, you know, I was getting tired of having too many people on SmackDown not doing anything. So yeah, we get a three hour annou- announcement of SmackDown. Uh Seamus and Drew McIntyre, Drew retain, oh, Drew wins the belt even. He's now a three-time world champion. And then get Baron Corbin, who's bum-ass Baron Corbin at this point. I snuck onto an airplane to fly over here to Cardiff. Wade Barrett does a bad news Barrett gimmick about him. And he starts, I know, he starts trying to wanker at him or something. I, I, I can't remember what the chant was. There was, some, there was some British chant. I started having him chant at him. And it was funny. It was just a funny bit. Uh, Rhea Ripley, you know, he's, she's a heel now. She beats Bianca to win the Royal Women's title. Uh, Logan Paul and KSI, you know, because we are in the UK. They face off with the Carrion Cross Colts, Carland and Carrion Cross. They beat them, obviously. Seth Rollins, then in the main event. So what's happened, right? Since the last time we checked up on our, our boys here. Um, Jey Uso has returned. Jey Uso's back, and he's warning um Roman about... There was an attack on Jimmy and it was like, oh, well, only families allowed in the Bloodline locker room. So, you know, it must have been Jacob Fatu who did it. He's a snake, you know. You can't trust him. Ooh, so he attacked Jimmy. And then Roman was like, you know what? If, if there's going to be tension in the Bloodline between Jacob Fatu and the Usos, why don't none of you come to Cardiff with me and it'll be me and Seth one-on-one? But one of Roman Reigns' cousins did come to Cardiff, that being Solo Sokoa. But Solo was on the side of Seth. And he helped Seth Rollins end the year-long championship reign of Roman Reigns. So Seth Rollins finally did it. But at what cost, you know? He's abandoned all his principles, but he's finally dethroned the tribal chief. And he's aligned with his cousin to become WWE champion. And yeah, where does that take us from here? Um, Raw heading into One Night in Tokyo which is a one-off show sort of a filler event really Nakamura gets a title shot because of course it's in Japan Um, but um, AJ Styles on Smackdown gets a title shot because again it's in Japan it's in the Tokyo Dome Um, Roman Reigns we don't see him we haven't seen him since um, Clash of the Castle and he doesn't show up and we go to One Night in Tokyo which is yeah this is a quick show it's like it just sort of existed because I don't want to do a big show in Japan. Um, damage Control being Cora Jade, Bailey, and Dakota Kai beat Utami 
and Amory Poirot and Kelsey Cook, who were baby faces at this point. You know, they were just, you know, trying to fight off damage control. Tintin Hashino versus Ika Manjiro was an NXT Japan title match. Same with um, Aoi Makara against Saray. It was a women's championship match for NXT Japan. And then J Flo had won. When did they win them? Um, they beat Charlotte and Jordan for the tag titles on here, on an episode of Heat. So yeah, J Flo were the women's tag team champions. They retained them against VXT, which is Diana Peraza and Chelsea Green at a uh, one night in Tokyo. Rey Mysterio defended the Cruiserweight title against Kushida, another Japan legend. Path of the Dragon retained the tag team championships against Demerson Frost and King Cobain. Rhea Ripley retains the Raw Women's title against Hikaru Shida. You know, again, Japan. Barmas Baron Corbin comes out. Bruno Suzuki beats him up. Kaze Nina Rey, you know, you know the rest. Uh, Drew retains against Nakamura. Um, Seth defeats AJ to retain. Roman Reigns then reappears for the first time since Clash of the Castle. And it's then announced following that, that the main event of Survivor Series, as you may be able to see down the left-hand side, ten years after the debut of The Shield, will be Survivor Series The Shield X, and we'll see Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins each assemble teams for war games. Uh, Seth Rollins' team being himself, Sora Sokoa, and he'd then re recruit three NXT guys in a similar fashion to the debut of The Shield in Buster Gates, Nebo Barnes, and Rufus Hamilton, who are um, Ricky Stark's Calvin Tankman and um, Alexander Hammerstone. And then Roman's team is himself, the Usos, Jacob Fatu, and a blank spot. So yeah, that, that's a lot to look forward to there. Kyrie Sane then also retained against Asuka in the main event. Survivor Series 2022 was fun because I didn't want to do brand v brand. But I wanted to do something about Survivor Series to make it unique. So like in, in the style of the old Survivor Series shows, every match on this show was a was an elimination match. And it was interesting. It's a one-off thing I enjoyed, but I don't think I'd do it again because, you know, it makes this more unique, this show. Um, so anyway, on Velocity. What I've been going on on Velocity here before I get to this pre-show match is... Um, actually, no, it wasn't, oh, I think it did bleed onto Raw. Yeah. Um, Anthony Nice, following his successful crypto farming and being um, non non-fungible Nice alongside Crypto Corbin... Um, Corbin, he fell down the dark period of crypto, okay, he, he fell down that period, he's bomb ass Baron Corbin, okay, he's got no money. Um, Nice, though, he's formed his own new business called the Nice Business, looking to change the face of cruiserweight wrestling. And he recruited, uh, Sean and Arya Daivari, as well as, um, uh, Lucky Ali, Archer Wakefield, to his crew, and then, later on, he then poisons the mind of Dominic Mysterio, and Dominic Mysterio turns on his own father to join the Nice business. And also at some point, Wesley, I think, had beaten Ray for the te for the Cruiserweight title. I don't know exactly when that happened, but Wesley was the Cruiserweight champion. And then Dominic beat him for it. So yeah. Um, Dominic Mysterio... Well, no, he wins that in December even, but he's a heel now is the, po is the point. He's in the Nice business. It's Arya Davari, Sean, Sean Davari, Archer Wakefield, Dominic Mysterio, and Anthony Nice, defeating MSK, who is Wesley, Myron Reed, and um, Trey Miguel, who are Tristan Ellison and Leslie Young, as well as Nathan Fraser and Axiom in a Cruiserweight Showcase 5v5 elimination. We then get J-Flow against Mandy Rose, Thoughts of Contraction, and VXT, again, just a pre-show little elimination match. We then get the first War Games match of the night, which is Edge, Randy Orton, and the Viking Raiders. You know, the three, the four men who left and or were kicked out of the Grand Jury. Fighting the actual Grand Jury in a War Games match. And it is Edge's team who win. We get, you know, shield recap segments throughout the night. And, yeah. Logan Paul and the Impractical Jokers. I was challenged to book the Impractical Jokers into a match. And, you know, they were beefing with, Lou, they were beefing with Baron Corbin. They pranked Baron Corbin. And he ended up with slime on his dirty shirt. Like, I imagine he didn't wash it off. I imagine it was there the whole time. And carrying across, Cole would obviously be like, oh, that's not funny, kid. And then they call, they christened him Baron Corbin of a K. And then once they lost this match and they were embarrassed, he took that K back. Because, you know, how dare he disgrace the letter K by having it. Um, 
Kairi, Asuka, AJ, Shotzi, and Utami defeat Damage Control, Amory, and Kelsey Cook. Amory and Kelsey had turned heel and, you know, listened to the preachings of Bailey to become better. Cora Jade had also taken the Liberty Championship from Shotzi on one of these shows. Yeah, here. So she was the Liberty Champion now. Uh, Kyrie's still the SmackDown Women's Champion. And yeah. And then we get Drew McIntyre, Sami Zayn, Montez Ford, Sheamus, and Shinsuke Nakamura against Legado de la Sombra. Sort of just a filler feud for the Raw guys. And yeah. Bianca Belair, Sasha Banks, Nova Nebula, Liv Morgan, and Sheeda against Rhea Ripley, Charlotte Flair, Julia Scarlet, and Sonya Deville is the Raw Women's Elimination Match. We then get the Regal Coalition against the club, which is Gunther, Dudley, Pete, and the Grizzle Junk Veterans against AJ Styles, Finn Balor, Gallows, and Anderson had made their return, and then Santos Escobar, who was a former member of Balor Club, um, joined up on that team to even the numbers. And then we get House of Black against... <laughs> in a Samson Shack showdown, right? So Eli Elias used to be in the House of Black. He then left to Ezekiel, then Tino, and Adam Cole, and... You know, House of Black were beefing with Elias because he was their former member of the group. And they'd be then got a Samson Shack showdown match, which was him against them against the entire Samson family. Elrod, Ernie Junior, Ezekiel, and Elias. And then, in the main event, War Games, um, Roman's team was a man down when Cody Rhodes made his return after he was run over. And he, he helped Roman Reigns win. So, yeah. And I think that did that did earn Roman Reigns a shot at the WWE Championship at High Voltage, which is the last pay-per-view of the year. Hello. And then uh, we get to High Voltage. Um, no, Roman told me before we get there, he he announces that it will be a dog collar match between him and Seth Rollins at the pay-per-view. So yeah, and also um, Bailey. Kyrie and somebody else are in a triple threat. Asuka, that's it. Bailey, Bailey, Kyrie, and Asuka are a triple threat match for the SmackDown Women's Title. But yeah, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns are ha having a dog collar match for the WWE Championship at high voltage. On the Raw side, Cody Rhodes again. He's dwindling around. He's trying to he's feeding him a carry and cross because you know him and Kyrie had like a, a a brief thing before Cody got run over, and then. You know, Carrie and, and him are ri rivalry. So the first match of 2023 is a cold steel cage match. And yeah. But before then, we got the Christmas specials of Raw and SmackDown, which are two of the greatest episodes of the series I've ever done. Um, this was a musical This was a musical special. Um, throughout, the, throughout the... Again, I can see Alexa Bliss down here, and I'm going to talk about her. Um, she's been abusing her sort of security guards here in Paxi and Ivy Nile recently and they they'd sort of had enough and you know they were they were Alexa was the Grinch basically and they were trying to make, make a good raw Christmas Carland I'll make a man out of you with Carrion singing about Carland Carland's being a rebel for the for the Carrion Cross cult because you know he's been hanging around too much with the anime boys and um yeah Ludwig Kaiser was the one set out to, to challenge Drew McIntyre for the WWE cha or the World Heavyweight Championship, and um, Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair were going to have a TLC match at New Year's Revolution for the Raw Women's Championship. And yeah, so then we get to High Voltage, the final pay view of the year. Um, Kansas Ray and Dakota Kai. Kansas Ray has been beefing with Damage Control for a few months. That's very very important to note. Um, she's also been sort of like. Picking up wins on heat and just having good matches on heat. So, yeah. And then Warden beats Cesaro to retain the US title. Uh, the Grand... Not the Grand Jury. The fuck it, The Revolution. That's their name. Uh, they defeat the three members of the Bloodline being the Usos and Jacob Fatu. Uh, Cora retains against Maki for the Liberty Championship. The Cyclone, they're back together. They beat DIY and the Limit Breakers, who are Braun Breaker and Keithley, for the SmackDown Tag Titles. Carmelo Hayes defeats AJ Styles, who I think was the number five or six former world champion he defeated at this point. Uh, the Paragon, which was a new group formed by Adam Cole, Bobby Roode, and the Fritz brothers, who were the Von Eriks, 
Uh, they were feuding with Swerve and Hit Row. Matt Riddle wanted to join Hit Row. He was calling him Hit Bro, and it was it was funny. It was great. But Paragon do defeat Hit Bro at High Voltage. Bailey then wins the SmackDown Women's Championship against Kyrie and Asuka. Um, Timothy Thatcher, only Lorca and Drew Gulak become the first ever Cruiserweight Trios champions when they defeat Roderick Strong, Kyle O'Reilly, and Bobby Fish. Seth Rollins in the main event does defeat Roman Reigns in the dog collar match to retain the WWE Championship. And then after the show, you know, on the SmackDown building up to it, Daniel Bryan makes his return. And, you know, because he was one of the men taken out by Seth Rollins. And he's going to face Seth on the Battleground TV special, which is the first TV special of 2023, the first SmackDown 2023, which we then get to. Um, after we get to... No, we get here. Sorry, we get before then. Um, it opens the show. Seth Rollins and Daniel Bryan does. Seth retains, and then Heyman announces that Brock Lesnar is going to be Seth's opponent at the Royal Rumble, which is held in Minneapolis, in his, in Lesnar's hometown. Uh, then, yeah, Cora against Naomi, she retains. Warden retains against Jacob Fatu. Carmelo beats OS again, former WWE champion that Carmelo Hayes defeats. Biggie and Alistair Black kind of thing, and then Bailey retains against Kyrie. And then AJ Lee makes the save, and AJ Lee and Bailey is the SmackDown Women's Championship match for the Royal Rumble. And yeah, heading into New Year's Revolution. Uh Legado de la Sombra, which is Andrade, Joaquin, and Cruz defeating Death from Above. They have since debuted Pistolero, who I made reference to earlier on, is Bandido. He's now the third member of Death from Above. Um Andrew Dawkins, um, He'd um, Montez Waterhouse was still gone at this point, or was he? I can't remember. No, he was back, but Dawkins had sort of left, and like the Street Profits had broken up, but like he never turned on him. Like Dawkins just came back as a heel solo guy and beat. I completely missed like this entire run because I think John Morrison had a IC title run, and this all happened on Raw. I haven't been looking at the Raws, so like. Yeah, John Morrison beat Masafra Ali on one of these roars to to win the belt. And then he dropped it to Angelo Dawkins on the last roar of the year. Yeah. So Dawkins is the IC champion as a heel. And he defeats Ali and John Morrison to retain it. Gable and Sheamus have their match. They end up having a lot of matches this year. It, it just happened accidentally. Um, Dominic, you know, of the Nice business, retains against Wesley... Bailey and Dakota, um, they captured the women's tag team championships on the Christmas episode of SmackDown. So Bailey is now a double champion. You know, it's very weird because as we're going to get to later on, Io has been a double women's champion twice in this save, and Dakota Kai has been the tag team partner of the double women's champion twice in this save. You know, it's funny how things work out. But yeah, Bailey and Dakota retain the belts against Liv for Battle, who is Liv Morgan and Hikaru Shida. Who had formed? Who they'd been? They'd been become friends, but then officially formed a team like around this time. And then Drew McIntyre retains against Ludwig, who can't quite get the bottle in his collection. Par for the Dragon retained the Raw Tag Team titles against Pete Dunne and Dudley Davis. And then in the main event, Charlotte runs out and she catches her money in the bank, and she takes home the Raw Women's title. And then the Queen's Court celebrate with her, and um, Aaliyah and Skylar have since joined the Queen's Court. And yeah, that's the that's Raw done for the Royal Rumble. SmackDown, we've pretty much gone over all their stuff for the Royal Rumble as well. Um, Hip Bro were challenging um, the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, who were the Cyclone. And then on Raw, Montez Ford had, you know, he'd re-emerged because, you know, him and, Tez, him and Dawkins never broke up. But, like, he'd re-emerged and helped him fight off the Bionic Breed. And then the match of the Royal Rumble was going to be the Street Profit challenging Path of the Dragon. So yeah, that's the Royal Rumble set up. And um, we kick off with um, a Henley bar hoedown between DKE and the Witches. Um, Alba Fire would later replace Dickie Cross in that tag team. Um, Seth Rollins defeats Brock Lesnar in the opener in his hometown to Big Heat. Uh, Bailey retains against AJ. Uh, Path of the Dragon retain against the Street Prophets. Still no physical turn between the Prophets. 
uh, Candice LeRae ended up winning the Women's Royal Rumble. So, you know, that set her up for a clash with her rival for the last few months, Bailey, at WrestleMania. Uh, Charlotte retained against Bianca. Uh, the Cyclone retained against Hit Bro. Um, Brock Lesnar went to go get a number for the Royal Rumble after he lost in the opening match, but Borden took the last one, and then him and Brock had a stare down. Gunther was the man who challenged Drew McIntyre for the World Heavyweight Championship at this pay-per-view. And throughout the last few weeks leading up to the show was when we were doing the weird Bray Wyatt, like, TV static and White Rabbit shit. And, you know, yeah, Gunther ended up beating Drew McIntyre clean. And then after the matches, when we debuted Uncle Howdy and the whole Firefly Funhouse thing, leading into Drew McIntyre facing Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania. And then Cody Rhodes. So, the Royal Rumble, of course. Cody, he wanted to finish the story. He was going to WrestleMania. Uh, the final, he was in there, the final two were him and Roman Reigns. And Solo was third. So he was like the Seth Rollins guy, handpicked guy in there. Cody and Roman had to work together. And, oh, by the way, I didn't mention, after War Games, um, Cody came out, he held Roman Reigns, and he was like, you owe me one. Because, like, he had, he, he owed him one for helping him win War Games. But, it doesn't matter, because this is the final two of the Royal Rumble, the best man will win. Cody did end up winning and eliminating Roman Reigns to go to WrestleMania to face Seth Rollins and try and get another shot at capturing his, his championship and finishing his story. Um, yeah, but on Raw, in, a, in the build-up through WrestleMania, they've got no more pay-per-views. They've got a TV special that had the Elimination Chamber on it, but yeah. Um, on the Go Home episode of Raw, by the way, Liv Morgan and Hikaru Shida won the tag titles from Takota and Bailey. So Liv and Shida are the tag champions. They're going to defend at Mania in a triple threat against Lee Irvin Trish and Ruby Riot and Tony Storm who are a team at this time. And also, the other main point on Raw going on right now is the dissolution of the Regal Coalition, because Gunther was sort of becoming a dickhead, and he, like, laid out William Regal, because he doesn't need him anymore, because he's now the world champion, which obviously pissed off Dudley and Pete Dunne. And then Ilya Dragunov fought um, Gunther on one of these shows, and they had a fucking banger. So I was like, well, I've got to have to put Ilya in the match as well. So they ended up with... A four-way for the belt at WrestleMania between the Real Coalition boys, Gunter, Pete Dunne, Tyler Bay, and Ilya Dragunov. Um, at the Royal Rumble, Tatum Paxley was um, Alexa's security guard. She eliminated her from the match because Alexa was like on the on the announce table, like avoiding putting her feet on the floor. Tatum threw her off after Alexa had been abusing her for so long, and then you know Alexa fired her, but she reappeared under a mask. As La Paxica, she basically did the Mister Mister America storyline with Tatum, leading to WrestleMania, where Tatum would be reinstated if she won, and Alexa would lose her job as the GM if if Tatum won. And then also going into WrestleMania, we had Nova Nebula won the uh, Elimination Chamber to earn the shot at um, Charlotte for the belt at WrestleMania. Path of the Dragon, we're going to defend against Itchy Buns. Minoru Suzuki and um, Shinsuke Nakamura and then Tozawa suffered a brain tumor in this match so he's he's still out to this very day but um, Zergis who was the dragon Luchasaurus renamed um, he had to step in and defend on behalf of Humberto and yeah but, but for the Smackdown side we had Seth of course one of these heats yeah this one so one of these heats has an angle on it. <laughs> um, Seth Rollins, you know, threatens Sora Sokoa to, you know, beat up Brandy if, you know, he doesn't accept a match, a challenge laid out by Seth Rollins where um, it's going to be Cody Rhodes team with Dustin at the Elimination Chamber against Seth and Solo. And if, you know, Seth Rollins loses, or if Cody Rhodes loses, even he loses his shot at WrestleMania. And, you know, he says yes, because otherwise his wife's going to get someone spiked by um, Sotokoa. But on the go-home show, Dustin Rhodes is laid out. He's, I think he was run over again, because, you know, Seth ran over Cody before. So, <laughs> that was probably the thing I did. Um, yeah. 
But then at the pay-per-view, we'll see what happens. No Way Out 2023. A lot of shit goes down to set up WrestleMania. That's one of my favorite pay-per-views I've ever done. Um, it's also going to see Bailey and Kyrie in a rematch for the SmackDown Women's Championship. So we get to the event itself. Um, Carmelo Hayes and Daniel Bryan, they had a thing in the Royal Rumble. They beefed, I think, one of them eliminated the other. Then, no, it was, yeah, Bryan eliminated Melo. Melo got annoyed, came back in, beat him up, and then Corbin dumped Bryan out. Um, Cora Jade retained against AJ Lee for the Liberty Championship. AJ had come back, you know, as a mentor figure for both Cora and the debuting Roxy Perez. And Cora was like, now fuck off, bitch. I'm too good for you now. Leading to a feud between Cora and AJ, which then set up AJ, or then set up Cora to defend against Roxy at WrestleMania. But the the story of the night was Kyrie had won a match on one of these television shows. Yeah. No. She won a match somewhere. And winning that match meant that she got to choose somebody to be in her corner for the match at no way out and Bailey didn't I'm trying to find out where that match is I don't know where it is or or what happened or why it happened there might just be that segment there but that, that was the story anyway um Kyrie had she she had a chance to have somebody in her corner at um the pay-per-view and throughout the night they're attacking all of the enemies of damage control and allies of Kyrie you know Candace got attacked. Um, Roxy Perez and AJ got attacked. Um, everybody else got attacked, so there was nobody that Kyrie could call upon. And then obviously we'll see what happens later on. Uh, the Cyclone defeated the Usos to retain the SmackDown Tag Team titles. What happened here was Jacob Fatu had been with the Usos, obviously in the Bloodline. So as Okoa had been with Seth, and Seth had got into the head of Jacob Fatu because Solo was thriving under him. And Jacob was still a third wheel under the bloodline. And then Jacob Fatu betrayed the Usos. And aligned with Solo and Seth. And then we got Solo and Solo and Jacob Fatu against the Usos at WrestleMania. Um, Buster Gates and Big E. The Revolution had been beefing with the New Day. And then Buster Gates had a singles match with Big E inside a cage to keep out into interference. Leading to a six-man tag at WrestleMania. Dakota Kai here. Um, had been on her sort of own thing, separate from the entire damage control arc. She'd been having these like weird like segments where she'd been seeing like weird shit in the mirror, and like on the walls because it was Oscar coming back to haunt her. Um, Oscar was in the Royal Rumble, and I can't remember where else Oscar ever was. I, don't, I can't remember when she got taken out. I'll quickly check our match history, but Dakota had taken her out. For something. I might have just been, yeah, it might have just been in the Royal Rumble, actually. And then we debuted, you know, Faith painted Murder Clown Asker, who had been stalking Dakota. And, like, nobody else believed Dakota at that point. Adam Cole and Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens came back from his politic hiatus at the Royal Rumble because I got bored and went, no, fuck off, I'm just going to take him back. And obviously, Adam Cole felt like he'd, he was right, you know, Kevin Owens betrayed me. And then he beat Kevin Owens in this match. The Paragon beat him up. Sami Zayn runs out to help Kev. To set up a tag match will be Adam Cole and Bobby Roode against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn for WrestleMania. Live for battle, defeat Rebellion, who is Tony Storm and Ruby Riot. Warden, who was the United States Champion, has held the belt since SummerSlam. It was set for an open challenge on this show. Um, he, he issued the challenge. Brock Lesnar answered it. He just beat the fuck out of him around ringside, f would him through a table and left. And then, you know, he didn't have any interest in fighting for the belt. And then Swerve came out. He was a, technically a babyface at this point, but this was, like, his official heel turn, and Matt Riddle was there going, bro, I don't think you should do this, bro. And then Swerve became the US champion. And, of course, Kyrie's partner in crime, her chosen person in her corner for the SmackDown Championship match was Io Shirai, who I'd also brought back early. Because I got bored and I wanted her back. But she was a worm and she betrayed Kyrie and Bailey retained the Spectre Women's title. So Bailey then would go on to fight Candace at WrestleMania for the belt. Io would face Kyrie. 
in the main event, Dustin Rhodes couldn't make it because he was obviously attacked by Seth and Solo on SmackDown. So Cody wrestles most of the match one on one on two, and then as it looks like he's done for, out comes Roman Reigns. He tags himself in. He chokes out Seth Rollins with the guillotine. And he wins the match, saving Cody's ass and keeping his WrestleMania match intact. And then he's like, he throws up the one finger. He goes, now we're even. You know, getting his payback for um, Survivor Series. But, obviously, you have him beating the champion. He's owed a championship match. So the match then becomes a triple threat match at WrestleMania. Cody Rhodes, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns in what is, you know, the biggest match I've ever done. Um, also, over on SmackDown, Carlo Hayes calls out John Cena. He's won, um, he's beat 12 former world champions at this point. And he's, John Cena's going to be lucky number 13, he says. And yeah, that's the whole thing there. Um, also, EO debuts a new regen manager by the name of Cammy. This is her. Um... She becomes an important part of the series later on, and she's like the transcriber, the translator for EO, and she describes why EO turned on Kyrie because of, you know, Kyrie left, abandoned her. She didn't talk to her when she was out. You know, she took EO's spot when EO was supposed to be here at the same time as her. Um, Hit Pro sort of comes crashing down when Rick Ross shows up. Um, he 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 shows up with Swerve, and Matt Riddle accuses Swerve of being a bitch. And, like, Matt Riddle, instead of him being kicked out of Hit Bro, he realizes that he has to leave. And, like, he goes away. And then that's the US title match at Mania is Swerve against Matt Riddle. And, yeah, let's just skip ahead to WrestleMania because, you know, I think I've gone through most of the key points. WrestleMania 39 considered by my, many my best ever pay of view. Um, Death from Above on the pre show against MSK for the Cruiserweight Trios Championship. It's a Cruiserweight Trios match. Doesn't really have much of a story to it, it's just going to be good. Uh, Florence won a Women's Battle Royal. Her and Julia were the final two members of that match. You know, interesting note for this year. Um, Gable wins the second annual Razor Ramon Memorial Ladder match, defeating Montez Ford, Zergis, Angelo Dawkins, Sheamus, Mustafa Ali, and John Morrison. Yeah, Zergis is doing double duty, because I'd already announced him for this match when before Tazawa went down, and then he had to step in and fill in for Tazawa as well. And yeah. Gable wins with the belt, leaves with the belt. Asuka debuts the new look face paint and beats Luka Akai in about 10 seconds. Um, Cesaro and Daniel Bryan form an alliance, you know, because neither man has anything going on. And they face the Cyclone for the SmackDown Tag Team titles and win them at WrestleMania. Uh, Rhea Ripley versus Sasha Banks. Rhea took Sasha out. Sasha went off to film a TV show in, like, November of 2022. And then she came back to get revenge on Rhea Ripley. I've written her rough by having Rhea beat her the fuck up around ringside for her for a table. And then, yeah, Rhea does win that WrestleMania. Kevin and Sami Zayn defeat the Power of Guns by Rude and Adam Cole. Bianca Belair versus Jutami Haishishta is Raw vs. SmackDown for the franchise tag. Uh, Bianca wins and gets three wishes. And, oh boy, she's a naughty girl of those. Um, Warden beats Brock Lesnar in a match against 76 that was going to be the start of a year-long arc. I was going to do Brock versus Warden here, have Brock win, and then, you know, run it back at Mania 40. For multiple reasons now. I'm so glad that didn't happen. But yes, Warden does beat Brock Lesnar. Roxy Perez defeats Cora Jade to win the Women's Liberty title. Finn Balor and AJ Styles versus Jeff Jarrett and Baron Corbin. So at the Royal Rumble, um, well, be slightly before the Royal Rumble, Bar Bar Baron Corbin um, somebody picked him up in a limo and took him away and then it was revealed that was Jeff Jarrett you know the man who loves securing the bag more the biggest bag getter of all time and he's going to help Corbin get the bag and they end up shooting with Finn Balor and AJ Styles at Wrestlemania uh, Dolph Ziggler and Logan Paul Logan was um, in the Royal Rumble and he was eliminated by Dolph Ziggler originally I, I realised this was going to end up being Dolph Ziggler's as a heel against Babyface Logan Paul. I quickly changed course and then the Grand Jury and Dolph Ziggler by proxy will turn Babyface. And yeah, Ziggler beat Logan Paul at WrestleMania. Uh, Gunter what retained the World Heavyweight Championship in a four way against Ilya Dragunov, Pete Dunne, and Dudley Davis. Uh, the Revolution won the six man tag against the New Day. And then the main event, Cannister Raid, won the SmackDown Women's title against Bailey. 
And then get to night two. Lashley defeats LA Knight. They just had a quick short feud that I put on the pre-show. Andre Chase won the Andre Knight Memorial Battle Royal last eliminating Baron Corbin. Corbin did double duty because, you know, that's two WrestleMania paydays for him. And, yeah, Andre Chase did the thing where he, like, sat, sat around, like, doing nothing in the all match and then eliminated Corbin at the end to win. Swerve defeats Matt Riddle to retain the US title. Uh, Liver Battle retain the women's title in the freeway. Tate and Paxi retain or defeats Alexa Bliss, um, re- reinstating her to Raw and firing Alexa Bliss as the general manager. Solo and Jacob Fatu defeat the Usos. Uh, Dio, uh, this is the My Wrestling Academia finale. Um, it's the anime boys being Dio Madden, Manny, Mansoor, Saray, Young Sensei. Um, they'd recruited Carland from um, the Caribbean Cross Cult. His name is now Carland with a C. And, like, that is his actual... His name is Carland with AC. Instead of just Carland, you know, with AC. And he also recruited Titus World Records, which is Titus O'Neil, R-Truth, Billy Kay, and uh, Shanky. As well as Joe Henry, who debuted in the Royal Rumble. And they fought off with the combined evil forces of Joe Gacy's crew, the Caribbean Cross Cult of Carcass, Cutler, and Cross. As well as the Bivens crew with Piper Niven... Omos and Veer Mahan. That was the big, big blow-off angle for that season of my wrestling academia. Uh, Path of the Dragon retained against Ichiban, which is Suzuki and Shinsuke. Randy on an edge against the Imperium. Sort of just brewed in the background. Because um, I had nothing for either of them to do, and that felt like a, a cool match to do. Um, Drew McIntyre against Bray Wyatt. Um, had been brewing for months. Bray had debuted the new character at the Royal Rumble. And it was, it, it was called the Wyatt Six, but there were seven of them. And then it was obviously revealed that the one who was the odd man out was Bray Wyatt. And they kicked him out. And that was going to lead to a big match at SummerSlam at, down the line, which obviously didn't end up happening. Because I had to cut the Bray Wyatt stuff short. Um, EO against Kyrie. Eo wins that match. She's now called Eo Sky. She, I felt bringing her back and doing the heel turn and the whole, you know, new gimmick felt like the right time to rename her. Rey Mysterio. Uh, it was title versus career, I believe, or title versus mask, one or the other. And Rey wins the Cruiserweight Championship back from his son Dominic. Uh, Charlotte beats Nova Nebula. So this was the result. I was like, okay, this is gonna piss some people off. Um, so Charlotte had banned. Um, the Queen's Queen's Court, they were called, yeah, Danny Jordan, Aaliyah, and Skylar from ringside. But instead of the Queen's Court, a new trio um, called the Royal Dynasty debuted, which is Ariana Grace, Ava Rain, and Charlotte Flair. You know, it's basically female legacy, they're all second generation, yada yada. Well, f- fifth, I guess, for <laughs> Ava, but yeah. Uh, female legacy, you know, Charlotte beats Nova. Originally, Nova was going to get her win back at Money in the Bank and win that out there, but she got pregnant, so she didn't. Carmelo Hayes defeated John Cena. And in the main event, Cody Rhodes finishes the story. He beats Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins a triple threat. We then get to the last year, finally. We've been fucking f- nearly four hours in. Okay. Um, Cody Rhodes, WWE Champion, Triple H introduces Batista as the new GM of Raw. And, um, yeah... With Rhodes and Flair as the champions, we announced Starcade, which is the WCW One Night Stand event. Will be happening at the end of May. And yeah, uh, Batista is the new GM. Gunter comes out. He confronts Cody Rhodes because you see there's two world champions on Raw now. So if you're watching this, you know, and you currently are up to date, and you're wondering, hey, how long have you had Gunter versus Cody planned as the main event of WrestleMania 4? Or not main event, but one of the matches of WrestleMania 40. There you go. Like, like, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. Bianca Belair's the new franchise player. Uh, she's cooking in the background with her wishes. And she ends up in a feud with Florence, which sort of, like, takes Florence to the next level. We get part of the Dragon versus My Wrestling Academia, the biggest match I've ever done, because, you know, it's, holy shit, it's the two greatest teams in the history of Challenge Run. Bobby Fish, he's doing a new gimmick where he says where's the lie a lot after the UE broke up. And yeah, he, he doesn't last around for much longer because, you know, again, it's a, it's a meme gimmick with a, with a short shelf life. 
but he was funny for the time he lasted. Then the main event, Imperium faced Cody, Edge, and Randy. Randy on RKO's Cody Rhodes to set up the first offense of Backlash. On SmackDown, um, we have the... No, wait, the draft is... When is the draft? Um, is this the draft? Um, we have one of these shows of the draft. We have the draft coming up. And, no, it's on, yeah, it's on week four. And currently, there's no world champion on, on SmackDown. So, you know, that's probably got to be addressed. Candice is the women's world, the, the SmackDown women's champion. Uh, she's set to defend the belt against um, Utami at Judgment Day. Because Bailey and the rest of Damage Control are busy with Asuka. Because Asuka took down Dakota. And she is now, you know, on a quest to take down all of Damage Control. But somewhere along the time, Pete Dunne is one of the men who's drafted to SmackDown. So Pete Dunne ends up on SmackDown. And he's like, oh, you like, there's like no world champion over here in it. And then we get Pete Dunne against Gunther. Gunther is drafted to Raw. So, you know, both world champions are on Raw. And then on the, the go-home show, the Backlash, Pete Dunne and Gunther have their match for the title on SmackDown. Pete Dunne pins Gunther and takes the World Heavyweight Championship. But Carmelo Hayes immediately catches it on him and takes the belt. So Carmelo Hayes is now the World Heavyweight Champion. And, you know, Cody's the WWE Champion on Raw. Backlash... The Mexicals have a shot at the belts. This is in Puerto Rico, obviously. Uh, yeah. The Mexicals came back for a one-year run, because I thought it would be funny. Uh, yeah. Uh, Bianca Belair retain oh, doesn't retain anything. She beats Florence in a singles match. Now, Florence shakes her hand after the match. She goes babyface here, basically. Gable retains against Andrade. Path of the Dragon face Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong. Roxy Perez and Cora Jade have a rematch for the Liberty Championship, and then Asuka, of course, attacks Cora after the match because damage control. Uh, Damian Priest and Dolph Ziggler of the Grand Jury team up to face Logan Paul and KSI in Puerto Rico, of course. Gotta get Logan Paul on there. Uh, the the Colognes beat up pretty deadly in Tyler Breeze. Uh, Charlotte Flair retains in a four-way against Nova Nebula, Rhea Ripley, and Sasha Banks. Bad Bunny and Rey Mysterio beat Anthony Nice and Dominic Mysterio. Gunther beats Edge and Cody Rose defeats Randy Orton. Uh, yeah, Judgment Day. Also, uh, I've mentioned the Women's Championship shit going into Judgment Day. More importantly, Judgment Day serves as the blow-off of the Seth Rollins arc. Everything we've been building up to for nearly two years now comes down to this. It's Seth, Solo, and Jacob against Roman Reigns and the Usos inside a Hell in a Cell match where the losers will be banned for life from SmackDown. Well, not for life, but they're banned from SmackDown. They've got to leave SmackDown, basically, is my point. And then I get to Judgment Day itself. Uh, Tiffany Stratton and Mariah May are here now. They beat DKE in a pre show. Uh, Karrion Cross segment here is he's feuding with the newly called up D'Angelo family. They're feuding with the Karrion Cross cult. And they have a Fool's Count Anywhere match on this show, which is. Similar to the, the, the Luke Carpo Dean Ambrose match where it starts the show and then they like leave the arena and then we cut we start cutting back to it for about the night, like shots of them fighting in different places. And then eventually they kill off like they shoot kill. Well not shoot kill, but like kayfabe kill. Um carrying Carcass and Cutler because they their contracts came up and I let them both go. So they're 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 gone. Carrying Cross has lost his coll. But yes. <laughs> and then Asuka beats Bailey as the final member of Damage Control for her to beat. Uh, Brian and Cesaro retain against the Aussie Open, who are now on SmackDown. Uh, Scott Steiner, right? Um, I had a seg I had a challenge, a forfeit to bring a sixty-year-old back for a full-time run. Uh, Scott Steiner was that guy. He was, you know, protective of his own, of, his, of his nephew, and he was like, "If you're gonna be, if Keith Lee's gonna be your partner, you know, he's out of shape and he needs to get into better shape." Keith Lee fought Scott Steiner, he beat him, and then Bron Breaker turned on Keith, took him out, and aligned with his uncle. Uh, Tatum and Ivy won the tag team titles from Live for Battle. Candice retained against Utami. You know, seems like a throwaway match, but that, that leads to a lot. Uh, Swer <laughs> Swerve Scott and Rick Ross defeat Matt Riddle and Snoop Dogg. I'll provide no more context to that. Um, yeah, Kyrie and EO have their second match. And Kyrie gets her win back, so it's now one apiece between them. Melo retains against Pete Dunne. Then in the main event, 
Seth has Roman handcuffed up against the ropes. He stomps Jey Uso and he pins him. And finally, he's finally at ease. Roman Reigns is gone from SmackDown. And the bloodline are out of his hair. And that's the end of that. That's that chapter closed. And then get a quick, you know, build to Starcade. Uh, Cody enters the throne to give a feud with um the Jeff, the new Jeff Jarrett group. Um, it's Jarrett Corbin. Um, the get the Good Brothers have have turned on uh Adrian Finn to join Jeff Jarrett because you know they also love securing the bag. And then of course Cameron Grimes is there because he's got a lot of money. So that that group, this is a new Monster of the Week faction formed specifically for war games at the um Starcade show. And, you know, it's obviously it's Cody, AJ, and Finn, naturally. And then Adam Cole, he wants to try and join the group because he used to be in Bullet Club too, you see. And Drew McIntyre is also there because he's just been friends of Cody Rhodes up until this point. So that ends up being the team leading into War Games. This is also when we change the belts. They're no longer the Raw and SmackDown Women's title, also the WWE Women's and Women's World Championships, like real life. And yeah, Starcade is the WCW... Um, one night stand show. So we saw, of course, with Rain Hooventud for the Cruiserweight title. You didn't get much more WCW than that. And then scripts took aim at the Cruiserweight Championship. Uh, War Games for the women was Next Gen, who I haven't spoken about at all. Uh, they debuted on the Heat after WrestleMania. Uh, what they are, are, I did a Next Gen Cup on Heat, like late last year, at the start of the year. That was like the winner of this gets a, a contract with the Heat brand and gets a spot in the Royal Rumble. Uh, Tracy Sharrow won that. And these are five members of that tournament, basically. They're all regens created by the game. And yeah. Um, the reason why they sort of cooled off is because I realized to go all the way on them. I sort of like have to, you know, have them beat everybody. And I felt weird doing that with regens so quickly. So, like, that's why they've sort of vanished. They haven't even really been on the show over the last few months. But that's why. Because I'm like, I don't know how far... I, I don't, I don't, I'm always worried, like, how much to commit to, like, fake characters. You know, if you're, if you're this far in and you're still listening to this, then do let me know. But, yeah. Anyway, yes. Uh, Candice LeRae then retained against Liv Morgan. And that led to, you know, a, a triple threat match being set for the next pay-per-view. Karrion Cross against Goldberg. Carrion broke your hero's heart. You know, nothing personal, kid. He was actually played by Babatunde because I didn't have Goldberg under contract. But yes. <laughs> um, Tame and Ivy defeat Aoi Maikara and Miko Saamura to retain the women's tag titles. Uh, Path of the Dragon beat the Cyclone. Charlotte Flair defeats Danny Jordan, obviously her former understudy. And yeah. Nova Nebula returned to help this. That was to set up the rematch between Charlotte and Nova at Money in the Bank, which Nova was going to win the championship in, but then she gets pregnant and doesn't end up getting the match at Money in the Bank. But Charlotte has to drop at Money in the Bank, so that's how we get an accidental Sasha Banks title run. Anyway, uh, Hulk Hogan, he'd entered the My Wrestling Academia verse. So they, they'd wandered into a dark cave, which was held by the Dark Father, who was, of course, Father James Mitchell. And he wanted to, you know, kill him and take the pendant for his own selfish gain, like Joe Gacy did. And he possessed the spirit of Saray, Manny, and Dio, hence they're called Dark Saray, and them. And then it was Carland and Sensei had to find help. They said Joe Hendry's name, he appeared. And then Hulk Hogan was the man who came to the aid. And then they ended up freeing their friends. Uh, Bronson Steiner. He'd officially been renamed here after reunited, after United with his uncle. And we just get a quick Steiner squash match on this WCW pay-per-view. And then in the main event, the Cody crew defeats Planet Jarrett. And then, of course, that son of a bitch, Adam Cole, locks the steel cage after McIntyre, AJ, and Finn have left. And he beats up Cody. That damned snake setting up money in the bank, which will be Cody Rhodes defending against Adam Cole, baby. And, yeah. Um, in the build to money in the bank... Bianca Belair had used her first wish and her first wish was to get Montez Ford a qualifying match for um, Money in the Bank not herself, she wanted to get it for Tez because her and Tez are sort of like 
become aligned on, on SmackDown. So, yeah. And he failed. He lost to Shinsuke Nakamura. And they were on Raw, actually, yeah. He lost to Shinsuke. So he, he fumbled. And he got gifted the opportunity by his wife, and he failed it. So then we then get to Money in the Bank, which happened at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Um, <laughs> at the show itself, Bianca Belair comes out and just wishes for him to be added to the match. And obviously she can do that because she's got those wishes. And Montez Ford, he enters the match late and wins the Money in the Bank. So Montez Ford is Mr. Money in the Bank. And this is obviously all, you know, a slow heel turn for both him and Bianca. Uh, Pete Dunne wins the US star from Swerve. Sasha Banks wins the WWE Women's Championship from Charlotte. Uh, damage Control. Um, Dakota had returned after the Asuka stuff. And she was like sort of in a baby face role. And Bailey and Cora seemed to be like... Well, just Bailey specifically, actually. Cora hadn't really been about. But yeah, Bailey was here hyping her up. And, you know, wanting her to win Money in the Bank. You know, to go on and win it. AJ and Finn... Took the Raw Tag Team titles home against Angel and Humberto. No, oh, Humberto and Zergis even. Gaz and Hassan and the Fritz brothers. Sheamus. He'd been beefing with Chad Gable for a while on Raw. Gable had been cheating to win him a couple of times. This was do or die. His last chance to become Intercontinental Champion. And he did it. Sheamus finally captured that last title. In front of the London crowd. Io and Kyrie had a weaponized cage match. To blow off their feud which Io won. Uh, then Montez Ford and Bianca Belair left to, you know, put it in people's heads that Bianca wasn't going to wish for herself to be in this Money in the Bank ladder match. And Florence won it. So, yeah. Uh, her and Julia were the final two on the ramp, on, on the ladder, by the way, and she knocked Julia off to win. Important, though. Uh, Mello retains against Seth. Not really anything important there. Um, he just, just, just the first defense against Seth Rollins. He, he beat him. Uh, Candice LeRae defeats Sheeta and Liv. Then the main event, uh, Cody Rose defeats Adam Cole. And then Drew McIntyre comes to the aid of Cody and helps him fight off the Paragon. We then start the build towards King of the Ring and, Vol and Evolution. Uh, the King of the Ring this year was held in Rome. And the main event on the Raw side was Cody Rhodes against Alistair Black. And on the SmackDown side, it was Carmelo Hayes in a four-way with... Dolph Ziggler, Ilya Dragunov, and was it Damian Priest? Yes. Okay. And also somewhere during here, right, we had a, leg a quote-unquote Legends Night. And it was filled with... Uh, it was for Alexa. Alexa was hosting Legends Night, trying to get her job back because Batista was the GM, and she was like, okay, I'll give you one more shot to get your job back, host a fun Legends Night. And it was terrible. Um, she brought out, like, Heidenreich and Snitsky and people like that. And Blue Kane was there. And it was it was, it was was a fun time, but... Unfortunately for Alexa, it didn't end well. And, yeah. We haven't seen her since. And, um... Yeah, we go to, um, King of the Ring. And we see... Randy Orton against Logan Paul is the Raw semi-final. And LA Knight and Seth Rollins is the SmackDown semi-final. So the King of the Ring final is Randy Orton against LA Knight. Vinci beats Christian because, you know, we were in Italy. I gave Vinci a singles match. And then Edge returns because he's still beefing with the Imperium. Because Gunnar for Edge because Edge was beefing with um, Vinci and Kaiser at WrestleMania. And then Gunther fought him at Backlash and basically killed him off. Like, he beat the fuck out of him. This is his return. And it's setting up the brood against Imperium for, for um, SummerSlam. Oh yeah, Imperium, by the way, are now back like in full. I know that when he was in the Real Coalition, he wasn't with Imperium. Um, when he left, he sort of became friendly with Ludwig and Vinci, because Vinci was caught up in the Rumble. So yeah, now Imperium's now a thing on the main. Um, AJ and Finn now dubbed the OG leaders, defeat Humberto and Zergis. Uh, Bray Wyatt and Bobby Fish, this was actually Bray Wyatt's last match. And last angle. Uh, Bobby Fish was ranting about... He was doing the old John Cena Miz thing, where, like, he was claiming he beat Bray Wyatt by forfeit in all these matches, but then Bray did actually show up and squashed him quickly on the pay-per-view. Again, that was his last match. Uh, Bronson, Steiner, and Scott Steiner team up against Keefley and Santino. Uh, Keefley to find a mystery partner for the show. Being it, we're in Rome. He brought out Santino. They won. 
and Bronson then beat up his own uncle. Uh, LA Knight defeats Randy Orton to win the King of the Ring, setting him up for a match with Carmelo Hayes for the world title at at SummerSlam. Uh, Cody Rhodes defeats Alistair Black to retain the WWE Championship. And then in the main event, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn defeat um, Daniel Bryan and Cesaro to win the SmackDown tag titles. Now, this was interesting because during the build to this, Paul Heyman had been speaking to Cesaro on the side about something. And Bryan was, like, getting all, like, sus. It turns out what Heyman was scheming was the rebirth of ECW. And we then... Because I had to be... I was challenged to bring back a third brand. It was ECW specifically. So, yeah, Heyman has re- rebirthed ECW. And Cesaro, I guess, is going to be on the brand. Then get to Evolution. Vive la Levouchon, which was in Paris. And um, the Raw Queen of the Ring fin- semi-final once again was Asuka and Liv. And then Bianca and Shayna was the SmackDown. No, other way around. Asuka and Liv was the SmackDown one. Bianca and Shayna was the Raw one. So yeah, the, the final of Queen of the Ring was Bianca Belair against Asuka. Ivy and Tatum then retained against um, Tam and Mina of J-Flow. Uh, Nikki Cross, who won the tag team battle royal on the pre-show, re-emerged alongside her old friend Alexa Bliss, who'd gone insane like, um, after she lost her job as the GM, she was, like, coerced by Joe Gacy, who, like, drove her insane. And her and Nikki took took aim and revenge on all the people who wronged them and who else has wronged them more than Tim and Ivy. So, yeah. Uh, Florence defeated Ruby Riot in a quick match that just existed to get him on the show. AJ had turned on Roxy Perez. Um, they were both in Money in the Bank. And they sort of, like, had beef in that match. And then AJ betrayed her, said she was ungrateful and all that shit. And then she ended up taking that Liberty Championship from her, debuting her own new group with her new protégés who are, you know, respectful of her and want her advice, that being Kelsey Cook and Emma Reporter. Uh, Sasha and Kyrie and Rhea. That was originally going to be Sasha versus Julia. Julia got hurt. So then it became that as a triple threat match. Um, Money in the Bank also, what happened in the Women's Money in the Bank ladder match was Dakota was going to win it, Bailey appeared, tipped her off the ladder, turning heel, uh, she was already a heel really, but basically that was turning to cut a face, and then um, Bailey crossed up the match, and they had a singles match here which ended to a no contest because Cora Jade got involved, so we were going to get the damage control triple threat at SummerSlam. <coughs> Becky returned at Evolution for the second time in her career. Um, punching Tiffany Strand in the face. Um, Royal Dynasty defeated the former Queen's Court in a six-woman tag. Asuka to win Queen of the Ring, beating Bianca. Then the main event, Io, who fresh off a win over Kyrie and winning that feud, beats Candice to win the women's world title. And then Asuka immediately comes out and makes it official that in Tokyo, at SummerSlam, it will be Io Sky against Asuka. You know, remember all those all those hours ago when I talked about that match getting a 78 in the year's debut uh, Evolution? Yeah. We're now about to see the culmination of that. Then the post-show angle, um, Candice was attacked by the next-gen girls. Uh, yeah. And then heading into SummerSlam, we did Raw in MSG. The night after the pay-per-views. And the main event was going to be Finn and AJ against Cody and Drew for the tag titles. Uh... Didn't go well for Cody. Once again, he loses in MSG, and Drew McIntyre turns heel and beats him up. So, yeah. We then set up Cody versus Drew for the WWE Championship at SummerSlam. Um, yeah. Also, important to note for SummerSlam is that Seth Rollins and Daniel Bryan on the SmackDown side had nothing to do. And Adam Pearce had been speaking of Triple H, and he said, I've got a great idea. It involves both of you. And that ended up being the we were going to borrow New Japan guys for SummerSlam because it was in the Tokyo Dome. So, Brian was going to wrestle Okada on night one, and then Seth was going to wrestle Osprey on night two. So, yeah, that, that's what they ended up doing. And I think through osmosis, most of the SummerSlam card has been built up, like, just through these previous, like, pay views that I've been speaking about. So, let's skip straight ahead to Tokyo at SummerSlam. Um, there was a pre show battle royal, a Hanakamura Memorial Battle Royal won by Ali Maikawa. Uh, Sensei defeated Scripps for the Cruiserweight title. Scripps had become the monster of the week for My Wrestling Academia. Uh, Sensei won the Cruiserweight title. 
And yeah. Uh, Rhea Ripley and Becky unsanctioned. So, what what happened is that um, Becky had come back, and obviously the, when when we left off, when we last saw Becky, she lost in that Iron Woman match to Rhea, and like Rhea Ripley didn't want to face Becky. She's like Becky, Becky, you're not you're not good enough to get straight back into the ring with me. You know you've you've been gone for a year and a half. So it was an unsanctioned match because Rhea was said she was going to beat her ass so bad. And she did. Like, she destroyed Becky in this match. <laughs> and, yeah. Like, squashed her to open up the show. US title five-way. Pete Dunne, Angelo Dawkins, Buster Gates, The Miz, and Nathan Fraser. Uh, Pete Dunne retained. Alexa and Nikki win the women's tag titles from Tatum and Ivy. Uh, Imperium defeat the Brood. Um, throughout the build to this, it was like, Edge was like, okay, I know a guy, you know a guy, we both know the guy. But Christian had another guy that he was like, hey, he'd be a good fit for the spot. And Christian's other guy was Dijak. And then Dijak and Christian turn on Edge. And we end up getting Christian as he is now. <laughs> Bronson Steiner and Keith Lee in a strap match. Uh, yeah. Bronson Steiner puts Keith Lee down in the strap match. Uh, Julia versus Liv Morgan was... Um, because Julia, when she got injured, was the number one contender for the women's championship held by um, Charlotte. Or Sasha, even. Um... She'd immediately been given, you know, a bye into the ECW Women's Championship match at SummerSlam. And then Liv had to win a four-way to get there, which she did on the first ECW show. And yeah, so then it was Julia and Liv for the Women's World t- or the ECW Women's title. And then also, um, Damian Priest had kicked Dolph Ziggler out of the Grand Jury. And um, the final of the ECW World title tournament was Damian Priest against Dolph Ziggler. So yeah. That's how that came to be. Uh, Julia won the Liv Morgan. She didn't win the Liv Morgan. She beat Liv Morgan to win the ECW Women's World title. First and still to this day only ECW Women's title holder. Um, OG leaders against DIY in the Cyclone and Triple Threat. Yeah. Banger. Uh, Brock Lesnar defeated Ilya Dragunov. You know, Ilya. He's being, he called himself the, you know, the toughest man in on SmackDown. Brock Lesnar disagreed. They had a fucking absolute banger. And I'm so fucking annoyed at Brock Lesnar in real life for being who he is that I don't get to finish this story because I don't want to book him anymore. Um, anyway. Um, LA Extreme was a new faction. Um, somewhere between here we bought AAA. And Conan obviously owns AAA and like runs AAA. And like we had a new Lucha Heel group. Rouge, Santos Escobar, Jorge Santana, and Dominic was the the crew against the LWO, who was um, Rey Mysterio absorbing the former Legado de la Sombra. So it's him, Andrade, Cruz, and Joaquin. And then um, Joaquin while was injured, so Carlito made his return. And then that was the match here. Losing group had to disband, and it was the LWO who went their own. They went their separate ways. Then got the final countdown. Daniel Bryan kicked Okada in the dick. He turned heel and cheated to beat him. Um, head cannon was that they had a rematch in, at Wrestle Kingdom that Okada won, but I couldn't do that in the TW, so yeah, just had to pretend. Then we did give Okada a nice segment. Where he beat up pretty deadly afterwards, though, so it's funny. Um, LA Knight and Montez Ford, or LA and Carmelo Hayes even, doesn't have a winner. Tez runs in, he cashes in money in the bank and wins the World Heavyweight Championship. And then in the main event, Drew McIntyre cheats to beat Cody Rhodes to take his WWE Championship. With Drew saying, you know, I finished your story first. Your story's my story because I left and came back and won the world title in the main event at WrestleMania. You know, you're taking credit for all my shit. And then, yeah, I guess he proved him right. Then head to Night 2. Which has Death From Above defending the trio championships against three guys from NXT Japan. And then Bobby Lashley won the Antonio Inoki Memorial Battle Royal. And then, so, what had happened here was, this was the time in real life when John Cena was coming back for, you know, a run during the strike. So, um, he was sort of just, he made an appearance. He sort of, like, just popped up for no reason. And then Montez Ford and Bianca Belair were there. They were running him down. They were heels and shit. Because Tez had been beefing with Shinsuke for a while. And they had a match set for tonight for the Money in the Bank briefcase, but the Money in the Bank briefcase obviously doesn't exist anymore because Montez Ford cashed it in. So instead, 
Um, that match would be a world title match, and Tez retained. Uh, Muta spoke with Asuka, you know, talking about special mist or whatever, giving Asuka special mist. Uh, Dakota Kai won the damage control triple threat. Um, John Cena against uh, talked to Hit Row backstage. Um, he signed one of Top Dollar's albums or whatever, which pissed Swerve off, you know. That this small segment led to the dissolution of Hit Row and the rise of Swerve. So it's fine. Uh, Karen Owens and Sami Zayn retained against Sozoko and Jacob Fatu. Uh, Roxy wins the title back from AJ. Sheamus defeats Randy Orton and Dudley Davis in a triple threat match to retain the IC title. Next gen, Kathy Cole, Ray Dutero, Nene Arazawa, Lucy Stryker, and Samantha Riggs. Uh, they beat Candice LeRae, Bianca Belair, Florence, Killer Kelly, and Lyra. And obviously they attacked Candice. Uh, these these three helped uh, align with Candice. Bianca Belair was like their chosen fifth member. And then she obviously, being a dickhead now, was like, oh, I want to be the leader. And like her and Candice kept bopping, butting heads. And then after the match, they started a fight. So yeah, if you've forgotten, if, you've been, if you're up to date and you've forgotten, that is, that is indeed where the issues between Candice and Bianca, which are still ongoing as we speak, started. <laughs> All the way back at SummerSlam. Uh, yeah. And then Heyman introduces the new ECW world title. Dolph Ziggler wins it. He's the inaugural new champion. Sasha retains against Kyrie and Charlotte in a triple threat. Um, Zergis against Humberto because Zergis had betrayed Humberto at some point. And yeah, he won at SummerSlam. Um, I've then realized my issue. I thought breaking up Zergis and Path of the Dragon would be cool, but now I've realized I've just sat with Heel Luchasaurus on my roster doing nothing. And that's Heel Luchasaurus on my roster, which is, you know, Heel Luchasaurus. Uh, and then, yeah, Osprey beats Seth. A, be- a very bad, start of a very, very bad few months for Seth. Which culminates at the Royal Rumble, which we'll get to. Ah, of course, how can I forget about this? The entire reason why Heyman re- recreated ECW. Well, it's because it's a place for the bloodline to sit and do their shit. Because they got banned from SmackDown. And, you know, he's the face of ECW. Warden disagreed. Because he beat Brock Lesnar and after all. And he's sick and badass and cool. And then Roman Reigns beat him. Thanks to bloodline shenanigans. But of course Roman is mad at Jay. Because Jay was the one who got beat back at Judgment Day. Then the main event. We got our first 100 rated match. Io defeats Asuka to retain the Women's Championship. Through interference by Yutami. Because Yutami, again, starting with her defeat to Candice... Had started really having some self doubt issues. She got eliminated in the first round of the Queen of the Ring to Asuka, actually. And then there was a segment backstage where Io and Kami were talking to her backstage. She was like looking at herself in a mirror. And she sort of, they got into her head. And she joins a group which would later go on to be known as Queendom. You may have heard of them. Um, Smackdown um, is when Tegan Knox and Piper Nevin also join the group. They sort of just are added. Like, I don't think that's... I think it's fine. Piper Niven does have history, by the way, because she was in the the Queen's Crest stable in Stardom, which Queendom is based off. So, you know, Antigua Knox is just her friend. So, yeah. Uh, but that sets up the... the rest of the year, you know. Still to this day, the entire thing that SmackDown is built based around is Queendom. Right. With that up to date now at this point. Four, four hours and four and a quarter hours in. Anyway, um, Raw is setting up um, a four way for Unforgiven with Drew McIntyre defending against Cody Rhodes, Finn Balor, and AJ Styles. And um, Christian is aligned with Die Jack. Christian's talking about dead fathers. You know, he calls Rey Mysterio a shit dad because he is. And yeah. And their, their raw build to run for given is pretty uh, quiet, other than that. Uh, Smackdown, on the other hand, you know, other than the Queendom stuff, still has the beef with Candice and Bianca. They're going to have a match at um, No Mercy, as are Asuka and Utami High Shister. And Kamado Hayes is going to defend against LA Knight and Montez Ford in a triple threat match, but this time it's going to be, you know, sanctioned and announced. It's going to be that match. Like, not accidentally and yes uh, Bronson Steiner 
and Keith Lee also going to have a match at No Mercy. Loser leaves WWE. On ECW, they got Bloodline shit going on. Uh, Dolph Ziggler's the champion. Roman Reigns is, you know, lurking. And he wants Jay to take care of Warden. Warden beats up Jay. You know, they're feuding with Warden. They want Dolph Ziggler's belt. And it is set up that at High Voltage, which is the first ECW-branded pay-per-view, uh, Roman Reigns will be the one to, to challenge Dolph Ziggler for the, for the ECW championship. But first, we get to Unforgiven. Let's go with this in order. And Jorge Santana is here. And he beats Chad Gable on the pre-show. Uh, Christian defeats Ray, you know, that terrible father that he is, because Christian's a good father, you see, and he's a bad father. Uh, the blue collar boys angle with Mackie and the uh, Maximil models. Um, Otis and Brooks Jensen have been a tag team for like a year. And the Maximil models are um, Tonya Breeze, who is Maxine Dupree, the sister of Tyler Breeze. And pretty deadly. Because Tyler Breeze had come and gone from the. He'd left the group because, you know, he's still insane. And, yeah. And they were trying to recruit Otis as their newest male model. And they were, like, leaving pamphlets in his room and shit. And, like, Mackie was offended because she was there to count her out, Tonya. And there, that was the whole angle. They were going to have a match of Pretty Deadly tonight on this show. And, yeah. The evil Alexa and Nikki Cross defeat a team from each brand. Um, Tatum and Ivy, DKE, who is members of Chase U on SmackDown, and um, Tusk Attraction from ECW to retain the championship. Sheamus defeats Dominic to retain the IC title. Imperium, um, when did they win? Oh, they won the Raw Tag Team titles on Raw because AJ and Finn had them and they were getting the world title match. So yeah, Imperium became the Raw Tag Team champions and they defended them against the New Day on this show. And also on this show, another important note... Gunther and Xavier Woods was Gun was Xavier Woods' first like proper test as like a singles guy, like his first time stepping into the ring with like a, a a top guy. And yeah, he came up short, but he did put in a hell of an effort. Uh, Roxy Perez defeats Kyrie Sane to retain the Liberty Championship. They ended up performing a bit of a friendship after that. Uh, match male models: Kit Wilson, Elton Prince, and Tanya Breeze defeat the Blue Collar Boys and Mackie. Because it turns out that Brooks Jensen was the one who joins the group instead of Otis. So he turns on Otis and he's now in the Maximal models. Rhea Ripley defeats Sasha Banks to win the Women's Championship. And Drew McIntyre retains in the main event in a four-way, pinning AJ Styles because Christian attacks Cody Rhodes. Uh, we then go to No Mercy. No Mercy sees... Um, a for uh, an alliance of John Cena, Florence, Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn against Hit Row. Swerve had been getting frustrated with his group by this point because they kept losing. I think they had a tag team title shot and they lost to Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. And he was getting frustrated. You know, John Cena was pissing him off as well. And then Lord Brando, Bando, who is um, Prince Nana, um, came out and Swerve left with him and left Hit, Hit Row laying in the ring. Uh, what was the referee? Oh yeah, right. Um, on the Smackdown before No Mercy Asuka and Io had a rematch from SummerSlam and Asuka won this one um, because there was like some I can't remember exactly what it was but there was something wrong with the refereeing like Cammy and Io blamed the referee for it so she's backstage with the referee like hey you know you better not fuck up tonight and the head of um, Io and Dakota is the women's title match um, Candice and Bianca go to a DQ um on pay per view, which is a bit weird. Chikara Jackson and Oromensa have joined up with Montez Ford and Bianca Belair as members of the my version of the way, basically. Um, big problem, Cass, who's in the D'Angelo family, beats Omos in a giant's off. And then Bianca and Chikara sort of get into it with the with the um, Queendom girls. The plant sees that they also don't like them. Brian and Ilya just have a fucking banger. That, that was basically the story for the match, is they're going to have a banger. And also, because um on SmackDown, Brian had beat up a young boy by the name of Miles Bourne, wherever that is. Uh, yeah, Brian had a beat, he beat, he, like, he attacked, he's like, he had a match with him and he beat him up. Like, yeah, aggressively. But that was tough love, as he says, and Miles Bourne was actually a student of Brian's, and he joins up with Daniel Bryan. 
Asuka beats Utami. Uh, Seth Rollins then gets into a feud with the Revolution. Because the Revolution, you know, they remember, you know, Seth was the one who called upon them in more games. And this was them getting their revenge on Seth for, like, leaving them out to dry. And then Buster would then go on to go film a movie after, sh shortly after this. So they don't really do much else after this big win because, you know, the game fucked me. Uh, Bronson Steiner beats Keith Lee in I Quit match. So Keith Lee's gone from WWE, but he will pop back up because th this was an actual write-off. But I then found a funny role for him. So he immediately came back. Uh, Tez wins the triple threat match. And then in the main event, there's some referee fuckery. Um, Io brings out her sister Mio Shirai as the crooked referee for Queendom to fuck Dakota Kai over. And then, you know, we get this brawl between all these women who all hate Queendom. So that, because that sets up Cyber Sunday, which is the next pay-per-view after High Voltage, where you can vote on Asuka, Dakota, or Bianca to face Io for the belt. And we get to, oh, by the way, there's a May Young classic going on in the background of all this, but it's it just exists to get Jade Cargill over. Uh, she debuted at SummerSlam after Roxy's match, and the winner of this gets a Liberty title match, so she won it. That, that That's all you need to know from the May Young classic, is that it exists to get Jade Cargill over. And that she won it. Anyway, High Voltage crowns the new ECW Tag Team Champions as Damon Kemp and Ronnie Hughes. Um, of the Hurt Business. Ronnie Hughes, the former NXT champion, uh, Regen, and Damon Kemp are both members of the Hurt Business. They beat Cedric and Ali to win the tag titles. Roxy Perez defeats Aoi Maikawa of Ichiban and Gigi Dolan to retain the Women's Liberty title. Uh, Tekkers, which is a new group featuring Zack Sabre Jr. and the Grizzle Jung veterans, beat Kyle O'Reilly, Roderick Strong, and Dudley Davis. Uh, Blair Davenport beat Shotzi Blackheart in an Extreme Rules match. Uh, the Usos have a quick meeting backstage, you know, for the main event tonight. Braun Strowman. Um, so, well, okay, so there's a lot I've missed on ECW, anyway. Uh, Matt Cardona came back. I was hyping these, hyping these videos up for like 10 weeks, saying that the greatest return in the history of WWE is going to take place. It was for Matt Cardona. And he brought back the television championship with him because um, he won it on the Indies. That was a whole gimmick. He beat Rhino and he won it on the Indies. And then Braun Strowman came back. He was Joe Hendry's tag team partner. Because, you know, the whole the whole joke was, you know, they were saying that he had all brains and no brawn or no brains and all brawn or whatever. And then he made them say brawn and then Braun's music hit. You know, similar to the Joe Hendry bit. And then he took the belt from Matt Cardona. Uh Adam Cole and Nakamura. These the thing with ECW is most of these are just like two week feuds. Just to pay a few matches. ECW is a very simple show to book. There's far less lore outside of the bloodline on this brand. Uh, Julia beat Sheeda to retain the ECW Women's title. And in the main event, Dolph Ziggler retained over Roman Reigns because we do the Night of Champions finish where the Usos betrayed the bloodline and kick Roman Reigns in the face. I think the Usos did end up getting fired, like, shortly after that. Like, they were gone. Heyman wasn't having them stick around. Then also on the Halloween show, um, Soraya and Zelina Vega of My Wrestling Academia had won the tag team championships. They'd recruited Zelina to... Who were they fighting off when they had to recruit Zelina? I can't remember, but Zelina joined the group, basically. And um, Sensei was the Cruiserweight champion, and the, the whole thing was, you know, they're, they're winning a lot now. Now Sensei's got this championship, but also the pendant had been stolen. Again. Because it's a MacGuffin. Um, um, then on SmackDown leading into this, um, Swerve held a State of Hit Row like address where um, he kicked out Top Dollar and Ashanti Adonis and replaced them with Bronco Nima and Lucian Price. So he's now got the Mogul affiliates instead of Hit Row. And then that led to Cyber Sunday where they fought out the mud of, yeah. Mughal affiliates on the pre-show. Christian and Cody, their feud was exactly what you'd think it would be. Like, think about current Christian Cage and Cody Rhodes. Think about what they feud over. It was exactly that. <laughs> and Cyber Sunday vote was either a Texas Bull Rope match, a Coffin match, which popped me, but I probably knew wasn't going to win, and uh, No Holds Barred match, and then Cody won it. Yeah, 
to end that feud. Rhea Ripley retained over Sasha Banks, uh, Otis, Mackie, Gable, and Tyler Breeze. Um, so Gable had sort of got in, involved with his old friend Otis, because they used to be in the Alpha Academy together. And then the, the beef with these guys was the match was either going to be Otis and Brooks one-on-one, Otis and Mackie against Brooks and Tonya, or all four of the Max Male models against Otis, Mackie, Gable, and his new friend Annie Agogo. But Agogo got taken out. Tyler Breeze ended up coming back to replace them against his former, his sister and his former creation. And then he won, but he's still a bit unhinged, so we don't really trust him. Uh, Drew McIntyre and Logan Paul, I rigged this poll. Um, Gunther Xavier Woods and Logan Paul. I knew Gunther wasn't allowed to get a title shot because that was the story I was telling. I didn't want Woods to get another one just yet, so, you know, I rigged it. I, I put the thing out. I was like, Logan Paul was promising him a year's worth of prime if he wins. So, yeah, then Drew McIntyre beat him. John Cena and Swerve have their issue settled. Swerve puts John Cena down. That writes him off until very, very recently. Uh, Montez Ford and Ilya Dragunov have a singles match. LA Knight's the special guest referee. LA Knight sort of like fucks it over. Not, not on purpose because he isn't really because he's a baby face. But yeah. And then in the main event, EO defeats Dakota in the cage. And you know, Candice LeRae comes back. Haven't seen her for a while. And she takes down Queen Demon diving off the cage. And we then have four and four for heading into Survivor Series, which means we have to find a fifth member for each team for War Games. Queendom recruit ECW Women's Champion Julia to their side, and um, SmackDown recruit Miss Money in the Bank Florence, which leads to SmackDown, the go-home show. Florence cashes in her briefcase for not only the women's title, but also for the advantage in War Games. And then Julia appears, revealing herself as a fine member of Team Queendom in that match, costing Florence her cash in, making her the first woman to lose a Money in the Bank cash in. And also on SmackDown, Swerve and no Swerve and no, no, no not Swerve, LA Knight and Montez Ford are going at it for the world title one last time. Uh, Oromensa of um, EST is in a shark cage, and. Yeah, it's do or die. If he loses, he doesn't get another shot. On Raw, uh, their big match is um, Drew McIntyre. Um, who the fuck was he teaming with? It was Cody, AJ, Finn, Edge. Oh, wait, no, it wasn't. It was Cody, Cody, The New Day, and Edge against... Drew McIntyre, Christian Imperium. Yeah, that was the match. Because it was in Toronto, and that was Edge's return, the first time we'd seen Edge since SummerSlam, and Christian took him out. Um, yeah. But yeah, moving on to Survivor Series. Survivor Series was a big show. Um, yeah, that, that team does win. The, the baby faces win the elimination match. Um, Christian runs away like a coward from Edge. But um, in the end, Drew McIntyre does end up pinning Xavier Woods again. Then get a triple threat for the TV title. ZSJ defeats Dudley Davis and Braun Strowman to win that title. You know, great champion he's been. Uh, Jade Cargill finally gets her women's debut title match after winning the Queen the um, Mae Young Classic. She defeats Roxy to win the title. Dijak, who is Christian's right hand of justice, he's basically his Luchasaurus. Uh, he beats Sheamus to win the IC title to finally win a belt, and of course Christian's parading around like it's his. Uh, LA Knight does win the world title for Montez Ford. Uh, Rhea Ripley squashes AJ Lee to win the women's title. Uh, Seth Rollins and Solo Sokoa had turned on each other. Solo's back with the bloodline now. Because, you know, after Seth lost to the um, the Revolution, he's won a terrible losing streak, really. Well, since the Osprey match. All the way back here. And, you know, Solo betrayed him. He thought he'd be better off with the bloodline. But of course, there is a weird segregation because Solo's on SmackDown and the rest of the bloodline are on ECW. But Solo won the US title from Pete Dunne on SmackDown here. And then Seth Rollins returned after Solo thumbed him in the mouth, setting up Survivor Series, and Solo retained against Seth Rollins. This match. This was Team Raw versus Team SmackDown. I did one brand for brand match. And the ruling of it was that, you know, whoever wins would get a well, a championship match of their choice. Um, the original lineup for Team SmackDown was 
Ilya Dragunov, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Swerve Scott, and Carmelo Hayes. And Team Raw was Randy Orton, AJ Styles, Rey Mysterio, and a blank spot. But what had happened was... Um, when Montez Ford cashed in money in the bank, Bianca Belair had wished to move him and her over to SmackDown. But by proxy of that, Raw was then owed a trade of one woman and one man from 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 SmackDown to Raw. Uh, Bailey was revealed as the woman like right away, so like she was straight over to Raw, but we never knew who the man was until now. Uh, Trick Williams was attacked backstage on one of the episodes of SmackDown when Team Raw were going to come over to invade. And then at the end of the show it was revealed that Carmelo Hayes was the man going over to Raw from SmackDown and he was on Team Raw, which meant there was an empty spot on Team SmackDown. Brock Lesnar came out and filled it and him and Ilya Dragunov were the last two standing. Meaning they both got title matches, but something tells me Brock Lesnar might not use his. Uh, yeah. This then became a triple threat match for the ECW title because Warden was sort of beefing with the Bloodline as well as Ziggler following Survivor Series, uh, following SummerSlam even, and then it ended up with a triple threat match. And Warden actually pinned Dolph Ziggler to retain the title because the Usos took out Roman, so Warden became the ECW champion. The Usos, you know, defied Heyman's orders, and yeah, ended up winning. And then in the main event, War Games. Queendom pick up the victory over the babyface team because, yeah, well, what happened here was um, Dakota had been weird since losing to EO at Survivor, uh, Cyber Sunday and then on the Go Home show there was a weird letter delivered to Candice that was like we didn't know who wrote it but like, she got it and then at the pay-per-view Dakota kicked Candice in the head which took her out, and Dakota Kai seemingly joined her arch rivals in Queendom. Moving on to the final SmackDown Bandit Pay View of the year. Um, Dakota, yeah, Dakota had been in Queendom. Now she was like the second in command of Queendom, and her entire role in the group was to basically both, not her entire role, but she did just boss everybody around. Obviously, when Tegan's in there, you know, you, you're fucking, <laughs> like, they've got history together. And then, you know, Dakota was, like, bossing everybody around. Like, she was sort of taking control of the group. Io sort of, like, she was her second in command, as I said. And Utami was the heir apparent still. Which led to Armageddon. Which led to this main event, which was a six-woman Hell in a Cell match. Um, these six, who sort of became the SmackDown Six, I dubbed them, uh, were all in a Hell in a Cell match for the Women's World title. Um, it ended with Io pinning Utami. Uh, her own stable mate. Uh, yeah. Uh, David Martin, he'd sort of become slowly more unfrenched at this point. He had a Pierre and Pistolero had a, a match just for having a good match. Kevin and Sami Zayn beat the Creeds to retain the SmackDown titles. Um, the Street Profits, um, so after Montez Ford lost, Dawkins sort of returned and yeah. He was like, ah, oh, come on fam. And then <laughs> Montez Ford, they finally got physical at um, Armageddon. Like, almost a year after they broke up. And Tez did beat him in a match there. Solo, Sokoa, Pete Dunn, Daniel Bryan, and Seth Rollins had a banger of a fatal four way for the US title. And Solo retained it. LA Knight retained against Ilya Van Swerve for the World Heavyweight Championship. Tiffany Shrine and Mariah May had a backwards, deep, a deep woods brawl with the Witches. And yeah, and the main event EO retained in that six woman hell as well. <coughs> Holiday Hell, the final ECW pay view of the year, saw Zack Sabre Jr. retain against Minoru Suzuki for the television championship. Um, that was supposed to be Buddy Murphy, but he got injured, so it couldn't be. Uh, Matt Cardona defeated Sabu. He was doing he's doing this whole thing where like he's. The King of Extreme, you know, he was the he's the best ECW star of all time. Yada yada yada. And he like yeah, he he fought Sabu, he fought the Sandman. He's currently feeding with the Dudley boys. Yeah, but he beat Sabu here. Uh Live for Battle 
here that um, Liv Morgan was supposed to face Jade Cargill for the Liberty Championship, and she'd been found attacked. And, you know, she obviously couldn't make the match, so um, Sheeta took the match in her place. Kyle O'Reilly beat Roderick Strong. Roderick Strong had sort of been a, an anchor to Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, Kyle of scoring so much high ratings. We call him the god around these parts because he was doing so well. And he kept getting blue ratings, so he was just the god of wrestling. And now he is the god. That's that's him. He beats Roderick Strong. Yeah. Um, Gigi and Jay-Z had broken up. Uh, Mandy Rose was on Raw still. And the other two members of Sucks Correction were on ECW. They sort of fell apart. I ended up with a House of Horrors match, which Gigi Dolan did win. Uh, Jade Cargill beat Sheeta to retain the Women's Liberty title. Damon Kemp and he, um, Ronnie Hughes was injured for this match, so Bobby Lashley had to fill in. To retain the tag titles. And yeah. And then Julia defeats Cora J to retain the ECW women's title. And then Roman Reigns wins the ECW television or ECW World title, sorry. Because Solo Sokoa appears and he helps Roman win. Then after the match the Usos once again appear. They take down Roman and Solo, and that's how we go off the air. And that was the last show of twenty twenty three for the entire company. So Roman Reigns is the new ECW World Champion. The, the Usos appear. Solo is there. Leading to New Year's Revolution, which is the first pay-per-view of the year. Uh, Raw exclusive. Uh, starts with Randy Orton and Carmelo Hayes. Having a, a, match, a little mini rivalry going on there. Uh, Jade Cargill defeats Bailey for the Women's Liberty Championship. Uh, Bailey at this point is sort of slowly going babyface again. Because she's had like nothing to do recently. Um, uh, Dakota and Io, they won the tag championships. Was it at this show? When did they win them? Here, yeah. They beat they beat Zelina and Saray of My Wrestling Academia for them. And uh, yeah, so they retained them against the Fierce and the Fabulous, which is Carmella and Shayna Baszler at New Year's Revolution. Dijak retained the IC title against Edge. Um, House of Black defeated DIY. This actually ended up being the breakup of DIY. Because, like, they were trying to torment Johnny Gargano. And T- Tommaso Ciampa, you know, he, can't, he, he joined the group in order to get them to stop tormenting Johnny. And then eventually he just got broken and now he's a member of the group. Uh, Rhea Ripley defeated Roxy Perez. And then in the main event, Cody recaptures the WWE Championship to become a two-time champion. Yeah, big win for the Code Man. Heading into the Royal Rumble, uh, Cody's here defending against his old friend Finn Balor. Uh, the, on the women's side, uh, Rhea is defending against Becky Lynch, who returned once again, because Becky, you know, you may know she's gone again. She came back from her um her pregnant, second pregnancy, lost to Rhea Ripley, and then you didn't see it on any of the pay-per-views because she was on heat. The entire story I was telling was that she was on heat, working from the bottom up because, you know, Batista had lost confidence in her ability because she got squashed at SummerSlam. And, yeah. And then she ended up going to film a TV role, so she sort of just said fuck off and walked out and then didn't come back until she was promised that she'd be treated like a star. She was. She got the Royal Rumble match. But then she put her career on the line for the belt at the Rumble. So that was kind of silly of her. And also on the SmackDown side, we had um, LA Knight defending again. Who is he defending against the Royal Rumble? Bronson Steiner, yeah. And um, on the women's side, Io had defended the belt against her former stablemate, Tegan Knox, who had left the group because she was being tormented and treated like shit by, you know... Both EO and specifically Dakota. But, yeah. And then get to the Rumble. Cody and Finn have a 99 raid match once again. And then... Um, cause, uh, the House of Black can then attack Finn Balor and AJ Styles. To set up a match for Elimination Chamber, which is in Dublin. Where Alistair Black would face the demon, Finn Balor. Julia retained the ECW Championship against um, Gigi Dolan. Uh, LA Knight defeated Bronson Steiner to retain the World Heavyweight title. Florence would end up winning the Women's Royal Rumble. And then, you know, 
tr- choosing to get avenge on Julia for costing her her cash in at WrestleMania. Becky wins the women's world title, beating Rhea Ripley. Um, the Usos, um, they win Bloodline Civil War. Bloodline Civil War happens at the Royal Rumble. If they win, they, they're they reinstated to ECW. If not, they go for good. They're at, I, think it was, I think the exact verbiage was erased from WWE history. Like, they'd go on Peacock and, like, fucking erase them and all that shit. And, like, nobody would ever remember the Usos. But they won, so they're back. Uh, EO beats Tegan following that turn. But then afterwards, Piper Niven does also betray Queendom and joins up with her friend Tegan Knox, setting up the main event of Elimination Chamber, which is a women's tag title match with Tegan and Piper against Io and Dakota. And then Gunther wins the 40-man Royal Rumble. But more importantly, this show was in Chicago. And certain Mr. CM Punk made his return in this Royal Rumble match. And him and Seth, they got into a thing, to put it to put it lightly. Oh, there's a lot of actually movements in this Royal Rumble to, based on um, future progression for WrestleMania. Um, the final three in the women's match were Utami, Dakota, and Florence, and then Dakota eliminated her own stablemate third, and then ended up losing, which at the time seemed silly, but we may we now know why that happened. And um. Dakota and you know, Bianca and Candice have still been going at it for many, many months. They end up eliminating each other from the Royal Rumble. Uh, Shida eliminated Liv because Liv was not entrant number two in the match. And, like, was still harboring her injury from high voltage. Or on um, Holiday Hell, even. And Shida eliminated her, like, as a precaution. Like, hey, you're not, you're not healthy. And then, in mean, the men's match, she and Punk, he came out number 40. So everyone's was 39. He go to sleep, Seth Rollins, and threw him out for a big pop. Seth then came back in and beat the fuck out of Punk, stomped him on the outside, eliminated him. And also during the match, Carmelo Hayes revealed himself that he was the attacker of Trick Williams all those months ago. He eliminated Trick, and then they got into a brawl at ringside. And yeah, you know, it was a why. And Ilya Dragunov had the greatest performance in Royal Rumble history as well. Moving on to Elimination Chamber, the final stop on the road to WrestleMania, and the final pay of view as it currently stands. Um, so, um, Orange Cassidy had debuted at number two in the Royal Rumble. Dominic was number one, Cassidy was number two, and, you know, Dominic's been quote-unquote best friends with Grayson Waller for a while, and then this was just a thrown-together six-man tag to get Sheamus on the card in Dublin, and they win, yeah. There's an ECW Women's Championship Elimination Chamber. Julia defeats Blair Davenport, Hikaru Shida, Lyra Valkyria, Ruby Riot, and Sonya Deville to retain the belt. Um, Finn Balor the Demon fights off Valister Black. He wins, but then after the match, House of Black beat him up, rub his face paint off and shit, and like, expose the man under the demon or whatever. And they're still outnumbered. Uh, WrestleMania is going to be Finn and AJ and a partner, a third partner, Against the House of Black. We don't know who the third partner is. Uh, Logan Paul and KSI versus Slim Shanky and R-Truth. Well, last time you saw the Raw Tag Titles, I pay a view, um, Imperium had them. It was on the Christmas Smackdown. Slim Shanky and R-Truth won the Raw Tag Team Championships. And, yeah. They dropped them here to Logan Paul and KSI. Since then, Logan Paul and KSI have, you know, sort of recruited pretty deadly, unofficially. And they've taken out the rest of Titus World Records, so Truth had nobody to defend with at WrestleMania. Enter John Cena, who came to R-Truth's aid. And the WrestleMania match is John Cena and R-Truth against Logan Paul and KSI. Jade retained. She finally got that match against Liv Morgan. She retained. And um, after the match, Shida turned on Liv. Important part I didn't mention is that Shida entered herself into the Battle Royal to, to earn a shot at the ECW Women's Championship. But didn't end a live in because you know Liv had that Liberty Championship match, which sort of seemed shady, and then she did turn on Liv after the match. Becky defeats Sasha to retain the women's title. Um, Sasha and Bailey had a shot at Io and Dakota on the Raw before the Royal Rumble. They lost. They were slowly sort of like starting to come together again. They lost, but then Sasha turned on Bailey, beat her up, and then Bailey returned to hit the favor here and cost Sasha this match. Uh. Elimination Chamber for the WWE title. 
Cody Rhodes, Christian, Carmelo Hayes, Drew McIntyre, Reggie, and Randy Orton. Cody retains. Then after the match, Gunter, who won the Royal Rumble, finally chooses Cody Rhodes to face him at WrestleMania. You know, almost a year on from the Raft Mania last year where they both had a stare down both as world champion. The Rock, he was chosen as the special guest referee for the World Time match between Swerve Scott and LA Knight, you know, to make sure it's all core down the middle. But it wasn't because he laid out LA Knight, allowing Swerve to win the belt. Uh, Roman and Jay was the East W title match because Jay pinned Roman in the um in the in the tag match of the Rumble, and of course Roman does retain because Jimmy Uso betray, betrays Jay and breaks the Usos up. Then the main event, Piper and Tegan do retain. Oh, they they do win the women's tag team championships from Io and Dakota. When Dakota quote unquote accidentally kicks Io in the face allowing Tegan to pin Dakota with a roll-up to win the belts. Then after the match, Florence comes out, picks Julia as her opponent for WrestleMania, and then we get a little post credit scene where Candice LeRae finds out who was the person who sent her the note all those months ago. Heading into now, the recap of where we are today. Um, we have on the road to WrestleMania, we have got um, WWE Championship is Cody Rhodes running against Gunther, um, the story with the women's championship was there was a triple threat match between Charlotte, Sasha, and Bailey to determine who'd go to WrestleMania. Charlotte won it because of some interference from Becky. And then the later on, we had a tag match, do or die. Sasha and Bailey had to coexist against Becky and Charlotte, who also had to coexist. They did, so it's now a four horse women fatal four away for the belt. We've got the ladder match for the IC title again. This time with eight people, it's. Um, these six Jolly Jokers down here, as well as Die Jack and Randy Orton. Edge and Christian, Edge's final match, no holds barred. Um, Rhea Ripley against Jade Cargill for the Liberty Championship to prove who the Alpha Woman is on Raw. Um, Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams, obviously. Uh, I think that might be it for the Raw side. Oh no, um, John Cena and R-Truth against KSI and Logan Paul. Drew McIntyre against Xavier Woods. And then on the SmackDown side, we've got all the Queendom shit. We've got Io and Dakota. We've got, um... Oh, by the way, I guess I haven't talked about that yet. Um... It was then revealed, obviously, that it was all a ruse. Dakota Kai had been in cahoots and been trying to, you know, take Queendom down from the inside. That's why she was... She forced away the rest of the group. And she then kicked Io in the face after winning a gauntlet, which Candice LeRae forfeited her match in. And then it's going to be Io against Dakota for the women's title. Uh, there was a trade made. Johnny Gargano went to SmackDown. Trick Williams is on Raw. So Gargano will now team with Candice against Montez Ford and Bianca Belair at WrestleMania. Uh, Ilya Dragunov won a number one contenders match against Seth Rollins to get his match with Swerve for the world title at WrestleMania. LA Knight's against The Rock, Seth Rollins against CM Punk. Uh, Pete Dunne has now turned and joined Daniel Bryan's crew. And him and Bryan will face Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn for the belts at WrestleMania. Chase and the D'Angelo family for the for the future of Chase University. Um, yeah. And... Um, Neville came back, yes. He, he entered the tournament... To become the number one contender for the United States Championship. So he'll face the United States Champion. Who is Pistolero. Who beats Sosokoa. Thanks to interference from the Usos. And uh, for the tag titles. It's Utami and Queendom's newest member Asuka. Challenging Tegan Knox and Piper Niven for the belts. And also on ECW. We've got Florence against Julia. Roman Reigns against both Usos. As a triple threat match. Liv versus um, Shida. Zack Sabre Jr. defending against the God, Kyle O'Reilly. Um, Adam Cole and Dolph Ziggler are in a thing. Um, if Dolph Ziggler wins, Paragon dies. But if Adam Cole wins, Dolph Ziggler has to join Paragon. A four-way tag match between Ichiban, Ali and Cedric, Joman, and the Hurt Business for the ECW tag titles. Matt Cardona and Kurt Hawkins against the Dudley Boys. A quick but already bitter rivalry between... Damien Priest and Bobby Lashley. And 
I think that's it. I can't remember anything else, but that, that might be it. Yes, as far as I'm aware. But yeah, that went for nearly five hours. So, <laughs> if you stay through and watch the whole thing, you're a, 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 a G. And yeah, that's episode 500. If this, this, I mean, I suppose five hours is shorter than watching every single episode from one to 500. So, yeah. But this main, mainly serves as a stopgap, you know, just to... You can jump on from this point because, you know, we're only just getting started. We're still cooking over here. If, any, we're, if anything, we're cooking more now than we were back in the day. But I guess that's it. And <laughs> thank you all so much. If you're still here, thank you so much. And I'll see you next time for ECW episode 501. The Rota 1000 both subs and episodes starts now see you then